Rugby is a very accepting sport. I wasn't embarrassed about my body or anything. People really welcome you and actually like take your uh, strengths and weaknesses and work with you to like make you a better person and player. You hit each other and then you're friends. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like the camaraderie of it and like the game is just so physical and it's fun. Definitely try it. Like you. Maybe you don't think you're the strongest, but once you go out and like you hit someone, that adrenaline is so amazing. Growing up in Mississippi, my prayer was, for as long as I can remember, God use me use me, use this life. I don't know what the future holds for me, but I know that there is a vision for my life that is greater than my imagination can hold. Use me, use me, what would you have me to do? And that dream, that desire, that prayer brought me somehow to television. And she's gonna learn that this life will hit you hard in the face, wait for you to get back up just so it can kick you in the stomach, but getting the wind knocked out of you is the only way to remind your lungs how much they like the taste of air. If we want to give all of our children a foundation for their dreams and opportunities worthy of their promise, if, if we want to give them that sense of limitless possibility, that belief that here in America, there is always something better out there if you're willing to work for it, then we must work like never before. You might never fail on the scale I did, but some failure in life is inevitable. It is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. Movements for peace when all seems lost. Together, I do believe it is part of the American mission to ensure that people everywhere, women and men alike, finally have the opportunity to live up to their own God-given potential. It's huge. Uh, there's, there's limitations. Uh, there's been uh, greater limitations before my involvement, uh, which has stopped some athletes from being able to chase their dreams and having to go and and, and uh, fulfil a, a nine to five job just to, to, to live, really. So in life, you know, there are moments when you stop and ask yourself, how did I get here? Like, why am I standing here? Girls have the power to change the world. It is a fact. There's a really, really beautiful quote that I read recently and I think it's absolutely appropriate to say, to e explain what I'm trying to say today. The hand that rocks the cradle, the procreator, the mother of tomorrow, a woman shapes the destiny of civilization. Such is the tragic irony of fate that a beautiful creation such as a girl child is today one of the gravest concerns facing humanity. Good. Good morning and welcome to Warren Wilson College in Shwananoa, North Carolina. I am Liz Entwistle with the Rugby Network. You are tuning in for the National Girls Club Rugby Championships. We have a 12 team tournament. Four pools of three. The winner of each pool will advance into tomorrow's semifinals. Today's match, just kick off the day, the Sac Pal Amazons out of Northern California. 
taking on Morris out of New Jersey. This is the club championships, the single school championships taking place in Wisconsin, kicking off later today. That is Sack Pal going from left to right across your screen, kicking off to Norris in the black and the red. Both storied programs with a long history in girls high school rugby action on the field. We saw the kickoff by Sack Pal in the gray and the purple. Knock-ons and ensuing play. So we'll see our first scrum of the game. Worth noting that with today's two game action and following World Rugby U19 rules, these are going to be 20 minute halves. There's a limit on 90 minutes of play throughout the course of action. We get our first look at the scrum in the middle of the field. Morris with the put in. Ball quickly out to the middle scrum half, climb up the kick and chase down the field. And Morris able to recover. Morris putting themselves in fine position about seven meters from the goal line, quickly supported. Pop off the base of the ruck. Morris taking into contact, tackled well by the Amazons. Amazons are multiple time national champions when it comes to this girls club level of rugby. But again, Morris, a storied program that's produced several of our USA Eagles and several college standouts. Morris moving the ball to the outside, finds the ball in the hands of the fullback. She's at the goal line and goes over. So Morris strikes first in the first 90 seconds of play, putting five points on the board. Field of the kickoff deep in their own field and able to take it back about 70 meters downfield. We saw an excellently placed kick and going back to the replay, the action spreading the ball through the hands of the back line. Morris able to score towards the outside and over the line, the fullback adding five points to the scoreboard. The conversion kick to come it's going to be a wide kick and a drop kick as well. The kick is low. The score remains five to nothing. Going to a wider angle again, the distribution, we see the pass from the fly half, a bit of a rainbow pass, skipping over the center into the hands of the wing, the fullback looped around the outside. Both of these teams skilled in the game of sevens as well. We see the ball movement there paying off. This will be Sack Pal kicking off again here in Pool A action. Sack Pal and Morris are joined by the Raleigh Red Hawks in Pool A. And we'll have updates from Field 1 and Field 2 all throughout the day. The kick fielded cleanly. Morris again making their way towards midfield. A deep kick from Sack Pal. Sack Pal with the turnover. Morris looking to Jackal. Hands out, says our referee. And Morris realigns and zeroes out. Sack Pal on the offensive streak. This is a powerful Amazons program. With deep ties in the Northern California region. Sack Pal again. Able to recover. And the breakaway here. Sack Pal looking to equalize. And around the outside goes. The strong running line from the number 28. So we are only three and a half minutes into the first half of play, and we've got quite the offensive game on our hands. As we look across the rosters for both of these teams, we see even distribution with freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. This SAC PAL team traveling with many players that would be no stranger to the game of high school girls club rugby led by coaches Brianna Tosinga, David Tosinga, Luis Canela, Zerope Macalo, Steve Brown, Tabita Palalu, and Wayne Coy. A special shout out to Wayne Coy who just led the Sacramento State women's program into the national semifinals. Deep roots in this NorCal region. The Morris roster equally evenly distributed with their upper and underclassmen. We'll go over rosters for both teams when breaks allow. You see the outside center for Sacramento lining up the conversion kick, this time off the tee, the forward tilt, looking for that sweet pot slot on the strike.
The kick is up and it is good. Sac Cal adds two points and takes a seven to five lead. We are five minutes into the first half of play. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll see Morris's first kickoff of the game evenly distributed to the left and right side of the field. The kick received by the Amazons spread with waves of attack. Off the boot of the fly half, fielded at the 22. Sack Pal looking to get that go forward. Taken down with the buddy tackle by Morris. Not me. releasing, and sorry, rather diving over is the call. A shout out to our referee crew and to Next Level Rugby producing today's action. This is going to give Morris a penalty and the kick to touch. So the Morris line out inside of the 22. This will be our first line out of the game as well. So Morris with the conference establishing their line out setup and the play to be called. Sack Pal trying to get a clue as to the numbers to equalize on defense. So we will full line out by Morris. We see the target at the first pod disrupted by Sack Pal. So the Amazons with a chance to exit from deep inside of their 22. The passing lanes are on and we got to look at the speedster on the outside. Morris in pursuit, and it is Sack Powell with quite the line break. The number 22, strongly carried, finally taken into touch. A try saving tackle by Morris. The Sack Powell gains almost all the ground from conceding that penalty and putting themselves in a position just outside of the Morris 22. So we'll go back. A great offload from the contact by Sack Pal and look at the speed out of this powerful number 22. She's able to shake off the defense and finally taken out by the try scoring number 15 from Morris earlier. Sack Pal again disrupts the line out with a steal, a key turnover. An untimely knock on by the Sack Pal wings. This is going to be a scrum to Morris, our second of the game. And we look again at this distribution from their backs. Ball in two hands, just off of the fingertips here of the number 11. We'll keep an eye on the width and the depth of this Sack Pal backline all game long and love the tricks and the tools from this Morris team deploying a kicking game and trying to spread the field. The scrum to Morris. And the free kick awarded. We cannot drive early in the scrum, so this is going to give Morris another chance with some space to run. Place on the ball on field, setting up. Set piece play. Forward pause to the left and to the right. Sack pal deep, far more than the 10 meters. Now coming up strong on defense. Morris looking for that break, stopped short of the game line by the sack pal defense. Morris redistributing. The ball bobbled, but it is backwards, so play on. Morris again distributing from the back of the rep. Meters gain. And penalty awarded. We've seen a couple of sack pile penalties and with a free kick on the scrum. We'll keep an eye on that as the game goes on. We are about 10 minutes into the first half of play in the first of this. Pool A action. We've got 12 teams that are competing today in the Girls Club Championships. Four pools of three. The winner of each pool will advance into Saturday's semifinal, while teams 5 through 12 will then play off for placement action. Morris again gains ground off of the boot. The strategy is paying off with field territory and positioning. So this will be a Morris line out so far. The Sac Pal Amazons have disrupted. Both lineouts. We'll see if they can maintain that perfect defensive record. 
And there they go again. Sack Powell, three for three on the line out steals. And again, deep inside of their 22. We see the chip and chase downfield. The chip is there. The chase is there. And Morris is there to recover. Carried into contact is going to allow Morris to reset their attacking platform. The attempt at the steal. This is a, another penalty to Sack Powell. So three penalties by the Amazons. And a fourth with a short arm. Morris again with a tap off of the ground, setting up forward pods to the left and the right. They go to the left-hand side, taken into contact by the prop. Redistributing to the far side of the field. We see the leg drive by Morris and the strength of Sack Powell in the tackle. Morris again going to the far side. The contact is too strong. Sack Powell with advantage being shown on the knock-on. Gain possession of the ball. Attempt to go forward. An excellent charge by the Morris number seven, able to tie up the opposition. Sack Pal still possession of the ball in hand. No advantage gained. So we're going to go back to the knock on and see our third scrum of the game. Cool and calm on the sidelines. Make sure once you engage, there's no drive. I don't want to see you moving over the mark. Okay. The NGCRC does promote the sportsmanship of the game, ensuring that all teams, fans, coaches are all enrolled in good sportsmanship on the field. Sack Powell to put it on the scrum about 10 meters from their own 22. We see a potential set for a kick and chase downfield again. Sack Powell does win the scrum. They do set the kick. A gorgeous chip just down midfield and the chase is on on the far side look at this cover tackle by sack Powell. excellent coverage on the kick downfield morris able to clean out the rough showing off and flexing some power of their own morris through phase play another piece to the forwards this time wider distribution you see the dummy cut back towards the inside and the kick downfield sack Powell. They've got space and they've got support. We look at the counter, well covered by the Morris defense. This time a penalty to Sack Powell, the first against Morris of the match. We've got seven and a half minutes left to go. We'll see a replay here on the penalty after the kick to touch. So we see the carry by Sack Powell we see the poach attempt by Morris. And it looks clean, but our referee is the manager of the playing enclosure. Love the heads up play and the attempt at the turnover opportunity. Again, the score remains seven to five, seven minutes left to play in the first half. Zach Powell. Their lineouts have been such an asset in the game so far. We see this movement out of the back line, layers of attack, just off the fingertips of the ball goes backwards. Sack Powell trying to get go forward. Morris has been in the right place in the right time on defense, and they are the ones that benefit from the disruption on offense leading to the obstruction call. Morris. Options on the penalty. And it looks like they've learned the lessons from their lineouts. Good play selection. Ball on the ground, the tap from the ground, going to their forward pause. Morris getting the go forward as well, gaining about five meters of space. Redistribution from the back of the ruck. Looks like the looping piece from the backs does not quite pay off. Again, just off the fingertips, another scrum. This time to Sack Powell. So trading possession back and forth in this middle of the field. And we see an excellent shoot from the defense that causes the knock on. The ball dropped forward. Sack Powell has been so strong. We've seen the same counters from this Morris team. Two squads that have proven fairly evenly matched so far. The Amazons with a put in and the eight man with the pick. And the Amazons on the attack towards the far side of the field. The numbers are there. The strike line is there. The Morris defense also there. Excellent tackle by the number 10. Amazons reloading towards the far side of the field. 
It's a pop off from contact. The Amazons looking patient through multiple phases of play. Offside against the Morris defense that's going to give the Amazons a penalty inside of the 22, right in front of the posts. And they opt for the scrum near the middle of the field. You see if we can get a wider view of how they set their backs, options to go to either side. They've got threats with speed and threats with power, but this Morris defense has prevented the line breaks that this Amazons team is used to. Four and a half minutes remain in the first half. So the scrum reset. Some clarity from our referee. So the scrum will reset. We see a first receiver to the right side of the field in the form of the outside center for the Amazons. Presuming that that means a fly half shading towards the left. The ball is in and quickly out. Morris again covers in defense. Sack pal. Advantage being played. They're on the possession and on the attack. No advantage gained. To be a penalty to Sack Pal again inside of the 22. For the Morris team, we're thinking about tackling low and tackling to ground quickly, preventing some of these Sack Pal offloads. This is a team that has gotten it done even while taking contact. A penalty to Sack Pal, a line out inside of the 22. You know that Sack Pal has been skilled in every line out thus far. And the throw to the second pod is up. The ball taken off the top and straight into contact. The Amazons looking to move the ball across the field. Advantage was being played. Forward progress being made. The Amazons are just inches away from the try line, looking to score again before the half closes. So another Morris penalty inside of the 22, giving the Amazons a chance to reload and reset. Quick tap taken on the ground. A bit of disruption on the field. Amazon's able to corral the ball. Numbers there to support the ref. Morris is zeroing out. No counter offered. The Amazon's on the go. The Amazon's with the mall. And it's Morris holding up the try. So we will see a goal line dropout. Inside of two minutes remain in the first half. If you're Morris, you're looking to prevent another try being scored. And if you're Sack Pal, you're looking to get more points. We go back to the replay. A strong carry by the number 23 from the Amazons, getting a little bit of a slow-mo spin move. And Morris is able to get under the ball, so no try awarded. You see the dropout. Amazons fielding the ball. 40 meters between them and the goal line. And this time, their near side wing doing her best. Taken into touch, so Morris's defense holding strong. Plenty of try scoring opportunities. Sack Powell has had the majority of possession here as we were in the second half of the first half inside of a minute to play. Full lineouts by both teams. Amazon's up with the first pod, the ball off the top. Morris this time able to get their lifter up. Zach Powell moving the ball all the way towards the far sideline. Amazon's securing the ruck, establishing a stable platform. Again, Morris conceding the ruck and looking for that next wave of defense. And we see why this number six comes up and is able to make the contact. Knees on the ground, this becomes a tackle.
Amazon's with the strike. Morris again on the tackle. No turnover opportunities there. Again, conceding the ruck, resetting the defense. We see the trip and chase to the corner. Sacramento trying to make something happen. Time is up on our first half clock. Of course, play cannot end without a try, a penalty. We're taken to touch. So Morris trying to keep the ball alive. And here we do have a penalty. Here, 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 here. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Right here. Morris finding the mark. We see Sack Pal flat across the field. Morris with a low driving kick to touch. And there is the half. Seven to five. We've got quite the game. Amazons with the lead. Back and forth action. A very evenly matched opening round game here in Pool A of the Girls Club Rugby High School Championships in North Carolina. We'll get highlights from the first half. This is the first try that was scored just 90 seconds into the match from the Morris fly half. A presence on the field on both offense and defense. We'll be back with the second half in just five minutes. I am Liz Entwistle here with the Rugby Network. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum. Welcome back. This is Liz Entwistle with the Rugby Network here for the National Girls Club Rugby Championships in North Carolina. We have quite the fantastic 
First half of play here from SACPAL Amazon's multiple time national champions taking on Morris Rugby. The score is 7 to 5. We saw the first try of the game before we cut for halftime out of Morris's number 15. We're going to take a look here at highlights from the second try of the game. SACPAL, an excellent action by number 28. So the try scored and the conversion made SACPAL holding on to a two point lead. This is going back again to the first try of the game. That was just 90 seconds in at the three minute mark. The Amazons answered and for the next 17 minutes, it was all defense. Both of these teams able to stop any of the go forward, any of the phase play that the other was offering. We've seen a battle in the lineouts where Sack Pal has proven to have quite the advantage. They have won all of their lineouts as well as st stealing all of Morris's. Four scrums in the game so far. The kicking game between both sides doing well to gain them territory and ground downfield, setting up the attacking platforms. But again, the story of the game being this defense, the penalty count about even between both teams, little things to clean up your Morris. You're thinking about tackling low and tackling quickly. We've seen them go in to try to get some turnovers and some jackals, but if they can get the ball carrier to ground quickly, it'll provide the platform where they're able to get those clean jackals and avoid the penalties that have been called. If your Morris is, or excuse me, if you're sack pal, we need to clean up the accidental obstructions on the field and make sure that they are securing their rucks without diving over. As we look across the pools for today's games, we've got action coming up on field one all day long. Coming up next is going to be pool C action between United and Aspetuck. Then we've got pool B action at noon between Majestics and the Raleigh Cobras. Pool D will kick off starting at 1 p.m. with San Mateo out of Northern California taking on the Charlotte Cardinal. Excuse me, Clayton. So back to the action on the field. Morris in the black and red will be going from left to right across your screen, this time kicking off to start the half to Sack Pal, the Amazons in the silver and purple. These teams are allowed eight substitutions per game following the same world rugby rules that we're familiar with when it comes to the senior levels of play. We'll keep an eye on any substitution tactical advantages as the second half progresses. These teams fighting to top the pool, the winner of each pool moving on to Saturday's semifinals. A beauty of a kickoff from the boot of the Morris fly half. Well positioned and well taken by the Amazons. The Amazons quickly there to support the ball carrier. Quick distribution off the base of the ruck. Deep with the backs and the Morris defense. So the number 10 providing the disruption. Sack Powell able to recover possession of the ball. Strong carry, the Amazons realigned towards the far side of the field. Ball carrier met by a duo of tacklers taken down. The quick chip and chase over the top. If you can't go through the Morris defense, you have to try to go over. Fielded by the fullback. Morris with the offload. And offload again, taking a play from the Sack Pal playbook. Distribution to the forwards, a strong carry. Across the game line and then some eventually taken down. Stack Pal quick to roll away and realign their defensive wall. Morris again attacking towards this far side of the field. Going to where their support lays. So we spoke about Stack Pal leaving their feet in their own offensive rucks. This time it happens on defense. Morris with the penalty. Just shy of midfield. We see the set for the kick to touch. Doesn't find touch, but it does find itself knocked on by the Sack Pal receiver with a scrum to Morris. So again, at this strong forward play, Morris went through multiple phases. And here was the Jackal attempt. You see the attempt of the counter wrecking clear by Morris as well. And that's enough to draw the penalty. Get in 
So the scrums reset again. We heard a conference from the referee earlier talking about the binding and the timing. Ball is in and quickly out. So the pick for the number eight redistribution. Now Morris on the attack. Striking with support. And another case of losing the feet in the ruck. So we need to make sure that we're establishing a strong, stable platform, keeping shoulders above the knees. Morris gets to the 22 and turns over Sack Powell with a far attempt at a kick to touch. It does bounce its way there. So Sack Powell favoring the lineup. It's been such a strong platform before. Here we see the carry. And the Morris player losing her feet, diving over the ruck, gives that penalty to Sack Powell as that does not provide an opportunity for them to make a play on the ball. Some confusion with numbers in the lineout. Sack Powell this time going short, five in the lineout. Throw over the jumper, recovered by the Amazons, and Sack Powell now on the attack to shy of midfield. Morris realigning their defense. Look at this gorgeous wall of black and red jerseys. Sack Powell again chooses to chip over. A high bounce. Zach Powell so quick to cover. Look at this. One tackler, she's quickly supported. Morris is able to scramble back. Morris able to provide the numbers in the ruck, secures the ball, secures the platform. And this time Morris with the counter kick. Heads up dynamic play by both of these teams. You'll love to see it. Look at this line break. A little bit of a no look pass bounces its way into an Amazon's hand. Amazon strong going to this far corner. Can she do it? Amazon's over the line. Adding to their lead. And this time it's the Amazon striking first here in the second half of play. We go to the replay. So it was the kick and the counter kick. Cleanly fielded, the stiff arm deployed. Enough to draw in the defenders. We look at the way all these hips are turned towards the outside as well. And there's no match to the stiff arm. Number 22. Doing it for the Zons. Leading 12 to 5 with the penalty, or excuse me, the conversion kick to come. We saw accuracy with the conversion attempt earlier in the game from the boot of this number 13. This will be a shallower kick. Not as wide on the try scoring attempt here in the second half. The conversion falls short and wide to the left. Score will remain 12 to 5. We'll get another look here at the try scoring opportunity and how it happened. Movement of the ball, drawing in defense, catching them a little bit misaligned, having to turn and compensate and trying to pursue, but too much strength out of the carry from this number 22. Getting the ball wide has worked for both of these teams all game long. 12 to 5 with 13 and a half minutes left to go in this pool A matchup. Zach Powell off the boot again, and it's a gorgeous Amazon's bounce back towards their side of the field. Players from both teams challenging. A knock on by Morris is going to give a scrum to the Amazons at the 22.
The ball is quickly in, but at the U19 level, we can uh, wheel as far as you can at the senior levels of the game. 45 degrees is what's allowed. Similarly, only allowed about a meter on the drive. Stable and secure when it comes to scrumming at the youth levels of the game. So we're going to see the scrum reset. Morris again with the put in. Or excuse me, Zach Powell with the put in. Was going to mention Morris's scrum half set up off the back of the scrum. Recognize the option to go either way. So she's not going to challenge on the ball itself, but rather to be a defensive anchor for these teams. The ball in. Take it out towards the far side of the field. Morris realigning their defense. We see the shoot by their inside center, outside center, causing disruptions for the Amazons. Amazons dancing their way down the sideline. One Amazon taking on about five Morris defenders. She is taken into touch. Line out to Morris. Right here, guys, right here. This Morris Rugby Corporation, a team that has affiliations with their boys high school program and their seniors clubs. Sac Pal Amazons, very similar, closely aligned with the growing programs now at Sacramento State. Mentioned Coach Rain Coy, that's been coaching with both programs and with the Sacramento Amazons senior women's side that have been multiple time Division II national champions. The ball in on the line out, it is knocked on and knocked to ground. Scrum to Morris. So the first error on the line out where we've seen Sac Pal unable to corral possession. Morris scrum inside of the 22. That's one. Two. Two. Morris able to execute their exit, and this time it takes another Morris rugby bounce, crossing midfield. Excellent pursuit on the chase by the Morris back three. Sack Powell with the counter, threading their way on that far sideline again, keeping the feet. We've got them all. This time it goes to ground. The ruck is going to be formed. Amazon's on the counter. Well-timed strike line by the Amazon's forwards. Buddy tackle by Morris brings her down. Sack Pal, again, deep with their backs, looking for opportunities. Morris disrupted on the tackle. Looks like she may have just gotten a hand on the ball. Either way, play on for the Amazon. Sack Pal trying to find some way, and the defensive pressure of this number 10 out of Morris has been phenomenal all game long. Not rolling away with the ruck, so a penalty to the Zons. And the Amazons with a line out inside of the 22. They'll have a platform about 10 meters away from the goal line. Morris will be looking to disrupt on the line out in every way that they can. Looks like we're going to have a full line out. And look at the spacing again of this Amazons team. Keep an eye on this number 22 on the near sideline. She had the try to open the half. Be certainly looking to strike again. A beautiful I throw to okay. the second jumper, but it is not straight. Scrum. Scrum. Gives the option to Morris. Morris choosing the scrum. So again, another error on the line out that we did not see from the Amazons in the first half. 12 to five, the score remains. About nine and a half minutes, eight and a half minutes in the second half. So Morris with a put in. Again, we see the Amazons scrum half staying back on defense. The scrum is wheeled. We will have a scrum reset. Again, guys, drive straight. We don't want to wheel. Clear and concise communication from our referee. And all these rugby players, the cues that they need to make their adjustments here as we go into the final seven and a half minutes of play. Morris with a put in. 
This time, a little more aggressive defense from the Amazon scrum half. The low grubber kick downfield. We see the attempt by the Zons to pick it up. The ball is knocked on. Quick whistle blown by our referee. And it'll be another scrum to Morris. So again, good, clear, concise communication from our referees, the game management on point. Morris with a put in. See the pick to the weak side. Morris's number eight is on the go. Corralled by the Amazon's defense. And another penalty diving over at the ruck. This is the third or fourth time this has been called in the game so far. The Amazons with the chance now opting to kick to touch, looking for another line out inside of the 22. They will need to clean up. The last two were failures in execution. We'll see if the third time is a charm. Six and a half minutes left to go here in the second half. The Amazons maintaining a 12 to 5 lead. Amazons with a full line out. And we see their prop running up the hill, whether to get a ball or for a substitution. She does recover the ball. Time still ticking away on the field. Again, being mindful of our world rugby age grade rules. 90 minutes total is what is allowed per day. The line out is clean, so third time is the charm. We'll see if the Amazons can get their third try. And look at this pass behind the back, back inside. Amazons with the spacing. Numbers were there, the width was there, just off the fingertips. So Morris with the scrum inside of the 22, and we are inside of the final five minutes of action. Still 12 to five. Looking at setups, anticipating another Morris kick. They've been so good off of the boot. So good with their exit strategies from inside of the 22. The ball in the scrum and out it goes. And there is the kick, a clearing attempt. The ball a low drive, so blocked by the Amazons. Morris again needing to exit from inside of the 22. So the Amazons were in the right place in the right time. And now it's Morris timing towards the outside. On the go, a clean poach by the Amazons. It's going to be a key turnover here as we wind into the final four minutes of play. Amazons recovering, looking for support. See an excellent run here by the number 16, but the stiff arm is too high. Contact made at the head is going to give a penalty to Morris. So every time the Amazons nearly get there looking for that third try, Morris is able to do enough with defensive positioning or to draw. Amazon's penalties, Morris on the tap and go outside of the 22. We see a little bit of a hitch step from the Morris forwards, the offload from contact, Morris forwards on the flow, getting across midfield. Morris still ball in hand, this multiple phase play. Finally, a tackle is made to ground. Morris looking again with their forwards. They gained about 30 meters of space and they've got a shade over 40 meters to go if they're going to cross the try line. Three and a half minutes left to play. Trailing 5 to 12. Looking to keep national championship hopes alive. They must score. Good defensive effort here. The Amazons driving them back inside of midfield. Morris sorting their ruck. The ball is out. Well read on defense by the Amazons. Doing enough to prevent a line break. This time we see the pick and go from the fullback. She is supported by her outside center. Backs playing as forwards, you'll love to see it. Morris again with the leg drive, 
gaining meters and meters of space with every carry, recovering that ground from that Amazon's defensive stand. And speaking of that Amazon's defense, they get it done at the tackle for loss. Morris. Able to redistribute the ball. The pass is forward, so the Amazon's defense is able to draw the turnover in terms of possession on the scrum put in. Two minutes, five seconds left to go here in the second half. 12 to five, the score remains. Look at the wide shot. We see Morris defense flat across the field, about 10 meters back from the back foot of the scrum. The Amazons split on offense. We see a flat wave towards the far side of the field, a depth on the near side of the field, some readjustments and realignments. Okay, guys, it was already starting to have some wheeling before the ball came in, which means somebody is pushing, all right? Here's your mark. Nobody goes and pushes before the ball comes in, okay? It's too cold, man. So again, clarity allowing for corrections from our referee. 90 seconds to play, and Amazon's put in. Looking for stability in this scrum. So the chip downfield, we saw quite a blitz out of the Morris defense. Ball kick to touch. This is going to be an Amazon's line out. We're inside of the final minute of play. Like these cues here from this Morris number nine. She's checking with a sideline, looking at time management. We saw her indicate the risk. We saw earlier before, too, some nonverbal communication between a lot of these players, heads up as students of the game as well. Amazon's. Trying to establish their numbers in the lineout. Five in for Sacramento. The lineout goes to ground. Morris looking to come away with any steal possible, but the Amazons able to maintain possession of the ball with numbers in the ruck. Amazons on the drive again. Time is up on the official game clock. We cannot end on a penalty. The quick tap is taken, not back 10. We're going to have a second penalty. The Amazons leading 12 to five. Tap taken, but she does not go through the mark, so we will reset. So about 20 meters from the goal line, the Amazons looking to add another. Sacramento just meters away. Morris aligned in defense. Amazons with the pick and go. A few phases through the forwards, looking to skip it out towards the backs. Morris looking to disrupt a ball bouncing in the air. Advantage being called by our referee. No advantage gained. Going to big it back. It would be a scrum, but the game is up. The clock has wound down, and the Sacramento Amazons win our first Pool A game by a score of 12 to 5. A tough break for Morris. They scored first. We'll look again on that first try scoring opportunity. The Morris fullback taking it in. Just 90 seconds into the game. Sack Powell answered a minute and a half later. The strong lining lines and the fendoffs from their number 28. A key conversion was made off the boot of their number 13. And we'll look here, the third try of the game by the Amazon's number 22. High school girls club rugby looking strong. Wide an opener. Again, Sacramento, multiple time national champions. Morris played them strong. Defensive efforts by both teams, excellent. We saw great launching adjustments as the game went on. Great play off of the boot of both teams as well, being strategic with their territory. We'll be back here for Pool C action at 11 o'clock with United taking on Aspata.
use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their products. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game.
I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Our 20 minute halves today with a five minute half time. We are being mindful of World Rugby's U19 directives where they are allowed 90 minutes of total play on a day at this U19 level. This United program, a strong club out of Utah, several schools contributing players to their lineups. Aspetuck out of Connecticut as well an area that has been rich in their rugby development, a strong college rugby scene as well. We've seen multiple national championships out of Quinnipiac. Several of these players on all teams this weekend looking to put their hand up for opportunities at the collegiate level. But first, they have to get through pool play. In earlier action in Pool A, it was Sacramento 12 to 5 victors over Morris Rugby Corporation. We see the first try here out of Sacramento. This was just three minutes into the first half, countering an earlier Morris try. Strong running lines yielded strong tries for this Amazons program, showing off why they are multiple time national champions here. So it was number 28 in the first half, number 22 going over the line here in the second. A key conversion from the boot of their number 13 gave the Amazons their 12 points and the victory. So just moments away here from first kickoff in Pool C action earlier in the day on field two as well. We saw Pool D with the Charlotte Cardinals team on the San Mateo Wolverines out of California. Katie Wurst is hosting all the action this weekend here at Warren Wilson College for information on all the brackets and all of the score lines. 
You can also find information on the rugby breakdown. And we'll keep you updated when we get results from field two. And I realize people get stressed. Aspatuck in the yellow and black, going from right to left across your screen, kicking off to United in the dark shade of, we'll Yellow call it ready. Indigo. Yellow captain ready. The kickoff deep in to United territory after boot of the number 22 for Aspatuck Valley, quickly covered and taken down is their number 10 from United on a kick receipt. Strong carry by their number one. Quick redistribution to the far side of the field. United looking for a break to get the offload from contact. Not there. It's really rugby here in the opening minute of play. Aspetic Valley gets it done, draws a knock on in the tackle, and they will get a scrum. About 25 meters from their own try line will go to the replay here. So we see a little bit of a line break and the offload from So the scrum set, we see the tap and the put in by the number 24 playing the number nine position. The attempt at the pick from the number eight around the back. We'll likely see the scrum reset. In game one, our referees being mindful of game management following the U19 directives. This means that these scrums cannot wheel intentionally and they cannot wheel more than 45 degrees. We also do not see the full drive like we see in the senior editions of the game. Only about a meter's worth allowed and go forward while the scrum is still engaged. So we see the scrum reset, the tap and the put in. The ball is out. We see the Quick defense here from the United Flankers. The high looping pass bounces off of the ground. And a penalty being awarded to Aspetuck Valley. Did not catch the referee's signal on that one. So Aspetuck with a penalty opportunity about 25 meters from the goal line. Do the turn and plant to kick to touch. And it's just a little chip staying on field. It's a bit of an unforced error. Must find the touch line in those situations. But Aspetuck recovers, and do they ever just meters away from the ball line. And another penalty. Penalty play, and it pays off. So the try is awarded, five to nothing. Aspetuck Valley takes the lead in this first three minutes of play. So we see the quick tap and go. We see the dummy to the number 22 as a receiver. And that little shoulder shimmy gets the ball over the line and five points on the board as Aspetuck Valley takes the early lead. Setting up for the conversion attempt. We see the high T that allows for that more horizontal placement of the ball. Looking to strike the sweet spot about a third of the way up. The kick is up and it is fantastic. Seven points now. Aspetuck leading United. A beauty of a strike from the far sideline. It had the height, it had the distance, and it had the pace. We get a confirmation on the player number. I believe that was their number 13. And we'll get that on replay. That kick is 
plenty of pace. Could have gone for 40. So speaking of kickoffs, back to action on the field. United with the kickoff to Aspetic Valley. And this is a third penalty committed by Utah. Giving Valley possession of the ball. This time the kick does make its way to touch. And this will set up the first line out of the game. So Aspetuck setting their numbers. So referee setting the tunnel. Aspetuck with only four in the line out. So United dropping out, changing their personnel. And United able to disrupt the line out. So two penalties to touch have set up unique situations. This time the ball is knocked forward from contact. A good tackle by Valley forces the ball out. Valley with possession. So advantage in possession. Good placement of the ball at the bottom of the ruck. United conceding the ruck as well. Looking for that next wave of defense. Aspetuck making some meters just past midfield. Dipping the chase is on. It takes a high bounce. United able to recover. Some action from their fullback. She's taken down just shy of the 22. United will be playing out from inside of their red zone. See the strategy on their exit. We hear the balls out call by the referee, but the ruck still looks to be formed. United, powerful stiff arm. She says sit down. She gets the offload off as well. So it's United still fighting their way forward. Aspetek. Leaves the barest of gaps in defense and is able to recover, making the tackle. United going to phases again. Forward possession, and this time out to the backs towards the far side of the field. Valley numbers are there. Taken down, but we're going to have a whistle on the high contact, a penalty to United. Both teams looking to stay mindful of keeping those tackles below the armpit level. We get a replay here. So tackle made. Contact above the shoulders. It's up around the neck, so a clear penalty being called. So now the line out to United. Seven minutes into this opening half. Cool C action. Aspetuck currently leading by a mark of seven to nothing. Aspetuck spoils the United line out. Again, attacking from midfield. They're quick to ground, quick to support. We see the attempt of the chip through and the second kick of the tournament that we've seen blocked so far in open play. Valley able to recover. United are a bit too quick on their defensive launch. An offside penalty call giving Aspetic Valley a penalty at midfield. Kicker finds their mark. This is going to give Aspetuck a line out inside of the 22. This has been a lot of back and forth, stop and go action in this first half so far. Four in the line out. United is able to disrupt. United with possession. And now it's United on the go with some pace and numbers towards this near side line. An excellent exit and a good line break. And she is still going. Number three with a strong carry. United doing well to support. Numbers to the outside, such a threat. Moving it back towards this far sideline. Recovering after some miscues in the ball handling. United evades the first tackle, taken down by the second attempt. Oh, 
United patient. Going through phases of forward play. We saw the line break before. Enough of a threat. United again with numbers towards this near sideline. It's a pass to the wing. Cuts back inside. We love that ball transfer as well. Stiff arms deployed. Eventually taken down. Aspetuck realigning their defense. United with numbers towards the far sideline. And Aspetuck value. Strong tackle and contact made. Pops the ball up. Advantage being shown. Aspetuck with the turnover. So no advantage gained on the knock-on. Scrum to Aspetek. This will be our second scrum of the first half. Score remains 7 to nothing. First 10 minutes are done and dusted. 30 minutes of rugby left in this Pool C matchup. Aspetech and United are joined by the Charlotte Tigress here in Pool C action. We see several Carolina area teams filling in this 12-team girls club championship pool. The tap is up and the ball is in. Quickly out. And number eight with some space to run. She is tackled into touch. The buddy tackle there. Number 10 and number 22 for United. We'll give the tackle credit to the sideline. She never misses her tackles either. United with a full line out. We see the attempt at the five meter throw. That ball must travel five meters in. Whistle was blown. We got time off of the clock with a conference with our rep our referees and assistant referees on the sideline. Okay. So United awarded a penalty for offsides. This is going to give them the ball about 10 meters shy of midfield. Set to kick to touch. Looking to draw another line out. The long driving kick finds its mark. Line out to United. They went full in the first. Looking to set up full here in their second. Line out with possession. So the line out throw is not straight, giving Aspetech Valley the option for the line out themselves or the scrum, opting for the scrum at the 15 meter hash. So a bit over and a bit to the left. Aspetech Valley set up steep with their back line towards that far side. We expect action in that direction. Line out is in and we see the quick pick and go. From the number eight from Aspetic Valley, we saw United so quick the flankers to release off the scrum and provide some pressure. And it's United with the turnover. United again. She's been a strong ball carrier all game long. Getting the line break again. We get the offloads. So with some space to run and good support, we see the bread and butter of this United team in terms of their go forward. This is their first real foray into the Aspetic Valley half of the field and is United. Going through multiple phases, going through the hands. Aspetic Valley realigning towards the far side of the field. And look at this little chip and go just off the outside of the boot. Heads up play by the number nine from United. She is tied up and tripped up. We will see what unfolds. The player impeded for the ball bouncing its way into the end goal. Waiting on confirmation from our referee crew. Can't 
The ball grounded by Aspetic Valley, going to be a goal line dropout. We'll go back to the play earlier, so it was a big contact made. We saw the chip in the chase downfield. Number nine attempted to get a second kick on the ball, impeded from the chase. Aspetic Valley, though, awarded the goal line dropout, united with a chance to counter. United ball in hand, and it's taking two to three Aspetic Valley tacklers to bring these girls down. Then Aspetic Valley so quick on defense to set their ball. United. Fighting their way again. We've got a mall taken to ground. The tackle completed. United spreading the space towards that far sideline. They're going to look to realign. Since scrum half got in on the action. We see the pop from the ground. Again, more continuity play coming out of contact. And now breaking in back inside of the 22 is the number two. United with numbers out to the right side of the field. We see a cluster of Aspetic Valley players all around the ball. If they can spread this, the green space is there for United. Aspetic Valley able to slow down the distribution and realign with their defense. So United, a lot of good work to just get mere inches going forward. Aspetic Valley is able to provide the pressure and creates a turnover via a knock-on scrum to Valley. Go back to the sequence of play. Again, this swarm of Valley defense stifling the offensive opportunities there for United inside of the 22. Score remains seven to nothing. Aspetic leading United. Ball's quick in, quick service out with the defensive pressure from the United scrum half. Aspetic Valley tackled into touch on the far side of the field. So again, the defensive pressure and the defensive setup by both of these teams. They're quick to realign. They're quick to get to where they need to be, to create opportunities, to create the turnovers. But again, at the carry by Valley, she is shepherded to the outside, shepherded to the goal line. We'll keep an eye on the defensive scrum half battle as these scrums continue. The line out throw is not straight. Aspetic Valley opting for the scrum. About two and a half minutes remaining in this first half by the time the scrum sets. We'll replay the line out. So pay attention again to the defensive effort of this United scrum half in the number 10 jersey. She's doing her best to be a pest. And again, putting Aspetuck Valley under pressure. Valley looks for the clearing kick. The ball dribbles its way into touch. Aspetek going with four in the lineout. So short on the lineout, inserting the remaining forwards into the back line. The ball is up. Covered by the back receiver. So the tail gunner does her job and she gets significant meters downfield. Aspetek Valley is on the attack. 90 seconds left to go. Ball's turned over with the placement. United with a chance to counter. We'll see if they can catch the Aspetek Valley defense unaware. And again, Aspetic Valley doing a good job to slow down some of these defensive rucks to be able to realign. United still though, ball in hand. Good placement. United fighting their way forward. A lot of United jerseys to the left side of the field. A lot of green space to the right. Would love to see some offensive realignment to get to wherever Valley is not. Again, maintaining possession, looking to control the ball. And they turn it over. What a counter ruck by Aspetic Valley. Valley with a chance, ball in hand. They're just outside of the 22. Bit of a break from the Aspetic Valley hooker. 
Taken down by United. Good defensive timing from United on their defensive launch. Aspetek digging for the ball. Trying to break that United wall. And Aspetek Valley now numbers to the left side of the field. It looks like they've got about a three on one if they're able to get the offloads there. United Shepherds, the ball carrier into touch, preventing the try scoring opportunity. Seven to nothing, the score remains. 10 seconds left to play here in the first half. It looks like we should have one more line out to round out this Pool C first half action. So whistle is blown, time is off of the clock. We see the ball movement here. Aspetuck Valley had numbers. And we look the way this 13 drew in 22, freeing up 15, not quite able to get the offload off in time to take advantage of the space. But there was that three on one, speaking of between 13, 15, and 11. We look at changing directions and changing pace as ways to draw the defense in to where we want them to focus their efforts to free up space for our outside support. And United's defense is again able to scramble and get the job done. We've got a moment here to bring trainers on the field, player evaluations and player safety always at the forefront of this game. A reminder that time is off, so this is not going to impact the total time played on the day. Yeah, do we want to see if a yellow sub or... I'm not sure. It, it looks kind of like that, but I wasn't. Um, we are... So we have the story of the first half so far. We have two teams that are doing really well when it comes to their scramble defense and preventing some of these try scoring opportunities teams that have had to put numbers into their rucks. It's been generally slow play off of the rucks when it's happened yeah. in terms of distribution of the ball yeah. coming out. We have seen both teams successful when they are getting offloads from contact when tackles yeah. aren't going to ground that is providing them more opportunities to go forward and take advantage of some disjoint or misaligned defenses. The score seven to nothing Thing. We saw the try from Aspetuck, the gorgeous conversion from their number 13. We've had about four scrums in the first half so far. An equal number of lineouts, an area where both teams do need to improve a bit. Uh, we want to make sure that the ball is straight. So looking at the set of the feet, the set of the core, and accuracy in lineout throws, little work-ons, but that's all what this U19 level rugby about is about. We get introduction to the game, some of these players with middle school experience. So we're going back to that try scoring opportunity that did come off of the penalty. Again, some of the strong carries of the line breaks, but we look at the jerseys that are there preventing the quick play off of the rucks or the quick pick and goes. This has prevented either team from getting into really free flowing rugby action. So again, powerful stiff arms, a good line break, but quick to recover. This player is not giving up, and the action from the back three players, meaning our fullback and our two wings, that are realigning, shepherding players towards the sideline, using and taking away space defensively, strategically. They're buying their teams some time to realign and make sure that they've got their defensive support and their defensive walls built. So time is back on. We had about 10 seconds left to go in the first half when the ball was taken into touch. Again, a line out to United. Our referee is going to be the arbiter of time left on the field. Good. The line out is straight. The lift is good. And number three deploys the stiff arm in the fender, keeping the ball alive for United deep in their own territory. Aspetuck looking to counter ruck. Did Aspetuck come away with a steal? This could be a key moment. Getting another try right before the half. Such a momentum shift and such a confidence builder. Aspetuck looking for the quick tap and go. Cannot end the game or end the half on a penalty. They do have the option to kick for points here, but they've got some try line eyes at the moment. Again, the score seven to nothing. Taken down and tackled well by United. Aspetuck needs to secure the rock. This is going to be a not releasing call, I do believe. And instead it's a penalty to Aspetuck. So another tap and go. A swarm of yellow players looking to get that ball over the line. United patient in defense. The tackle is made. 
and the try awarded. So Aspetuck Valley getting a second one to equal their try to open the half. A second try as time has expired. They're going to go into halftime with a two try lead, 12 to nothing, pending the conversion attempt. Yellow, here's your mark. So we see the quick scoot from the number eight from the back of the ruck, taking a couple United players with her. And that creates the bears of opportunities for Aspetuck to go over the line. Aspetuck's outside center lining up the conversion attempt. She had a beauty of a strike earlier to add the extras. It had the height, it had the distance, it is just wide. The two points remain 12 to nothing as we go into halftime. Aspetuck Valley out of Connecticut leading United here in the girls club rugby high school championships. We will be back with the second half of action in just five minutes. got you into rugby? So I was like fouling out in all my basketball games, so I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? World's best. In the hands of everybody. What's your experience with RCT so far? Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing the sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. You know? Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby just comes to one practice has ended up liking it. And I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact, like same rules, guys and girls, and I didn't believe her. And then she was like, oh, come out to our practices. And I did, and I was like, oh yeah, I wanna play. And then I started playing, and it was really fun. It's just, I don't know, it's just a game that I love. It's pretty fun though, I don't know, I just love everything about it. It's a laid back atmosphere of it. We all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and builds, builds like a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like how we even like beat fun of each other in the game, but then we like come together after yeah. and we're just like shake hands. And well, well, what do you think that is? Why is that? I, I personally think it's like 
It's just we're all one community, like it's one family. You all play rugby. It's just one family. It's a sport. Yeah. It's a sport. Yeah, because if you have to have respect for the person doing after you, because you work hard and they have to work just as hard after you. So you say that respect is probably the greatest value you can gain out of this game. By far. Yeah. By far. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. to nothing. This is a number six versus number three matchup with Aspetic. Doing all they can in team efforts to get tries on the board. Did get an update earlier from Cool D where it was a 10 to 5 victory for the Charlotte Cardinals over San Mateo in their first game. Back to action onto the field. This is United in the Indigo going from right to left across your screen. Aspetic Valley in the yellow and black going from left to right. And look at this, United with a disruption. Oh, this is how you want to open the second half. Coming back from just receiving a try to close the first. And it is United with a quick answer. Causing the disruption. A turnover for a try. 12 to 5. With conversions to come. And look at this, the defensive pressure here. I was going to say, I bet that's United number 10. Love her defensive presence and her timing on the field so far. She forces the cough up of the ball. And look at this, number three benefits, centers the ball, score 12 to 5 with the conversion to come. Keep an eye on that number 10 as the second half goes on. Her defensive play and awareness off of these scrums has been extremely heads up. Her timing impeccable. The kick impeccable, 12 to seven on mark. And we do have a game. Aspetuck had the majority of the field territory in the first half of action. We'll get one more look here at the try being scored. Under the post, and we see the Majestics from Utah cheering on their state mates. The kickoff deep off the boot of Aspetuck Valley and United here on the go, continuing downfield. Eventually taken down is the number one. Quick distribution off the back of the ruck, and this is something where Aspetuck Valley in the first half was able to slow play a lot of their defensive rucks. Quick action gives a little bit of running at pace, but United, with a turnover, must roll away from the ball after being tackled in the placement. Aspetic Valley with a quick tap and go. That's their number 22, one of the try scores from the first half. 
Apologies to any fans watching at home. Do have conflicting rosters and numbers for some of these teams. And we'll look for updates as the tournament continues. Aspetic Valley with another penalty. Discussing their options, and it looks like they're indicating a kick to post. This is the number 13. One for two on conversions on the day so far. Both of her strikes have had the height and the distance. This one centered on the field. From what we've seen so far, should be an easy extra three for Aspetic Valley. It is up and it is good. So Valley extends their lead. 15 to seven the mark. What is key here is the two score differential. Good game management. These teams in pools of three, the team just needs to top the pool. So going two and oh, it doesn't matter what the score line is, will put you into the national semifinal. But plenty to play for. We still have 16 and a half minutes left here in the second half of this Pool C matchup. United launching with a defensive pressure. Aspetek able to recover and look at this leg drive getting those extra meters. Forcing United to reset their defensive wall to stay onside. An offside is called all the same, so that extra leg drive creates another penalty for Aspetek Valley. Penalty count against United is creeping up a bit. Tap is taken, some referee direction is given. United seems to have corralled themselves back to being back 10 on that penalty and onside. Play is continuing. Aspetic Valley with a deep distribution, looking at the chip downfield, straight into the hands here of United's fullback. Looking for the offload from contact. A bit of a risky call under pressure. No advantage gained from the knock on by Aspetic Valley. This is going to be a scrum to United. We need to be certain when we're getting these offloads that we're getting clear passing channels that our support is in a better position than if we just took to contact and set a ruck. As that ruck does set that all important offside line. Behind that right away. Come. Come. So scrum in the center of the field, 40 meters from the goal line. United has options to either side. Right now the option is a pick and go from their number three playing the number eight, but an excellent coverage from number 22 from Aspetek. United with the carry. Valley concedes the ruck. And United going straight in, playing tight support and tight strike lines. So go back to the replay here. We get to look at some of the timing on these offloads, getting good go forward here. The ball just barely out, and it looks like Aspetic Valley may have knocked on in the scramble recovery attempt. A scrum to United. Numbers towards this near sideline, steep with their backs. Get a clear view of the scrum. The pick and go here from the number three. She gets some separation, bumps herself back a bit, but able to get that go forward, recovers the space. United. Quick with the ruck. And we look at these clusters of the yellow jerseys. There's so much space towards the outside if United could just get it there and get it there quickly. So credit to the Valley defense. Stripped backwards. United maintaining possession, but a double whistle blown. With a scrum to Aspetek. Right 
So the ball knocked on by number six. If she had bobbled and just caught that herself, it would have been no knock on play on. But because it hit the Aspatuck player, that's what creates the knock on situation, even though there was a little bit of that bobbling back and forth. The scrum to reset. Again, 15 to seven, our current score line, Aspatuck Valley leading United. 12 and a half minutes left to play. United matching numbers flat across the back of the scrum. Aztec Valley split. Opportunities on offense to either direction. The tap in the top from their number 24. United with a bit of a drive on that scrum. And it's Aztec going towards the far side of the field. She takes on four or five United defenders. And United coming away with a strip. So isolating the ball carrier provides a turnover to United. A key one as they're inside of Aztec Valley's half of the field. A little chip and chase over. Now we need to be mindful to offside with the kick as well. Good coverage on the tackle. United is there. United looking to dig the ball out, looking for that jackal. It's a question if the ball was made playable and as to which team has rights to the ball. Both teams should have rights to the ball during open play. So a penalty to United, quickly tapped, quickly taken, going towards that far side line. Number three, she scored the first shot. Will she have a second? Yes, she will. The try awarded. So United's defensive pressure able to come away with the ball, the cheeky nudge downfield off the boot, and it is United trailing by a mark of 12 to 15 with a conversion attempt to come. We'll get a replay as well. So this distribution here towards the outside, able to slide and evade and fend her way. One defender, two, three tackles evaded, then turns the corner, looking to center the ball. One last shoulder is lowered. Excellent play here from number three from United. These Utah teams have always done well when it comes to every level of the sport. Boys rugby, girls rugby, host of the NAI sevens, which is one of the largest U sevens tournaments in the country. The ball is nudged over the line, 15 to 14 the score. All to play for here in this Pool C matchup. A win in game one sets up an easier pathway to the national semifinal. This will be an Aspetic Valley restart. Nine and a half minutes left to play. One point differential. If you are into thrillers, just buckle up and enjoy the next nine minutes of this ride. United feels the ball cleanly. See the offload when the defensive pressure is there. We could see some more ball movement before that defensive pressure, before decisions must be made. And now the defensive pressure has indeed produced a turnover. Aspetuck Valley, ball in hand. Number two, dragging defenders with her. We have got a bit of a maul. Need to see forward progress in a maul. And that does not happen. So we're going to have a scrum to United. United inside of their 22. Seen quite a few picks from the number eights from both teams and from both games in the tournament so far. So keep a heads up as to the open green spaces. Ball is in and quickly out. Another low driving rubber of a kick off the boot of United. We see the counter chip attempt. Some ping pong action back and forth. This is going to be an offsides call played. Number 13, I believe, was in front of the kicker when the kick was made, was not put into an onside position. So our referee is going to give the option for the penalty back or the scrum up.
We just need to be mindful. With these back and forth kicks, we need to have the kicker or someone else from behind the kicker run past you to be back onside. Scrum to United, just shy of midfield. Seven and a half minutes left to play here in the second half. United split with their backs. We see Aspetuck Valley again flat with numbers to both sides of the scrum. Ball quickly out. Here is the ball carry again. The try scoring number three. She's got a double looking for a triple. Taken down, penalty awarded, high contact is made. To the tap off the ground, going to a forward pod, setting up their penalty play. United towards the far side, playing towards their support. Bit of a stop start and she is still going, taken down just shy of the 22, United threatening. Getting a good forward and stringing along multiple phases of play using the power of their forwards towards this far sideline. So we hear the referee on the mic that United was not supporting their own weight in the ruck. We have to have stability. We think about shoulders staying above the hips. So penalty to Aspetuck Valley. We see the kick to touch. Makes its mark. And we'll see the first line out of the second half, Aspetuck Valley. Again, the score remains 15 to 14 as the clock is winding down. Five minutes and change remaining in the game here in Pool C action. United with a steal off the line out. Excellent go forward, taking it straight up into the Aspetic Valley defense. We see the attempt at the pick and go, going over the rock in the space that was created behind. The ball knocked on by Aspetic Valley, a scrum to United now being indicated. Unfortunate on the timing there, the advantage of that ball in hand in the open space just over the ruck was a clear line of attack here for United. We'll get a look at this again. So the excellent intercept on the line out by this number six from United. And the battle at the ruck. Ball knocked on, but a short advantage being called, which has been fairly consistent as the game has gone on, to be fair. Ball in the scrum, quick, distributed towards the backs. A low pass recovered by the fly half, but looks like it may have been knocked on. A scrum to Aspetuck Valley. The pressure on defense from the number 24 on that scrum, disrupting the clean passing line from that number 10 to her first receiver. Again, a one-point game. The ball is low. It looks like it did hit the ground. Love next level rugby giving us all the back and forth slow-mo replay action. Scrum is going to reset. Four minutes to play in a one point match. When we look at quality of rugby and player development. These pressure situations are so revealing. I'd love to see how competitive this high school level of girls rugby has gotten here in the United States. The ball is in and out. We see the referee raise her whistle. We'll look for either timing for a potential offsides call. Some questions with the binding and the release of the flankers. The timing had been pretty good most of the game. So an error in defensive execution, giving Aspetuck Valley ball in hand. Aspetuck Valley with a strong carry on the go forward. That looks like number seven, fighting to keep her feet. Another penalty. have about two and a half minutes. United must regain possession of the ball if you're looking for a win. If you're Aspetuck Valley, you just want to control the game, control the clock. These lineouts, strategic. 
because we're getting two and a half minutes left to play. As a time as a referee, you're thinking of your time management, or excuse me, as a coach, you're thinking of your time management as well. Do you have substitutions that you want to make? Again, to eat up on the remaining time on the clock. Aspects of Valley with the line out. United will be looking for a repeat of their disruption before. Short on the line out, and here we go. It is another steal. United's jumper gets it in the air, off the top to their number six, and it is Aspect Valley that gets it right back. Inside of two minutes to play, Aspetic Valley looking to distribute wide. United with a launch on defense. Aspetic Valley looks like they've got space to this near sideline, but they're going to have to win this ruck first. Quite the battle. United doing all they can here on these counters, looking for the steal. They must get possession. Aspetic Valley, 90 seconds left to play, a one point lead. Not releasing on the ruck, a penalty to United. 80 seconds left to go. Looking for that quick tap, but not quite through the mark. We're going to reset. <laughs> 70 seconds to play. The tap, the distribution. United gets the offload, gets the placement of the ball. United cuts back inside, looking for support, looking for the holes. Tackled well. Aspetic Valley putting on the outfits for a counter wreck. Strong whistles are blown. We're going to have a minute on the field. A United player is down. So it'll be time off of the clock. So time off for the player evaluation again, being mindful of player welfare and safety at all levels of the game. We should expect play to resume with a scrum as play was disrupted during open play, United in possession of the ball. As we look ahead towards the rest of the tournament. Our next game at noon is going to be Majestics out of Utah taking on the Raleigh Cobras in Pool B action. We'll continue on with Pool D with San Mateo taking on Clayton. This will be the second Pool D matchup as they had a game earlier on field two that saw the Charlotte Cardinals victorious over San Mateo by a mark of 10 to 5. At 1 o'clock, we'll also have Morris, who we saw in the first Pool A game, taking on the Raleigh Redhawks. And then continuing on, Pool C on Field 1, we'll see Aspetuck taking on the Charlotte Tigers, the Red Hawks taking on the Sac Pal Amazon. So it'll be a short turnaround for Pool A, playing at 1 and 3 for the Raleigh Red Hawks. 4 o'clock, we see a Pool D matchup between Clayton and the Cardinals. And we round out our day at 5 p.m. with the Wando Bahines out of South Carolina taking on the Majestics out of Utah. Teams are in a point system where a win gets them three points, a tie two points, and a loss one point. If we have multiple one and one teams coming out of a pool or we need to go to any tiebreak situation, the first tiebreaker, we go head to head, then to points differential, tries differential, points for, tries for, and if everything is equal, it moves to a coin toss. Looking across our fields, we've got middle school action taking place here on field two. We have a three-team middle school festival with two middle school teams, as well as one Barbarians team. We also have the single school girls national championships taking place at Cottage Grove in Wisconsin. We heard applause on the field. And play will resume with a scrum to United. About 30 seconds left to play here in the second half. We saw that scoreboard 15 to 14, Aspetuck Valley leading United. This is going to be such a revealing moment. How are these final 30 seconds going to play out? Who has ice in their veins? Who can maintain possession, maintain composure, and hold on for a win? 
United from just inside their 22 meter mark. They're going to have about 80 meters to go downfield. A strong pick and a strong carry here by United. That's the exit you want, sucking in all the Aspetech defenders they can. Still on their feet, still going forward. United with the distribution towards the far side of the field. Again, powerful runners. And again, we see all these Aspetech yellow jerseys swarming around the ball that leaves space to the other side. But United must get clean distribution to be able to move the ball there. Keeping possession, keeping the continuity game in their go forward. They've gone about 10 meters up. They get the space towards the outside. Line break here by the number three. She scored two tries. She gets the offload to her number eight. The support is still there and United is flowing forward. Time up on the official clock. The next stoppage will be the game. United still fighting, moving forward in a mall. Penalty to United. If you're United, you're looking for the quick tap. The referee is going to not quite allow that. United, time is up 25 meters from the goal line. They're down 15 to 14. Do they have a kicker? Instead, they're going to tap and go. So United ball in hand. Aspetech Valley nearly able to intercept the pass. United again. Keeping her feet, keeping the ball in play. United inside of the 22. Aspetech Valley trying to roll away. Number 13 gets it. So patient phase play. Number three again with a palm off. She sits her down. Number three inside of the five. Number three, is she across the goal line? It is three for three out of number three for United on the final play. United is going to take a 19 to 15 lead with a conversion to come. So United doing it when it counts. Let's go back to the play here. Again, Aspetech trying to exit the ruck. Number three sits down the defense. She is able to dance her way down the sideline, evades number 24. She takes on two defenders and powers her way just over the goal line. Three tries from this powerful player, United breaking the hearts of your Aspetuck Valley fans. Quite a game, 15 to 19 the score. We'll still have a conversion attempt off the boot from United. Again, being mindful of point differential in some of these tie break situations with these pools of three. Looking to add the extras. It is a low swooping attempt. The score is going to remain 19 to 15. United holding on to their seeding as a number three seed entering the tournament. Coming away victorious and stealing it on the final play. Heads up action by both teams. We look at the penalties that provided opportunities and we'll go back again to this third of three tries by the number three from United. Look at these line breaks that create opportunities. Four. Strong ball carries, strong support. This is the only way that they've broken the Aspetuck line is when they have had some forward momentum and they're able to evade the tackles. So going in again for the third time, congratulations to United, congratulations to Aspetuck on a game well played. I am Liz Entwistle with Next Level Rugby brought to you by the Rugby Network. We will be up for Pool B for Majestic against the Raleigh Cobras at noon. When we pick up the ball, we also pick up a legacy. A legacy that stretches beyond your current team. A legacy built on the backs of those who came before you with hard work. And for those who will come after you, we promise it won't be easy. But we'll be there, supporting you on and off the field.
way too good. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports. I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks. Welcome back to the National Girls Club Rugby Championships. I am Liz Entwistle here with Next Level Rugby on the Rugby Network. This is our third game of the day here on Field One with the Majestics out of Utah, the number two seed for the tournament, kicking off to the Raleigh Cobras, the number eight seed for the tournament. We just came off of a thriller of a match where United off of Utah stole the game at the very last play from Aspetech 19 to 15 earlier in game one. It was SACPAL Amazon's 12 to five victors over Morris. So close games so far on field two, we had a 10 to five score as well. Evenly matched teams here where point differentials and tries scored could make all the difference. Here is Raleigh with a put in. It's Cobra's team securing where the ball is. Distribution to the first receiver. Backwards play on says our referee. United, excuse me, Majestics, a front on defense. So Driving the Cobras back. We're going to have a scrum to the Majestics. This Raleigh team, an affiliate of the strong Raleigh Venom women's program. They've had a history of success playing out of the Carolinas region and have expanded their brand into the high school game. Utah always strong when it comes to the high school and youth levels. And we've seen the Utah Vipers on the women's side do quite well in women's club rugby competition. The ball is in. So we're going to see our scrum reset, needing to have a stable attacking platform. Referees and game management have been mindful of no early drives, no wheels on the scrums. 
and making sure that players are bound. If there are little niggles to clean up from any of the games so far, it is in the line out, ensuring that we have straight throws and ensuring that we are binding well and that flankers are releasing in a timely manner off of the scrums and not offside. So we've seen a few early releases and penalty counts that have disrupted some of the flow of the game. Right now, speaking of flow, look at this pick and go from the Majestics number eight in the red scrum cap. Majestics on the prowl, about five meters from the goal line. Wally Cobra is looking to realign. Majestics with the pick and go and the try. So first on the board, two minutes into the opening half of play. And that's another trend we've seen all game long. Teams scoring early on in the half. And then we've seen a lot of the game scheduled so evenly mashed, but there's no match for the power off of this. The pick and go, the low shoulder and the dive to ensure the try is scored. Majestics taking a five to nothing lead pending the conversion attempt. Teams being mindful of their clock management. We've seen several conversion attempts, taking as much of the 90 seconds as they can. This conversion attempt is good. Majestic's taking a seven to nothing lead. To go back again to the try scoring opportunity, we saw the scrum that led to the line break, that led to field territory, continued possession for the Majestic's and diving over low. I used to have a coach in college that would talk about diving for the try line and using our bodies, throwing our momentum, making us unstoppable as we get to ground. And that was just what we saw out of the Majestic's try score. We have the restart from the Cobras, a bit of a line drive downfield, taken out of the backfield by the Majestic's, looking for space, looking for support. What a crisp pass that was. What good coverage and adjustments that was from the Cobras. Majestic's doing all they can to break through this quickly realigned co defensive ball. Majestic's again, crisp, crisp with the passing. We'll keep an eye on that. And our full referee crews mic'd up all game long. So we hear the very clear direction coming. Scrum to Majestic. So some redirection as we look at the scrum setup. We've got options for Majestics to the left and right side of the scrums. The scrum at the middle of the field, about 30 meters from the Majestics defensive goal line. Raleigh equaling them on defense. The receiver straight behind the scrum and everyone else out to the left and the right. To the near sideline, the Majestics go. We've got some space, they've got some pace, and the Majestics are breaking their way to midfield. An excellent offload, keeping the ball alive. Love the flow and continuity on this way. Majestics looking to secure their own ruck. The Cobras recognizing to concede. Bit of a skip pass, the bounce off the ground. Patience from the Majestics, still paying off in possession. The Majestics making their way well supported downfield. Distribution to the left hand side. The unforced knock on scrum to the Cobras. The Cobras, one of many Raleigh teams here in action. We'll see the Red Hawks coming up later in Pool A action. We've also got fellow Carolinians with the Wahines in South Carolina and the Charlotte Tigers. We'll give a shout out to our engineer, Mike, who's been a longtime member of the Raleigh Rugby Club. Venom and Vipers, all sorts of snakes on the pitch. We're going to have our scrum reset. The ball is in, bouncing off of the hooker's foot towards the Majestic side. Players seem to stop a little bit uncertain 
about the scenario. So we'll see the scrum reset again. A reminder that we are playing 20 minute halves. We are six and a half minutes into the first half of play. So the ball is in and quickly out. Raleigh looking to recover, and you hear the gasp of frustration as the pass is low, the ball knocked on. The defensive pressure does its job, often being in the right place at the right time, can yield results, and now the result is a scrum to the Majestics, deep in Raleigh territory. Crouch. Find. Set. In. Majestic set steep. Look at the spacing between their first, second, third receiver out to the strong side. A pick again by their number eight. She set up the try scoring opportunity earlier. The timing on these offloads. What a show. Majestic's going over the line, adding their second try. Seven and a half minutes into the game. So playing with support, continuity, making the passes out of contact, using their height and size to their advantage. The Majestics living up to their Majestic billing will go again. Look at this eight pick. Two scrums have led to two eight picks, have led to two tries for the Majestics program. Over the shoulder and in to the end goal. 12 to nothing pending the conversion attempt. And look at this celebration. The drop kick is good. 14 to nothing our mark. Eight and a half minutes into the first half of play. And one more time again. Loving the heads up play with the eight picks. Again, with the U19 laws and the variations, not allowing the excessive driving in the scrums. We have seen a significant number of picks from the number eight position in order to get the go forward off of the scrums, able to get the ball out quickly before you would have a penalty for driving too much. Raleigh with the kickoff. Majestic set for the kick release. Here's number eight again. She got sure hands, strong hands, and a strong run. Looking for support, taken down, wisely choosing to place the ball rather than force a pass from the ground. Redistributing for the Majestics. Raleigh quickly up in support. A good launch from their defensive wall. The Majestics on the attack again. This continuity going forward. It's just waves and waves of runners and opportunity. Raleigh. Making the stop. Look at the numbers here on the ruck for the Majestics as well. It's number 24 to the number 10. Majestics on the go. Raleigh trying to do all they can to stop them. Trying to make the tackle from behind. We hear the strong double whistle blown. Time, time off the clock. So we're going to have... Just a conference with our captains to make sure that we're cleaning up any of the niggles in the game. Majestic's on the go, meters away from the goal line, taken down by the Cobras. Cobras looking to jackal, opportunity not there, resetting their defensive wall. In the meantime, Majestics reset their offense. Majestics numbers are there. The continuity is on again. This has been their winning recipe so far. The pick and go off the back try line is breached again. Majestics extending their lead, 19 to nothing the mark. At about 10 minutes into the first half of play. So two tries after scrums, another try here off of the penalty. So these set pieces yielding opportunities from the Majestics program, playing nearly the entire game in this Cobra half of the field. If you're the Cobras, you want to get possession. They've been playing a lot of defense, and that is the far more tiring aspect of the game. Let's we'll see if we can get time back on the clock. As the Majestics line up their third conversion attempt.
The conversion is missed. Score will remain 19 to nothing, 10 minutes into the first half. Raleigh with the restart. Off the boot and fielded at the 22, bouncing its way into Majestic Hands. A high kick, giving Raleigh some time to collect their defense. Majestic. Threading their way on the far sideline, and Raleigh's defense creates a turnover. Raleigh on the go, and she's kept her feet. An acrobatic performance on the field for the Cobras. Raleigh again. Looking for support, finding their way to midfield. Double tackle made by the Majestics, and Majestics looking to poach with hands in. Which way is the penalty being called? Penalty to the Crobos, so a penalty against the Majestic. the placement of the ball, Raleigh. So taking advantage of the timing, we saw two to three Majestic shooters creating a whole good heads up play by the Raleigh Vipers back to cut back inside and take the space. Raleigh keeping the ball alive here through a few more phases, attacking just outside of their 22. The Cobras finally getting some go forward. Majestic with a steal, Majestic with some open field. Look at this breakaway and look at the support on this near sideline. Number 19 with the pace. Good field awareness by the ball carrier to see where support was. If she needed to slow down her run, knowing she may not have had all the gas in the tank to finish the try. Majestic still on the go. You see the pick from their number seven. And the try awarded 24 to nothing. The Majestics extend their lead. So a key turnover, an excellent line break, but love the awareness. Checking over the shoulder is support there. What do I need to do? I don't need to try to force this break just to get tackled at the end. And here it is, the heads up play with a little scoop from the number seven from the Majestics. Majestic. Setting up for the conversion attempt. Kickers have been two for three so far. We'll make that two for four. The conversion attempt wide to the right. Score remains 24 to nothing. So we'll go back again to the line break that set this all up. We see the little bit of the duck, a little bit of the weave. And look at that. She knows her support is there. She knows she doesn't need to try to score the try herself and risk a penalty. We see that often happen with holding on and trying to force too much. And instead, a couple of phases later, here it goes. The Majestic team supporting each other, getting downfield. We see the deep kickoff by the Cobras. The launching defense, they're pinning Majestic inside of the 22. Now the hands are there with a little bit of space to break. Holding on for the tackle, and she's able to get her down. Majestic still on the attack. The Cobras attempt everything they can to prevent these breaks, and the Majestic flow downfield. Here it is in action. Continuity, continuity. The passes again. That last one may have been forward, so we're going to have a scrum to Raleigh. For thinking of stopping this Majestic team, you really need to stop them before they get started. We want to make tackles quickly to ground. Try to force the ruck situation where you can then launch defense against them. When they get free-flowing, they're reminiscent of the Fijian Rugby 7 style of play. Their offloads, timing, and spacing have been on. The scrum to Raleigh. Four minutes and change to go in the first half.
Majestics, this time doing it, looking to go around the outside. The try is rewarded. The ball is grounded before the flag is taken out. So the try is scored, and then the feet hit the flag. Majestic extending their lead, 29 to nothing. With four minutes left to play here in the first half. So look at this distribution again, getting it to the outside. Good time, and we saw the draw on the two-on-one. Players in space for the Majestics, forcing Raleigh to have to scramble, covering first the ball carrier, and then the outside. That's a tough realignment to make, especially with the way that your hips are turned. And Majestic is able to thread that needle 29 to nothing. A difficult conversion to come. This is going to be from that far touch line. Easier for a right footed kicker than a left, but a difficult conversion all the same. Gets a little too much under the ball. The score will remain 29 to nothing as we go into the final three minutes here of the first half. Cool B action here on field one at Warren Wilson College in Swannanoa, North Carolina, just outside of Asheville. Again, a view of the tribe being scored. The flag was taken out, but the players stayed in the playing enclosure. 29 to nothing, two and a half minutes left to go. Excellent distribution of the ball here. Players taking the ball at pace. We're going to have a penalty to Raleigh. High contact made, we cannot have stiff arms, palm offs, fends to the face. That would do at higher levels of rugby, but not here at this U19 level. So powerful and mighty, but just too high on that contact. Credit that Raleigh player that took that massive hit. Raleigh opts to kick for a touch. This will be a Raleigh lineup, and this is going to be their first true attacking opportunity inside of the Majestics half of the field. We saw a couple of breaks throughout the course of this first half. This is also going to be our first line out of the half at all. Raleigh with five in the line out. Majestic matching. So we'll look for strike runners to insert in the back line. We see Majestic line up their extra forwards behind the line out so that way they can provide another wave of quick support and defense. Majestic disrupts. Majestic with the ball in hand, taking the space that's right in front of them. And Raleigh makes a tackle to touch, so we'll see another Cobra line out. And that will be the half. Majestics leading the Raleigh Cobras 29 to nothing here in this Pool B matchup here at the National Girls High School Rugby Championships. We saw powerful running and excellent support here from this Majestics team. This number eight in the red scrum cap has had two picks off of scrums that have led to Majestic's tries. We saw another try, their third try, come from a penalty. When you give this team some space to run and they get their go forward, they are proving fairly unstoppable. Look for adjustments coming into the second half. I'll be back in five minutes here. Field one. shoulder pads or helmets we keep playing when it hurts and we leave everything on the field what we wear must be built for our day
in our game. We play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. products We are back with highlights from the first half of action. This has been our highest scoring game so far with the Majestics in the white and blue leading the Raleigh Cobras 29 to nothing. This Majestic program out of Utah has put on quite a show with their continuity play. You've got line breaks, you've got offloads, they've got excellent support on the field and that has been all the difference with their five first half tries. We saw them with a couple of scores off of the scrums. We saw one score that originated from a penalty and then we saw line movement to his outside of the field so they've been doing it from all corners possible Raleigh has been valiant in their defensive efforts trying to stop this onslaught of majestic attack we'll look to see what adjustments were made here at the half the local Cobra is going to be kicking off wearing black going from left to right across your screen you ready getting all of our confirmations on the field our referee is mic'd up, so giving all the insight possible as to the calls on the pitch. The ball is up, the ball is down, and now it is in the hands of the Majestic. Majestic going forward, looking to secure their rough. A strong whistle blown, a penalty to Raleigh, or against Raleigh. 
We're not releasing. The Majestic on the go. This red scrum cap, this player in the number 25 jersey, a player to watch. She's been playing and aligning at the number eight position in the scrums. But right now, let's watch Raleigh in action. A penalty against the Cobras. This is only about the second or third penalty against Majestic at this time, giving Cobra an opportunity, fighting their way into the Majestic half of the field. A more local crowd loving the action. Penalty called back. We need to make sure that we tap the ball. It goes through the mark. The ball is released. If we are majestic, getting some direction, that contact needs to be taken low. We saw a couple of high stiff arms. So protecting players and their welfare. Rally with a tap. Rally with an offload. The driving tackle for the majestic. A clean, safe tackle. Being mindful of placement of the hips and the shoulders. Rally. A penalty to the Cobras yet again. And their Cobra is fighting their way. This is their first true threat to score a try. Getting action on the far side of the field. An excellent carry from the number seven, keeping her feet. See the pop to the forward pod, taking down again. Majestic looking for the jackal. So this is going back to the initial penalty that was called. That was a good jackling poaching attempt. However, no advantage was gained by the Cobras. So we're going to go back to the infraction. And it is going to be Raleigh again with a tap, trying to keep the go forward via their forwards. Another carry out of the number 22. The Cobras setting up their pods, looking for support. Number 23, just barely ahead of her runner, wasn't able to get there to secure the ruck. But another strong whistle blown, this time a penalty to the Majestic. So obstruction being called. You can't block or shepherd on offense. The chip downfield by the Majestic, fielded cleanly by the Cobras. Both teams will need to realign. Look at this powerful drive. And what a tackle for a loss here by the Majestic. The ball bounces out. Cobra able to recover. Majestic with zero this ruck, conceding to the Cobras. Raleigh looking to break past midfield again. A lot of sideways running. Finally straightens up, taken down by the Majestic. All right, now releasing. Another penalty against the Majestic. So this is now equaling the penalty count on the game between both teams. Majestic giving away opportunities to the Cobras. And we'll give some credit to the Cobras for being slippery, sneaky little offensive players that are able to draw these penalties as well. And I mean that sneaky and slippery in the best way. I was trying to allude to snakes. Couldn't quite get there. We will restart with a scrum. So we look at some of these tackles and these powerful drives from the Majestic player. Again, textbook form, especially at the U19 level. And here again, this leg drive and the tackle for loss. Back to this action on the field and back to the scrum. We see the pick from the number eight, Raleigh. Pushing forward, another strong tackle made. And we look at the care made in bringing that player down and the release. Well done, Majestic. Well done, Raleigh. Still ball in hand. Raleigh has been on a three minute tear of possession turnover is made majestic now the chance to counter raleigh looking to intercept the ball stays in play and play on majestic now fight back and gain all that territory just shy of midfield looking for the long skip passes towards the outside patient on the bounce not wanting to knock on but knock on does happen scrum to raleigh so fairly equal now in all of that territory that the Majestic gained through their line breaks and their powerful running was eaten away then with the passing backwards, very steep on their lines. We look here, 
just off the fingertips, bouncing backwards, again, bouncing backwards. That's almost a time where you want to think about diving on the ball and setting that ruck platform, slowing down the play and recovering the support of your teammates. Raleigh scrum. And look at that drive as well. Unfortunately, not something that we can really do at the U19 level. The ball also straight out the tunnel. So scrum will reset. Reset on the scrum. Ball bobbled, but backwards. Play on. Cobras working towards the far sideline. So we hear the call from our referee. There was no advantage gained after the offsides subsequent play. Cobra's knock on, so this is going to bring it back to the penalty. Again, something that Majestic will need to clean up, especially as they're looking into their later games. Another strong whistle blown. Score steady at 29 to nothing. The Majestic leading Raleigh. We're going to have another conference. And this time our referee is reaching for the cards. A yellow card being shown to the Majestic number five. So this will be a trip to the sideline. They will play 10 minutes short, 15 against 14. And then play. Resuming on field, you see the carry by the Cobras. If you're the Cobras, you're thinking about taking advantage of this extra player advantage. If you are the Majestic and can walk away without a try being scored, you're pretty happy with your defense. We see the high sky ball recovered by the Majestic. Defensive pressure by Raleigh. Strong carry by the Majestic number eight. This time, a penalty to the Majestic. So we hear the knock on a scrum to rally, and before here is the yellow carded play. High contact being made. We see up around the neck. So the yellow card is justified. We look at referees and they have an escalation and de-escalation tree of how they are making their calls. If you're ever questioning a call in the field, highly recommend getting certified as a referee yourself. A great way to give back to the game and invest in the future of the sport. So the scrum setting, again, being mindful of this one player advantage that the Cobra have. So we look... And we see that we've got a cluster of players defensively shading very tight to the scrum, assuming then that Raleigh's offensive set is similarly tight. It looks like Majestic is going to be playing without an eight man, so dropping that player from the scrum. So an eight on seven advantage in the scrum for the Cobras. Hey, what do you hear, Camille? Is it good to go? Back one? Is it match? All right, sorry, match. Right. Okay, confirmation again Coach. of the 19 rules. So this will put the scrum to seven on seven. Set. This is going to give the Cobra an extra player in their back line. All right. I really pull. It'll be penalty to black. Please get back 10. So an early engagement cannot drive before the ball is in. So this is giving the Cobra another penalty and another chance to make their way downfield. About five meters from the Majestic 22. It's like that number eight believed that the ball was out. We see the penalty advantage attempt to chip downfield. Knowing advantage was there. If the play worked, fantastic. If it didn't, you tried it and you know that you've got advantage to bring it back. So that offside call there on the number eight from Majestic. So now Cobra's getting the ball to the mark. Score remains 29 to nothing. Ten minutes into this second half of play. 
The ball thrown forward. This will be a scrum to the Majestic. Match. What time is on the yellow? What on the so we see the tap and go. And there, the forward pass, the ball runner just in front of the distributor. Oftentimes, we'll look at the release point of where the hands are and what direction they are pointing with that ball tapper going and her back turn. It's a little bit of a different scenario. Ball in and quickly out. Again, without the number eight, we're not going to see those number eight picks on the scrums. So instead, it's out to the backs and out wide. Majestics on the attack. There's going to be space on the field. A lot of black jerseys there around the point of contact here. I saw that try earlier from the number seven. She gets the offload, avoids being tackled into touch. Majestics keeping the ball alive. Another strong carry. Quick distribution to this far sideline, and look at that behind the back, and now they are getting more go forward. Majestics on the hunt to add to their try tally, and there we go. There we are. The Majestics get their first try of the second half. It took them nearly 12 minutes to do it. 34 to nothing, they extend their lead. I'm gonna look again to the origination. So we saw the strong carries, spreading yellow the ball on. wide, a couple strikes midfield, but look at that. Black, that behind the back little flip pass from the number 10 sends yellow the play to the number eight jersey and moving forward. And again, another cheeky offload. The try scored by the Majestics number six. Their sixth try of the game. Clock winding down, about seven and a half minutes left to go. There should not be much time remaining on the yellow card. We'll see if we can get confirmation from the referee. The kick is good, lead extends 36 to nothing. So make that three out of six on conversions on the day so far for the Majestics. A short little chip kick, and it is yielding some dividends when it comes to the ability for the Cobra's defense to realign. The Majestic, so keeping their feet, so no tackles made. And look at that. It slips through the buttonhole. The Majestics going to answer back to back tries. Taking it all the way back to the end goal off of the kick receipt. So just the little 10, 12 meter chip bounces on the ground. Takes a little bit of time, but once they get going, the Majestics cannot be stopped. The lead extends to 41 to nothing. So we look at this, the ball bouncing back, bouncing back. We see the pickup off the ground, pass one, pass two, the line being broken. And look at that, slips all of the defenders, just able to cut right through the entire Cobra's defense has enough speed and enough pace. Down the far sideline, over the try line, and the Majestics, 41 to nothing the mark, a conversion to come, and still about five minutes and change left to play here in the second half. And the Majestics, the number two seed, coming into this weekend's tournament of 12 for the club rugby level. We do have the single school championships taking place in Wisconsin with the likes of DSHA, Catholic Memorial, Orchard Park, City Honors, Eagle, and more. For all the updates, you can check out all the spreadsheets in action and updates from the rugby breakdown. One more look, though, this beauty of a try. 
Again, slipping through the space and then going around the outside. Defenders on the pursuit, but not quite enough to stop this majestic offense. So another low kick, looking to draw the knock on, and that it does. He's from the black here. Got knock on. Score remains 41 to nothing inside of four and a half minutes left to play. So the Cobras with an attacking opportunity just outside of the 22, about 25 meters from the goal line. If we see a number eight lined up at the back of the scrum, we'll know that we are back at full strength. I saw it straight out too. So we need our props to close the tunnel. The hookers can't strike until the ball is in. They cannot flash their foot as well. So we'll reset the scrum. Three and a half minutes. See the number eight pick off the back of the scrum. Looks like the potential for the knock on. So reset with the scrum, this time further to the far sideline, and this time a Majestic's put in. The uh, Cobra scrum half needs to realign to the other side. Equaling the put in. Unless she had a very novel defensive yeah. tactic in the works. The Majestics put the ball in. It is tied up. We saw the scrum go to the knees. We saw a couple players slipping on the field. It may just be a matter of where as the tournament goes on. A couple of sections getting some extra TLC. It was a white early push. So it's going to be a free kick. You have time to go back 10. Please, back 10. So inside into our referee game management, again, very clearly explaining the early drive. So a free kick, a short arm penalty. We'll often see teams either set up a play or tap and go. They could choose to kick for touch. It would just not be their line out as in a full arm penalty. Cobras, tap with the offload, looking for their forwards, looking for support. This is going to be a knock on. Again, off the hands, I believe of that number 24 because it landed in the hands of 22 as opposed to her own. That is a knock on, even though the ball did not hit the ground. It was still forward. Again, good clear direction from our referee. Referees, coaches, and those aspiring, take note. We see the tap, a good strike from the hooker, good placement there. The ball held up for the scrum half, able to distribute off the back, the chip downfield, the ball bobbling and bouncing around, a knock on by the Cobras. It's about 40 seconds remaining in the game. Scrum to the Majestics. We saw the first two tries of the game evolve from picks from the player lined up in the number eight position. With them being in this position and this side of the field, wouldn't be surprised to see her pick and go again. We also see the width here of the Majestics backs and how tight the Cobras were on defense. However, we heard the earlier warnings here about the early drive. So another free kick awarded. Majestics are going to need to work on that timing in the scrum to ensure that they avoid these penalties as they advance in the tournament. 
Crackle to touch. That will be the game. The Majestics, 41 to nothing. Victors after leading 29 to nothing at halftime. Congratulations to the Majestics out of Utah. The Cobra is able to slow them down here in the second half. A lot of lessons to be learned. We'll go back to the tries that were scored. Fantastic support from the Majestics team. Love that angle of the line. Changing angles. The low running. The dive for the try. Again, another dive for the try here, this time to the outside. You see that earlier high stiff arm that did yield a couple penalties. And just fantastic physical play out of this Majestics team. A few points to clean up as they advance in the tournament, wanting to avoid the high contact, wanting to embrace and acknowledge the excellent work from their low driving tackles, their tackles for loss. And again, the, these sort of line breaks, the flowing support, the channels that they have, the ability to offload, a fantastic final look here at the Majestics win. We will be back with more action this time rounding out Pool D. We'll see San Mateo in their second game of the day taking on the Raleigh Cardinals. Earlier in Pool D action, San Mateo were narrow 10 to five loss. into rugby so I was like fouling out in all my basketball games so I was like <laughs> why not try rugby out <laughs> experience with RCT so far? Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing the sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby just comes to one practice has ended up liking it. And I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact, like same rules, guys and girls, and I didn't believe her. And then she was like, oh, come on to our practices. And I did, and I was like, oh yeah, I wanna play. And then I started playing, and it was really fun. It's just, I don't know, it's just a game that I love. It's pretty fun though, I don't know, I just love everything about it. It's a laid back atmosphere of it. We all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and feels, feels like a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. <laughs> Like how we can like beat fun of each other in the game, but then we like come together after and we're just like shake hands. And... Well, what do you think that is? Why is that? I, I personally think it's like, it's just, we're all one community, like it's one family. You all play rugby, it's just one family. It's a sport. Yeah, because yeah, if you have to have respect for the person going after you, because you work hard and they have to work just as hard as you say. So you say that respect is probably the greatest value you can gain out of this game? By far. Yeah. By far.
In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sport, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their products. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. We are back in action for the National Girls Club Rugby Championships in North Carolina. I am Liz Entwistle with Next Level Rugby here on the Rugby Network. We have San Mateo out of Northern California taking on Clayton. This is San Mateo's second game of the day here in Pool D. Earlier they fell 10 to 5. First action of the day for Clayton. It's like equal strengths between both teams to start the game. A good low driving kickoff that was fielded well downfield. 
penalty being shown. Quick tap taken. Possession is being maintained. And that looks to be my good friend Elvia Sonye on the field as our center referee. Ball in action. We will call them pink for reference as both teams with the heavily black jerseys. San Mateo again with a quick tap, again pushing forward. We saw not 10 by Clayton, so this is going to give San Mateo a second penalty 10 meters downfield. Some discussion here from our scrum half. See the chip to space downfield, San Mateo. Not quite as aggressive on the chase as one might expect, so Clayton able to field ball, they counter kick. San Mateo able to recover. Now the Warriors are making their way. Back downfield, this is going to be a third penalty against Clayton. Pause to the left and to the right. And we see the skip out to the backs. Looking to create spacing downfield. Stopped and stripped by the Clayton defense. Heads up play by the number three. And it is Clayton on the go. This is a Clayton team out of North Carolina as well. And look at this break. Action downfield at full stride. Contact made, and it's just enough of a bump to get the tackle made. So San Mateo on the defense. Five meters from the goal line. Clayton looking to go over. Is a try held up? The try is knocked on. Defense under pressure. Thrilling offensive attack here out of Clayton. And we are going to have a five meter scrum to San Mateo. We get an earlier action in Pool D. San Mateo did fall 10 to 5 to the Charlotte Cardinals. And Clayton. What a line break and what pace. Both teams look at the recovery here out of the San Mateo team as well to realign on defense, preventing the try from being scored. And just enough tying up the ball, looking like the strip or the attempt of the strip causing the knock on. And a correction, San Mateo is in the black jerseys with the white print on them. It is a San Mateo Wolverines, Clayton in the pink. So it is going to be a scrum to Clayton in pink. Now Clayton on the counter. Fighting to keep the feet, keeping the ball in flow and in action. Clayton defense again with a stop, five meters short of the goal line, San Mateo. Looking to pick and go, looking to drive. Again, this goal line defense building that wall and sacking it in. San Mateo with a pick and go, and this time they're able to slice their way through. Second time a charm here for number three with the carry, and San Mateo taking a five to nothing lead here in full D action. We'll go back to this drive, multiple phases through the forwards, keeping it close to the base of the rock, and it is just enough of a gap here between this last defender and the goal post. Taking that angle, driving the body down, and going for five points with a conversion attempt to come.
So San Mateo, one of several high school girls programs coming out of the state of California and competing for the championships. We saw Sac Pal in action 12 to five. The conversion is good. It's a score seven to nothing. But these teams out of the Northern California Bay Area, we've also seen the success of programs Fullerton and Fallbrook from the state of California as well. A lot of players in development, looking forward to the college game, looking forward to PR7s and USA7s opportunities. We do have time off the clock, so we'll get a look again here at the try. So strong carry by the number five and finished by the number three. We're in round robin action, so these score lines all important. If we do end up with teams with tied records, there's a whole history of tie breaks we got to see earlier in the day or refer to earlier in the day. A reminder that teams get three points for a win, two points for a tie, one point for a loss if they're equal in standings. We look to the head-to-head -head performance, point differential, tries differential, and beyond. This is not the only game here at 1 o'clock over across the field in field two, pool A action. We have Morris in their second game of the day looking for their first win, taking on the Raleigh Red Hawks. We'll be back on field with more action in just a moment. Evaluations done, substitutions made, and we are back in action here on field one. So this will be Clayton kicking off to San Mateo. Clayton again in the pink, going from left to right across your screen, kicking off to San Mateo in the black and yellow. Six and a half minutes into the opening half of play, five to nothing to score. However, leaving the ball without support now gives Clayton the steal. Clayton with the turnover. Clayton looking for options. Looks left, looks right, and then goes straight forward. Clayton keeping their feet. San Mateo holding the ball up. For Clayton, you're looking for forward progress. With the small to go somewhere, the knee gets down, so the ruck is formed. Clayton distributing out to the left. San Mateo so flat, equaling them in defense. A solid tackle made. San Mateo with a turnover attempt, however. We hear the singling from our referee. He's going to penalty to Clayton about 30 meters from the San Mateo goal line. Score updated there, seven to nothing. That conversion was indeed good. Advantage being played to Clayton. We saw the scrum half looking at the distribution. Love the flare of the toes in the air so that we get the weight transfer to make the pass. However, no advantage gained. Knock on by San Mateo. This is going to give a scrum to Clayton, this time inside of the 22.
Solid advice coming from the sideline. Give credit to that fan. So Clayton with the put in towards this near sideline. This is going to give space and numbers and alignment out towards the far sideline. We see that they probably do have a wing home. We see the defensive wing staying towards the weak side. The tap up top to signal that the ball is in and ready. We see quite the drive and a bit of a turn. This is going to be a penalty to Clayton. San Mateo needs to be mindful of the U19 scrum laws. The try is scored on the quick tap penalty taken. Clayton going to equal San Mateo in tries. Seven to five though the score. We're waiting on the conversion kick. So we'll get another look here at the quick tap. Good heads up play. A little bit of a scoot to the left. She then cuts to the right and is able to get the ball down, throw her body down and get the ball down to score the try before her feet touch the flag. The field awareness, the situational awareness, able to go quick after the issues with the scrum penalty, giving possession again to Clayton. The lineup for the conversion attempt. It's the ball, it's the ball. A tricky strike near the touchline. It'll be about 20 meters back, about three meters from the touchline. So we'll have a left-footed kicker based on the way that she is setting up her approach. Struck well, but a little too much of a bend. It is hooked wide to the right. So seven to five, San Mateo leading. Get one more look at the quick heads of play for the try scoring opportunity here. The Clayton number nine going over the line. San Mateo on the kickoff, numbers to the left and to the right. We see two players up for Clayton in kick receipt. Another wave at the 22, another wave beyond them there. We have to look for triangles of support on the kick receipt so that you've got options when it comes to feeling the ball cleanly or for a quick offload. The ball is kicked deep into Clayton territory, taking it up from about five meters from the goal line. Solid shoot on the tackle. Clayton realigning with their numbers. The box kick from the base of the ruck. Quick execution. Again, has a play trying to catch San Mateo unaware. But San Mateo says, hey, we've got it and we've got support. They've broken the line. They're inside of the 22. The Wolverines on the go. And this time yielding another penalty must release the ball. The penalties are giving Clayton opportunities to prevent San Mateo from truly gaining momentum. So the kick to touch finds its mark on the fired sideline. A few meters of space gained downfield, but pressure is relieved. A five person line out teams choosing to drop a few of their forwards to have additional strike runners. Ball back in play, San Mateo with possession. San Mateo on the go, the front foot forward looking for support. Numbers are there, looking to split the defense, not quite able to get it just off the fingertips, able to recover the ball. Clayton scrambling in defense, looking to find a solution for the strong go forward. San Mateo again, nearly breaks through, taken down by the ankles. 
And the Clayton defense held strong as long as they could. Couldn't quite stop them there. San Mateo diving over the line again, extending their lead 12 to five. The conversion attempt to come. Solid go forward. They're looking to test and probe the defense for holes where they can. Clayton has stood them up so many times and it's finally this extra little bit of shimmy and shake here from San Mateo number four. She stops short, but then her teammates are there, instant support, and able to dive over the line, breaking the defense, blowing her way forward. San Mateo extending their lead. The conversion attempt is missed. Score remains 12 to 5. Five and a half minutes left to play here in the first half. Pool D action against San Mateo's second game of the day. They need a win if they're looking to stay alive with hopes of the semifinals. Clayton in action for the first time on the day. They will play again at 4 p.m. This is a 7-10 matchup when we're looking at the rankings of all 12 teams in the tournament. So far, evenly matched. We've seen the first two games of the day, one try affairs. The first game on field two, a one try affair. Majestic is the one team so far that's really been able to open up here in this 12-team girls club division. The kickoff is good. It is deep downfield. Clayton trying to apply the pressure and stop San Mateo before they get started. San Mateo gets to go forward. Gets a distribution. And it is San Mateo on the go, running their way to midfield. Wolverines using the strength of their forward pod. Clayton making the stops. Looking to prevent the offloads. This time they do. The tackle gets to ground. After a series of frantic action, both teams... Looking for alignment, looking for support. We have time off on the field with about three minutes, 51 seconds left to play. A forward pass. This should be a scrum to Clayton. So another minute on the field for additional player evaluations. And we'll be back as play resumes. you in the rugby? So I was like fouling out in all my basketball games, so I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? World's best. In the hands of everybody. What's your experience with RCT so far? Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing the sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby. Is
We are back in, back in action here on field one in Pool D. San Mateo maintaining a 12 to 5 lead over Clayton with about three minutes and change left to go here in the first half. I am Liz Entwistle and we're bringing Tim into the chat. Welcome to the broadcast, Tim. Great first half going along here. Let's see uh, how things end up. Thank you so much for joining. This should be a great, fantastic day here out in North Carolina. We got Clayton with the put in. We see the tap on top. The scrum deep in their own territory. And two teams have been fairly evenly matched when it comes to physicality, and it's just been the story of a couple of San Mateo forward tries. Clayton's still on the go, keeping their feet. Bringing Tim in for analysis on this game and let him take the lead on the play by play in the next one. Sounds good. Clayton doing good, keeping possession. Clayton with the distribution, floats just off the fingertips, ball to ground. It looks like San Mateo has recovered, so advantage being played. San Mateo. On the go from midfield, another strong forward carry. This time the poach is there, so San Mateo not quite quick enough to secure their own ruck. And Clayton's taking the ball back. Two and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. Again, Clayton's first game of the day, a local North Carolina team. You see the pick, or the place and go. The place and the pick. Clayton again securing their own ruck, a penalty against San Mateo. Yeah, good work from Santiago there. The scrum half did well to get back up to her feet and keep moving forward. And also Van Gran had the big poach that started this possession here for Clayton. Back to action on the field. It is San Mateo that has stolen away possession and plenty of turnovers with such tight forward play. Penalty to the Wolverines. Just side entry we saw the quick tap taken. Trickle, trickle out into touch. Clayton did a good job though. There, they got dinged for the penalty coming in from the side, but they've still got an opportunity here with the line out inside the 22. We have seen a variety of lineup setups all tournament long. Most teams opting either for a five or an eight person lineup with all of their forwards. There have been a couple occasions where there have been just four involved. The team's trying to make use of those extra strike line runners. Clayton is looking for the try line runners. That one just up over the arms there of withheld. This one not going straight, so we'll have an option back here to the Wolverines. Looks like they're going to choose a scrum down, and that's where they'll attack from here inside their own half. Good job getting that one up high, almost hit their jumper. They're just up over the outstretched arms give the Wolverines an opportunity now with just a couple minutes, a couple seconds left before our final whistle of the first half. We see the tap and then put in by San Mateo. San Mateo opting towards the weak side. We see the attempt at the strike line runner taking the angle. The timing not quite there. A scrum this time to Clayton. Still some time on the clock. We did have a couple of injuries on the field earlier in the half. So while we've got time being off, our referee is the sole arbiter of the entire playing enclosure. Good work off the back of that scrum that time. But Samantha Melvin, the number 10, just could not hang on to the pass. And now an opportunity for Clayton to jump right back into this one here in the last couple minutes, as you said. So the ball in the scrum, we get the wide angle view, San Mateo flat in defense, Clayton quite spread. We look again at the distribution and the weight transfers 
Scrum Half is looking for on these passes. Offside call. So we see the San Mateo defensive Scrum Half a little too aggressive trying to make the tackle. And now it is Clayton with the ball in hand. Clayton with a chance breaking just inside of the 22. Quick to support on the rush, trying to prevent a San Mateo poach. San Mateo is going to be penalized, not rolling away. Again, penalties on penalties. This is going to give another opportunity. Time up on the official clock, but cannot end the game or end the half on a penalty. So Clayton with another opportunity inside of the San Mateo 22. 12 to five the score. If they can get one in before the half, that will surely shift some momentum. It has been back and forth action, but we've seen a little bit of dominance in the physicality of the San Mateo team. Clayton coming up to take the mark. Yeah, our referee moves the Wolverines all the way back to defend their goal line. There's the quick tap. Clayton keeping the ball alive again. Distribution off the back of the ruck, this time going to a first receiver. Number 12 takes an angle on the strike line in. Number 10 again. Clayton desperately trying to keep this ball alive, looking for any break in the Wolverines' defense. We hear the direction from our referee. It is Clayton, this time going to a forward pod, the carry by the number four. The ball up high, an opportunity for San Mateo to strip. They are trying to get a hand on, trying to come away with the ball. A little over aggressive, not releasing the call, and it is going to be a penalty to Clayton, looking for the quick tap. Again, five meters from the goal line. Being mindful of the fact that this game now going into extra minutes, these teams are only allowed to play 90 minutes per day at the U19 level. The timing of this first half going into extra time will affect time available to play later games. Clayton with a quick tap, cutting back inside, number eight with the carry. Tackled into touch. And that will be the first half. So. 23 minutes of play, some extra minutes of action. 12 to 5 the score. San Mateo Wolverines leading Clayton here in full D action. Tim, your thoughts coming in? I know it was just uh, the last few minutes here of this first half. No, it was good stuff. Clayton almost had an opportunity here. We're knocking on the door time and time again, but the Wolverines were just too stout defending their own goal. As we take a couple looks here, our tries earlier in the match. Hard work done over the try line they go. Strong effort there, and then another quick tap. So smart there, the number nine, Santiago. Then Dynamite out there, reaches across, and dots it down for the try. So a good first half, and we'll come back with the second half. Here in a few from North Carolina. I use Gorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Solon's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports. I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. 
We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back for the second half of the action here on field number one. We are here for San Mateo against Clayton in Pool D action. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Tim Wicks. Tim, I'll let you say hello. Sorry, I cut you off there. All, all good. Ready for the second half of action here in Pool D of the National High School Girls National Championships. Just about ready to get underway here in the second half. Already today, we did see Wolverines take the loss earlier in the day. The loss to the Charlotte Cardinals 10 to five earlier this morning. First match of the day on field two, but they're ready to get things going here. The kick goes off by the Wolverines. Wolverines in the black jerseys with the yellow numbers. Making on Clayton in the black with pink trim, white numbers. Able to secure possession there off the kick. Out to the right-hand side, this time they go through the hands of Viamua. Able to secure possession there on the far side. Pick and go, continues the march down the pitch. Looks like Wolverines got their hands on it. Referee asked for the release. Did so nicely. Clayton still in possession. Defense comes up a little there for the Wolverines, but they're able to find some space. Now here to the near side of the pitch, around the corner they go. Well done there in the hands of Samantha Melvin. Melvin's able to get that offload. Gets it in the hands of Allison. Allison over the 10 meter line. Left alone a little bit there. Possible hands in coming there from the Wolverines. It's Clayton, the Copperheads. Still in possession, that pass flat. Continues the march forward. Screen for them to fringe out to the far side of the field. Clear things out nicely and then rip that one away. Wolverines back in possession now. Up to the far side of the pitch. Nice little offload and a run straight through the teeth of the defense. Still on their feet almost all the way to the midfield stripe. Coming out to the far side now. Mua out to the far side. They've got numbers out there. Nicely done, tiptoeing down the touch line, over the 22 meter line they go. San Mateo Wolverines, just outside the 22 meter line. They're down by, excuse me, up by seven. In the second half, a nice rumble through the teeth of the defense right up the center of the pitch. They'll come here to the near side. Little chip kick, tries to find some space with the grubber Van Zant. 
as this one go all the way out. And we'll come back with some frantic stuff there off the opening kick here in the second half, Liz. five-meter line now. The Wolverines lose this one, and it's back on the front foot for Clayton. Clayton over the 22-meter line. Beautiful little offload. Keep things moving. Nice little pop pass from the deck. The Copperheads continue their march forward. We do have a penalty here for the high tackle. Strong run there from Rowley. Takes him up just short of the midfield stripe, and we'll see what they do here off the penalty. Tap taken here from Novella Henry. Henry right through the defense. Not 10, says the referee. They did not retreat. So another penalty here inside the 10 meter line. So what a change in the flow of this game with San Mateo so close to the goal line and then change and the counter here by the Clayton team. Putting themselves in position just outside of the 22. Not as tactical, a little lackadaisical there in the pass. Falls to the deck, knock on, so we'll have a scrum down here for the first time in the second half. We talked earlier as we had the close, close game between United and Aspetech about game management, looking at the time on the clock and also looking at your options. There was one point where Aspetech kicked a penalty to take an eight point lead in the game, making it a two try game. And you have to think that that could be a key defining moment when the Warriors had a chance with that penalty, they could have opted for a scrum or to kick the post. Instead, the turnover giving Clayton an opportunity here. We'll see how that plays out as the game advances. Get into the scrum, here for the Wolverines. This one gets brought back, finally scooped up by Clayton, Clayton into contact over the 10 meter line. Nice little run there by Samantha Melvin. Looks like this one was picked up in the hands of a Wolverine player here in San Mateo. Back on the charge. They take this one outside the 22 meter line. He's good, says the referee. The Wolverines find some room there straight up the gut. We see ya with the strong run and a penalty is gonna be given here. Ooh, and a little bit of extra after the play as well. With a yellow card being shown, this is going to put San Mateo down a player 15 to 14. So again, when we think about decisions being made under pressure, these are areas of opportunity for the team to look at improvements on. I will go back again to the penalty call selection earlier in the half. It's now led this opportunity downfield, but the need for this extra tackle made after the penalty whistle was blown is now a yellow card that puts her team down a player. San Mateo needs to shore up, collect the nerves. Clayton wants to take advantage of this extra player. This Alatini will be the one in the bin. We have a knock on here by Clayton. So again, a couple of opportunities and fantastic attacking position for Clayton, but a couple of knock-ons have stifled those each time as we take another look. You don't have the whistle is blown. The penalty arm is up as we go back to this replay and you're doing that right in front of the referee. I know that it's high nerves and high tension in playoff rugby too. So we'll chalk it up as a learning experience and hope that it's something that the San Mateo team can just take on our advisement and grow from. Uncontested, here's your mark, here's your mark. Set up here for the scrum again, San Mateo, the Wolverines, already with one game, one match under their belts for the day. It was a 10-5 loss to the Charlotte Cardinals. This will be their final match of the day, so they need this win. And a little bit of point differential, so maybe another try or two. Keep things moving and punch their ticket to the semifinals tomorrow. Beautiful work over the 10-meter line. Go the Wolverines. Support arrives nicely to clean it out, but not in time, says Clayton. They got their hands on it, ripped it away with another turnover. San Mateo might have been off their feet, but we'll play on. Possible high tackle there. As you see, Lot 2 definitely just went up high. 
Kind of ducked underneath that one, did the number eight there for Clayton. The penalty will be the result. Yeah, regardless of intent and regardless of players ducking and moving, we can only judge based on the outcome. The outcome was the high tackle and the high contact made. We also do see another playing player down on the field. So we'll take a pause for evaluations and get back to the action as soon as play resumes. Rugby is a very accepting sport. I wasn't embarrassed about my body or anything. People really welcome you and actually like take your uh, strengths and weaknesses and work with you to like make you a better person and player. You hit each other and then you're friends. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like the camaraderie of it and like the game is just so physical and it's fun. Definitely try it. Like you. Maybe you don't think you're the strongest, but once you go out and like you hit someone, that adrenaline is so amazing. Welcome back to North Carolina. We are just about ready to get going again after the injury has been cleared. It's Clayton with the quick tap and straight into contact goes Jennifer Rowley just outside the 22 meter line here for the Copperheads. Clayton, North Carolina, just southeast of Raleigh. Made the short trip across the state here for action this weekend and they've done well. Around the corner, nice little pitch off to the side. Try to keep it off the white line. We're able to secure possession. Just outside the 22, almost stolen away, but they're able to retain possession. Good job by Rowley to hang on to it. Here comes the scrum half, Williford. Pulls this one out and tries to go to the weak side, but the defense for the Wolverines is ready to attack. Shoving them back a good six, seven meters. Strong work there from Melvin. Get inches there. Play on, that one went backwards. We'll continue the march forward, but another drop. Stifles the attack yet again for Clayton. Down by seven, they needed something there, but it's the Wolverines back on the charge. Over the midfield stripe and looking to attack again. Looks to find some space on the far side of the pitch. Nicely done through the hands with a final target. Can't hang on to it. Hits the deck, ends up with a knock on. Knocked on there by Via Ma'u. And it'll have a scrum down back to Clayton. What a key turnover that was. Able to strip the ball away and gain all that space downfield, relieving themselves of pressure in the defensive set. So while they will be on a defensive scrum, San Mateo is also eating time off the clock when it comes to the yellow carded player. So opportunities in such a tight game. This is pressure situations. If you're Clayton, you must score. If you are San Mateo and you're keeping your semifinal hopes alive, you are looking to come away with that win and also make up the point differential too. For sure, we've got about 11 minutes left to play. Here in the second half, it's the first match of the day for Clayton. They will play again at 4 p.m. Take on the Charlotte Cardinals. It does look like San Mateo is back to full strength. We see them bringing in eight, number eight in from the sideline, and they are going to be eight on eight in the scrums. Earlier in the game when we saw players dropped because of yellow cards, they did have to match numbers and were seven on seven. So it does look like we're back to 15 on 15 on the field. Secured nicely here by Clayton at the back of the scrum. Williford tries to pull this one out, but we've got offsides just a little too aggressive from the opposing scrum half. There's the quick tap taken in. Beautifully over the midfield stripe, all the way almost to the 22 meter line. They have had advantage for not going back 10, but it looks like that advantage is over. Play on, Williford scoops it out of the back of the ruck again. Strong tackle though by San Mateo and they're able to rip it away in the process. Nice little burst of speed, takes it over the midfield stripe. Here they go. Here goes Cajo. 
into contact, takes three to finally bring her to death. Able to retain possession, a little bit of a counter up there, possibly in from the side. We'll play on and it is the Wolverines with the ball. Flag goes up though, looks like a scrum half may have stepped on the line as she was pulling that one out. We'll have a line out back to Clayton inside their own 22. So we look back to this beauty of a line break here from San Mateo, the absolute speed, number 10, doing all she can to try to bring her down, holding on, holding on, holding on, able to slow her up enough that her teammates are able there to get there and support. The good scramble defense here by Clayton, preventing what was a almost certain San Mateo try. Work there from in Samantha Melvin, the number 10. Tracked her down, as you said. Allows Clayton to still down by seven. Definitely in this match. This one goes back through the back of the line out and scooped up. And San Mateo are on the charge. Over the five meter line they go. Lucia takes him inside the five. There's the dish. Over the line they go. And they are not in for the try. Knocked on in the process and will come back for a scrum down. Almost there, Liz. It was a good effort. We'll look again here, too, at this action here at the five meter mark. So the attempt at the charge. Again, Clayton's defense just getting those little inches of extra effort that are preventing these tries that San Mateo is so used to getting through. They're a powerful, hard running team. We've seen them do well when they get that front foot going. But again, just the barest little nudge creates the knock on. And now Clayton with a five meter scrum. To get into position, be able to see the knock on. Clayton tries to secure possession here off the back of the scrum. Good push from the Wolverines, slows it up a bit, and Williford can't handle it cleanly out the back. Still a scramble for it inside the goal line. Finally, we're going to have a knock on. That's some craziness there, five meters out. If we're thinking of teams, we're thinking of settling. There's still plenty of time to play. Seven and a half minutes to go in this game. Also ensuring that we don't see any of the scrum errors. No early put-ins, no wheels. You don't want to just give something away. So it's just a time to take collective conscious breath and make sure that you're still executing everything that you've done well all season long to get to this point. We'll look with the put-in. And starts to spin a little bit before it starts going. Referee spots it and an easy penalty call and that'll allow Clayton to relieve some pressure. Need to go 95 meters here, down by seven. And the Copperheads with the kick through. Ends the full back here in the back. Petty takes it just outside the 22 meter line and the Wolverines are looking to extend their lead. Beautiful little pass out to the outside but just a little too far in front of the target. It'll go into touch and a line out back for Clayton again. Again, we look for this performance under pressure, decisions being made. Let's see how many people are in this line out. Are they going to execute cleanly? There's no need to do things fancy. Clayton just needs to maintain possession and not give anything away. We do not want San Mateo to put that final nail in the coffin. If you're San Mateo, you're looking to disrupt and try to create that turnover and ease the pressure. That one try leads so tenuous. We'll tap back off the line out. I hope, but it's Clayton pushed back right in front of their try line yet again. Got a secure possession. Williford's back there with it, looking for her target and find an exit strategy. We'll just take a pick and go to the weak side, but they're shoved right back into the goal. We'll have to touch this one down, and we're going to have an attacking scrum here back for the Wolverines. So we're going to have time off the clock as another player is going to get evaluated for an injury. Such high pressure, high stakes games being played here in the five meter goal line area. Both teams, again, looking to either try to prevent the try 
keeping in mind little things in the rules of rugby where we've changed the laws of the game to have the goal line drop out as something that will happen depending on which team brings the ball in. Also being mindful that there's no offsides in the end goal when it comes to rugby as well. We will be back with the remainder of this half as soon as our players are evaluated and play resumes. set here for the final few minutes of this Pool D matchup here in the Girls National Championship Tournament. Kim Wilkes and Liz here with you. Just about a little over five minutes left to play here in the second half. San Mateo, the Wolverines, the black jerseys and yellow numerals. With ball in hand here, they'll have an attacking scrum five meters out. Clayton Copperheads out of Raleigh, North Carolina. They're just outside of Raleigh. Clayton, North Carolina trying to defend their own goal, but here comes the Wolverines on the charge. Around the side they go. Look like they had numbers on the outside, but they take it into the teeth of the defense. Nice little pop pass, offload in the tackle. They're around the corner, and they're in for the try. Well done by the Wolverines. San Mateo doing well to take advantage of some spacing. We see them finally be able to get the ball in hand with security inside that red zone of the 22. And that number 12 just diving over, lowering the shoulder, using her body momentum to ensure that she cannot be stopped. She cannot be held up. We look again here at the replay. So we see a little bit of a nudge of a shoulder. The pop there to the number 15. And I'll correct that statement on the 12 before. Number 13 going in for the try. Powerful getting down, ensuring that the ball makes contact with the ground, extending that San Mateo lead. With the try, conversion still pending. Just up and over, the flags go up, and it's now 19 to 5 your score. And so much of that try there, Liz thanks to the defensive pressure that they put on and pinned Clayton back in their own zone and they were able to come out with the try here. A 14 point match, a little under five minutes left to play in the second half. San Mateo Wolverines looking to secure their first victory of the tournament again. Lost earlier this morning in their first match, but looking really good here in number two. All in hand for the Wolverines. Nice drive. Six, seven, eight meters over the midfield stripe they go. Some space here on the near side. Nice group of forwards. Into the hands of Latu. She rumbles right through the defense, loses it forward. And we will see that one. And offsides picked up after the fact, so not just a knock on, we'll have a full arm penalty here for Clayton. And off the penalty, they'll chip this one up over the top. Caught the defense, napping with no fullback, and has this one trickle all the way out into touch, about 10 meters out, and a huge attacking opportunity now for Clayton. Such a well-placed kick downfield, dribbling inside of the 22. If you're Clayton, you're looking to score some tries and score them quickly. Again, being mindful of these point differentials, try differentials. If anything comes down for a tie break, this has been the very close 
cool when it comes to the score differentials before. Again, that 10 to 5 score line in San Mateo's first game being of the utmost importance. Clayton playing again at 4 p.m., if I recall correctly. <laughs> So if they can get another try, even if they cannot get the W, they do get those points on the board. Plus, they're looking to execute. We've seen flashes of brilliance from both teams. Both teams' defense have been able to stifle and just disrupt some of this offensive flow. So looking for all these wins. Off the line out, they're able to secure possession nicely. Beautiful little pass in. Now right through the center of the pitch they go through Hoke. And meters out here, but another strong counter ruck blows this one up. Penalty though given here from by the referee. There's the quick tap, right into contact they go. There's possibly another dump tackle with Van Grand went hard in. Liz, we see another card, the second of the half for San Mateo. So we'll go to the replay again here. We look at the fact that we've got boots up in the air, shoulder that looks like it may make contact to the ground first. It was a no brainer for our referee, Elvia Sonier. And so this again is putting San Mateo down and we want to look and also track yellow cards. We'll see if we can get tournament updates too from our tournament director, Katie Wurst, when it comes to player eligibility and suspensions. There was guidance on red cards, but more importantly, Clayton just got the try. That's right, they got close enough. It was that final tackle off the penalty that stopped them from scoring. So a penalty try was awarded by our referee, a full seven points to the Clayton Copperheads. And they are right back in this one. As we were talking about earlier, just a five point loss for the Wolverines earlier. So getting closer, as close as they can, is a huge boost of momentum for Clayton. They still have one more match at four, as you mentioned. But this is a good start for them and they're not done yet. Still a couple minutes left to play. Our final whistle will come from our referee. Can't be too far now. This one did get knocked forward. So a scrum down back to the Wolverines with that seven point lead. And that will do it. Final seconds tick off the clock. And it is the San Mateo Wolverines with the 19 to 12 victory over the Clayton Copperheads here in this Pool D matchup. And Liz, what a fantastic match at the end of the day here for the Wolverines. So out of the five games that we have seen so far that have final scores, four of them have been one try differentials and one try affairs. Love seeing how equally matched these teams have been, the physicality on the field. There are plenty of lessons to take away, but there's also plenty of wins to celebrate. We look at the wins of these tries being scored, so many of them coming from team efforts. It's rare that we've seen an all out breakaway. Instead, multiple phases of play, heads up play, like that number nine there from Clayton. And again, it's coming off of a lot of effort. So the grittiness and the resiliency of all teams that have been in action this weekend showing off, but this game in particular was back and forth. We didn't really see the widespread flow. We didn't really see like the most beautiful passing games, but we saw physicality that really let these teams elevate their play. In the end, it is the Wolverines with the 19 to 12 victory. We'll step aside and come right back for Aspatuck Valley taking on the Charlotte Tigris here next on the Rugby Network. What got you into rugby? Well, I was like fouling out in all my basketball games, so I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? In the hands of everybody. Tell me about your experience with RCT so far. Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing a sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football, and there's nothing like rugby. You know? Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby just comes to one practice has ended up liking it and I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact like same rules guys and girls and I didn't believe her and then she was like oh come out to our practices and I did and I was like oh yeah I want to play and then I started playing it was really fun I don't know it's just a game 
that I love one more. It's pretty fun though, I don't know, I just love everything about it. It's the laid back atmosphere of it. We all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and builds, builds like a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. <laughs> Like how we can like be fun of each other in the game, but then we like come together after and we're just like shake hands. And... Well, well, what do you think that is? Why is that? I, I personally think it's like, it's just, we're all one community, like it's one family. We all play rugby, it's just one family. It's a sport. Yeah, because yeah, if you have to have respect for the person who's going after you, because you work hard and they have to work just as hard as you do. So you say that respect is probably the greatest value you can gain out of this game? By far. Yeah. By far. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to North Carolina, here at the home of Warren Wilson College. We are just about set for another matchup here. It's Aspatuck Valley taking on the Charlotte Tigris. And Wilkes and Liz coming to you live here from North Carolina. This one's taken off the top by Tigris. And the black jerseys, the orangish red trim. Secure possession, pulling it out the back to the far side. Good defense coming up and meeting them. Defense so far by Aspatuck, another tough hit. Keeps them pinned in inside their own 22. Here are the Tigris. End up with a knock on and that will cause our first scrum of the match here, 30 seconds in to this pool match. We did get to see this Aspatuck team in action earlier in the day. They were 19 to 15 against United out of Utah, falling on the final play of the game. So now we've got some players to watch. Keep an eye out on their number 22, their number 13, their number two, and then if she's in at scrum half again in the number 24 jersey, some heads up players. There we go, a shot of that number 24. Tim, back to you. Put into the scrum. Scooped up and around the corner they go and in for the first try of the match, just like that Aspatuck Valley. Score five up on the board. It's an impressive start to the game and that has been the tale of so many matches so far. So many tries been scored in the first two minutes. Teams that strike first aren't guaranteed the win. So we'll see how Aspatuck Valley continues the flow of their game, but we checked this action off of the back of the scrum with the U19 loss. So many number eights have been in action since you don't get the drive, you don't get the wheel. This is the first time though that I think we've seen an eight man pick for the try directly. We've seen a lot of breaks downfield. So nice to see that action. Weiner there, the junior that was able to come around the corner and find that space on the far side of the pitch. With the first five points up on the board. On the far side, just off the mark. No good. So 5 0 our score here with two minutes gone by in this Pool C matchup. Take a second look. Textbook action off the back of the scrub. And a half minutes gone by. Charlotte with the restart here. Nice high ball. 
Not taken cleanly though, inside their own 22 and a big hit just outside the line and a penalty awarded, not releasing the call. So good job by the Tigers getting their hands on it quick. There's the quick tap just outside the 22 meter line they go. Big tackle, stops them there. Opportunity now to set up the charge into the hands of the number eight. Again, strong defense. Drives them, keeps them back behind the gain line. He's on the counter ruck, keeping them moving the wrong direction. Another big double tackle. Slows down the attack. They're able to bounce off and come around the side, but not before possible obstruction. Yes, occurred there going around the team and a penalty back to Askata. So back to the action on the field and just how tricky Aspetuck Valley's defense can be. In their game against United, we saw them often in a swarm of yellow around the ball and then able to reset and realign there. It causes the obstruction, it gives them a penalty. It's Aspetuck with the ball at midfield. Strong work, already with five points up on the board, looking for more. Another pick and go. Sends them just short of the 10 meter line. Still in possession, finally ripped away. And it's Charlotte back on the charge. Big collision there at the 10 meter line. Looked like the defender got possibly the worst of it. And we're gonna take a quick sec, but a big collision there, Liz. Take a moment for the player evaluation on the field. Our athletic training staff getting plenty of action here at Warren Wilson College this weekend. Second game of the day for Aspetuck. First game of the day for Charlotte. It didn't appear to have been anything truly malicious, but just the effects of playing a high contact sport. experience with RCT so far? Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing the sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. You know? Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby just comes to one practice has ended up liking it. And I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact, like same rules, guys and girls, and I didn't believe her. And then she was like, oh, come out to our practices. And I did, and I was like, oh yeah, I wanna play. And then I started playing, it was really fun. It's just, I don't know, it's just a game that I love. It's pretty fun though, I don't know, I just love everything about it. 
just the laid back atmosphere of it. We all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and builds, builds like a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. <laughs> Like how we even like beat out of each other in the game, but then we like come together after and we're just like shake hands. And, well, what do you think that is? Why is that? I, I personally think it's like, it's just, we're all one community, like it's one family. You all play rugby, it's just one family. It's a sport. Yeah. It's a yeah, because you have to have respect for the person going after you because you work hard and they have to work just as hard after you. So you say that respect is probably the greatest value you can gain out of this game? By far. Yeah. By far. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to Asheville, North Carolina. Tim Wilkes and Liz Entwistle taking you all through the action today. 5-0 our score, just about five minutes gone by here in the first half. Big collision a couple moments ago, and Aspatuck did lose a player. Number one looked like went to deck, head-to-head -head collision. She has been taken off the pitch, and we are just about ready to continue on action. Liz, as we were talking, collisions abound. we got to make sure to keep these tackles low, keep the girls protected here today, already about five or so, as you'd mentioned. Yes, we have seen quite a bit of injury evaluations. Of course, being mindful of um, all these trainers and coaches knowing that this is a three-game tournament over two days for these athletes. So taking any risk of a potential injury seriously, making sure that player welfare and the rest of their seasons go well. Also, as these players go into graduations and summer programs, put in here for the Tigris. They're able to pull this one out, but an Aaron pass sends them going the wrong direction. Inside the 22, here for Charlotte. A little step through the defense, nicely done. Strong tackle there from Amiglio on the defensive end, though. Keeps him pinned in. Find the pod here off to the right. Through the hands they go, but another strong hit. Jaden Smith with the pop. It's Asheville, de or excuse me, Askatoon defense has been fantastic here in the first six minutes or so. Keeping Charlotte pinned in. They work their way there with the first try. Now they'll find some space there. The Tigris on the far side of the pitch. Tigris in the red and black jerseys. Go again to the weak side. With the pick and go. Again, that blitz defense comes up and meets the Tigris behind the gain line yet again. Possibly in from the side there, but we'll play on. This lineup again, they've had a good seven or eight phases here. They've only been able to make a couple of meters and then lose it off the mark. Back to April Torres. Aspatuck back with it just outside the 22 meter line, already up by five. Here in this Pool C matchup, around the corner they go, sit down. 
and all the way in for the try goes Aspatuck. What an excellent try. Around the corner they go and they double up their lead 10-0. The multiple phases of play eventually coming away with the try. We see good, patient, continuity style rugby, and that's been on showcase all day long here at the Girls National Club High School Championships. We see the pick and the go. We see the power to keep her feet and keep the ball and then be able to slip around the side, breaking through the contact, the spin move deployed, Aspatek showing why they were in the lead for so much of their first game. Again, heartbreak on the final play. They've got power, they've got the space, and they've got the support. So going through multiple phases to get about 20 meters downfield and extending another five points to their lead. Excellent work there from the number seven, April Torres. The junior had the carry to start things off and get that march going, and then did good to get back to her feet there in support was able to have the huge fend to sit down, sit down the would-be tackler, and get them in with a 10-point lead. Kick from the far side. Close, but just off the mark, no good. So eight minutes gone by here in the first half, and it is a big 10-point lead so far for Aspatuck. To get one more look again there, winning the collision, winning the contact area low enough there on lowering the shoulder and with the fend, creating that bit of space, getting the bump off and getting that line to the in goal. That's Patuck Valley Girls Rugby Club, coached by John O'Neill and Carolyn Roach. Up by 10 here, as you mentioned, already with one match under their belts, had the 19 to 15 loss earlier in the day, but they have come out hot here in their second match. This will not rolling away there. Able to do so just in time to the Tigris. And now Aspatuck with ball in hand, straight over the top of the defense they go. Jaden Smith takes it over the midfield stripe. Now they'll look to find some space here on the near side. A little bit of room, nice little offload, gets it into the hands of Doherty. She takes it all the way out into touch. Beautiful tackle from the opposing scrum half to drive her out. We'll have a line out back for Charlotte. We see the potential for the break and it was good positioning here. The tackle from behind there from the Charlotte scrum half doing well to corral the breakaway. We've seen excellent rugby being played all weekend long by that number 13. She's been a powerful kicker. She's had some difficult conversions to make, but probably has the best form and technique on the field. But Charlotte stopping her from taking the corner. Good positioning, good angles on defense. Off the line out, again, held up there for a while. Couldn't hit the target. And it's taken away in Aspatuck Valley. Ball in hand again. They've got numbers there on the far side. Good use of hands to get it all the way out there. Into the final hands there on the wing. Around the side they go over the 22 meter line. Good work tiptoeing away from that touch line. Now here comes the next pod. Right into contact they go. Beautiful run. 10 meters out now for Aspatuck Valley. Looking for their third of the match. Already here just about 11 minutes gone by. This time they get a little bit loose there. Support doesn't arrive in time. Taken away, not releasing the call back here to the Charlotte Tigris. Off of the quick tap, looks like they may have lost this one. Backwards it went, said the referee, but it's ripped away by Aspatuck, and they continue to charge. Now six meters out. Not sure if the opponent released there, but the second time in the last minute, another not release and another quick tap. Aspatuck on the defensive end have been outstanding here in the first half. Keeping Tigris penned in. They look for any relief they can with a chip kick over the top. Gets charged down. We're actually going to bring this one back. We will have a penalty back for the Tigris. When you look back at the first game for Aspatuck, their penalty count was quite low. They did have quite a few lineouts, but United disrupted or stole every single one. So the tactic, when Aspatuck does commit the rare penalty, to try for the lineout and to secure that lineout isn't a bad one for Charlotte. They just need to make sure that that ball gets to touch first. That was a difficult kick, a far kick from the middle of the field. Back to play on the field. 
huge hit from the number 10 there for Charlotte. Jars that one loose. They're able to retain possession. We'll take a second look here, Liz. Yeah, it was just solid contact, made low, able to pop the ball up and create some opportunities. Right now, the opportunity in the form of a scrum. And Charlotte had been pinned inside their own half just about the entire 12 minutes so far. Looking for an opportunity now. You're in their first match of the day. Still take on United later this evening on field two at 4 p.m. Charlotte ball in hand here, looking to make something happen. Again, hit behind the gain line. Nice charging defense coming up and meeting them. Back behind the 22, now they go. But a strong counter up keeps possession back here for Aspatuck. They ended up knocking it on though. But it will be a scrum down here for Charlotte inside their own 22. Seen excellent heads up play in terms of teams looking for those poaching opportunities, looking for turnover opportunities, especially at the breakdown. The management a lot of these teams have had to defensively realizing when they do not have that opportunity to then zero out, concede the ruck, and form the next wave of defense has been quite high. I think we've seen fantastic launches from a lot of teams. Timing from time to time has been off. That's created some offsides penalties. It's been really interesting watching the battle at the breakdown all weekend long the scrum here for Charlotte. A little bit of a push. They are able to retain possession. Just gonna chip this one up over the top. Again, been pinned inside their own 22 for quite a while now. Here's another take by Glazer. She gets slammed to the deck. Aspatuck in possession. Looking for some space. Open the lock. Around the defense and keeps possession. Now there's an opening here at the center of the pitch. They find a little bit of space, keep things moving through the hands at the 22 meter line. It's Tuck Valley. Looks to set something up now to the far side. With the hands of Camiglio. We'll take it right back to the 22 meter line again. Just about five minutes or so left to play here in the first half. And there's a burst through by Aspatuck Valley over the five meter line. And they are in for the third try of the match. Aspatuck Valley cash in again. There's good patience by Aspatuck creating an opportunity and creating that seam towards the outside. A good carry by number 12 on the pitch, adding five points to the lead, sitting 15 to nothing with a conversion to come. And just about five minutes left to go here in the first half. But persistence with these uh, breakdowns with their forward play eventually creating space and just able to slip by the defender evades one tackle evades another and she's able to stay cognizant of the trailing defender from behind gets that extra little burst and gets over the try line Aspatuck doing it with the backs this time that was through the hands of O'Neill number 10 got it out to the try score Jaden Smith the junior she streak around the side of the defense and gets in for another try. One thing we've, we've started to see here, Liz, is the two teams that have already played matches. We saw in the last match with San Mateo, they already had one under their belt. They came out, played much better in that second match. And I think we're seeing a bit of the same here with Aspatuck. I think these teams that get the first game jitters under their belts are doing quite well. And we think of the thing like a flow state being where the challenge meets your preparation. So they're prepared from game one. They've been able to make adjustments, take some real feedback, especially with teams that are sitting here from North Carolina, from Connecticut, from Utah, from all over the country. They're facing unknown opponents. And this is something that's going to prepare them better, advancing into collegiate rugby, advancing into the U19 player pathway, being able to deal with the unknowns, make the adjustments in their style of play. It's been a good challenge with all these coaches out here as well. And we'll see one more time here again, just a fantastic effort from the number 12 from Aspatuck. Little Fen and then the speed to take it all the way home for the try. Charlotte again looking for their first points of the weekend here in their first match. This kick about to the 22 meter line, but it's taken cleanly. Right into contact. Aspatuck Valley again go. There's the try score. Jaden Smith tries to offload this one, but a strong counter ruck holds it up for a minute. 
move forward here for Aspatuck Valley. Through the teeth of the defense, they go over the 10 meter line. Nice little swim move over the midfield. One to beat at the 22 meter line. Beautiful little cut to keep things moving. Now she needs support. It arrives just in time. Aspatuck Valley had their hands on it, lost it forward, ended up being taken away there in the ruck. Scooped up now by the Tiger. Look for some space inside their own 22 meter line. Constantly harassed for that ball though. Aspatuck Valley's defense has been tremendous here in the first half. But the only exit strategy, little chip kicks. It's about the best we've seen here from Charlotte. Eight meters from their own try line. Scoop this one out the back, scramble for it. Just have to kick this one up over the top. A little bit of space there. It trickles into touch with about two minutes left to play. It'll be an attacking line out here for Aspatuck. Tim, you're exactly right. When you mentioned the little chip kicks out of Charlotte, that seems to be their fly half's go-to. Little nudges downfield trying to get space, but not creating too much of a hang with the ball, not allowing Aspatuck to get under it. So looking to relieve pressure, but also create a little pressure on that kick receipt. Pay attention here to this Aspatuck line out. Again, this is something that played them in the first game, but it's certainly easy to make adjustments. And look at the depth of your player rosters. These are teams that came in with 25 players per roster this weekend. This one misses its targets there up high. Ends up getting knocked on there. We'll actually have a free kick here. So about eight meters out, we'll have a quick tap for Aspatuck. We'll look for some space now on the far side through the hands of the fly half, but this one does go forwards. And so it'll be a little bit of a break here for Charlotte yet again, still about 10 meters out with their scrum. I think free kicks are an underutilized and undertaught tool here when it comes to rugby in the United States. You see a lot of teams not quite know how to react or what their options are. So we saw the tap and then the forward pass taking away an opportunity. That free kick was a gift. Just unfortunately, they were unable to unwrap it. Put in again here for the Tigers. We'll take this one cleanly. Good work there in the scrum, but constant pressure since that fly half scrambling, looking for some space here on the near side of the pitch. Nice defensive effort there from Jaden Smith, the try score, getting it done on the defensive end as well. Into contact goes Charlotte, but another big boom there from April Torres. Sends them back right on the edge of their try line, but that will do it. That one was knocked on, and that'll send us here into the second half. A three score performance here for Aspatuck. We're over 20 minutes. Here, our final explanation there from the referee. We'll step aside and we'll have the second half coming up here next from North Carolina. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports. So I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there.
We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our day. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to Asheville, North Carolina, home of the Woodrow Wilson College. And this weekend, it's our home for the 2023 Girls Club National Championship Tournament. We had a good one on our hand here. First half done is a 15 to nil lead for Aspatuck on top of the Charlotte Tigress here. Tim Wilkes alongside my partner here this afternoon. It's been a good first match. Liz Whistle with me as well. High kick taken back deep here for Aspatuck. The furthest they've been inside their own half of the pitch. They look to get, use it ball in hand. Nice little chip kick up over the top there from the center of the pitch. A little bit of backspin on it. Blows it all the way back inside their own 22. Looks like Aspatuck Valley are able to secure possession. Again, 15 point lead. Three tries there in the first half. Done well. Revenge that earlier loss on the day, a 19 to 15 defeat against United. They have looked excellent here in their second match. Still working from their own end. Trying to make something happen, ball in hand here inside the 22. This one's chipped up and charged down right into the hands of the Tigress. And now they look to charge here on the near side of the pitch. They've got a little bit of space, but a big pop. Slows that one down. Good hit from Jaden Smith. Test for it there inside the ruck. It's finally picked up by Aspatuck Valley. And they've got it back inside their own 22. Looks to find some breathing room. Nice little offload in the tackle. Keeps things moving. He's there. Everybody needs to release at this point. Continue things on there now to the far side of the pitch. Nice little show and go there from Gia Cloter. Takes him up over the 22 meter line. Some good defensive pressure here from the Tigress to start things off in the second half, but a little too aggressive. It looked like they got up uh, high around the neck and it'll be a penalty for the dangerous no, no card. It's been interesting watching these teams that already have a game under their belt as compared to the teams in the first 
game of the day. This is a Charlotte team that's had some excellent moments, especially the play out of that number 10. Aspetek able to make adjustments and get into a little bit more of that flow state. You see the solid play and the solid carries. This combo of like 22 and the number 13 is one to watch as the second half progresses. Phase after phase, Aspetek Valley continues to march their way down the pitch. They were just meters out from their own try line, and now they're on the opposite side, Manage still working on. hard. And just being played with a high tackle. Continue to work through the defense. They go over the gain line again. Charlotte just looking for a response here. There's a sit down over the 22 meter line. They go April Torres on the loose there on the far side of the pitch, and they're able to keep things moving. This one dropped backwards though. They're taking a good 10 meters behind the gain line this time. Looks like Charlotte was possibly off their feet, but they're able to steal this one away out of the ruck. There's a nice little line break. One of the first we've seen here from the Tigris. Strong defense from Aspatuck Valley in the first half. They do like to commit a lot of players into the ruck. Just too quick coming up on the defensive end for Charlotte to get around them. And now we've got a penalty here. Just a knock on there, no advantage gain. So it'll be a scrum down here for Aspatuck Valley. We do have a player down from a few phases before this. She did stay down for a solid like 90 seconds or so. So it'll be a minute on the field, that's the double whistle. We saw the back and forth action. And again, like as this game goes on, as these days go on, it does get rather difficult to maintain kind of composure. We see some of these tackles slipping higher and higher and higher. If I'm both teams and I'm coaches, I'm making sure my athletes know to keep their form, to watch their footwork, to watch their proximity to the tackle. If I'm referees, I'm thinking about having conversations before the games about the tackle height, because we've seen persistent infringements. You tackle even as a standing tackle, that's dangerous. Is that clear? Second time, okay? Well done by our referee, giving the warning there, just as you said, keeping everyone safe, making sure that everyone's on the same page here. I'm back when you're good. Okay. Get set for the next scrum down. As you saw Aspatuck Valley earlier with their loss, what have they changed since their first match that have helped them become so dominant here in match number two? I think in the first game, there was definitely a size mismatch between the teams on the field. So Aspatuck was able to create a lot going around the United team, United, a strong, powerful squad. I think that this is more evenly matched in terms of just looking at the players and their sizes and their strengths. So that's something that does play into their hands a bit more and has allowed them more position. It's allowed them a little bit more control in this game. They've certainly had more possession and more sustained possession at that. Love that defensive pressure, though, from that Charlotte scrum half. Back to you. Well, well done, and they continue to drive them back. But unfortunately, in the end, we will have a penalty and a possibly a player down yet again. Aspatuck Valley got pushed back there. As we do have time off yet again for the injury. Five minutes gone by here in the second half, and we'll step aside with that injury and come back here in a few.
god, that looked way too good. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. Welcome back to Asheville, North Carolina, and right off the bat, off of the injury timeout, we come back with the tri Aspatuck Valley Girls Rugby Club. Again, get their fourth of the match in their first here in the second half. We did see before the injury, the referee blow her whistle, signaling the penalty. There was like playing the player and not the ball itself. So that leads to a penalty to Aspatuck, potentially giving them that break down the field. We'll go back to the restart here. So the tap and go by their scrum half wearing the number 24 jersey, ball in space. And look at that, the tiniest of gaps at number eight is able to break through and go about 35 meters for the try. Aspetuck able to extend their lead. Again, all important with all these close games. We did just get an update as well from field two where Morris won 24 to seven over the Raleigh Red Hawks. The Red Hawks will be in action again in the game following this one. So a tight turnaround for that team. Be a tough opponent for them as well. Taking on the team that won earlier in the day in the Sac Powell Amazons. You see the offload there and then just the sheer speed there from Jenny Weiner over the 22 and enough to burn all the way through in for the first try of the second half. Aspetuck has been very lethal with these offloads and have really shown a little bit more of an expanded attack here in game two. Things really starting to click for them and the Tigris still looking to get that momentum going here off the kick. They pen Aspetuck back deep and then drive them out into touch and they'll have an attacking line out inside the 22. So truly an opportunity for a spark trying to make something happen. They've got to secure this line out first and then play off of the attacking platform. The line outs in general, one of my favorite times to be able to attack because you have such space between your opposing first receivers. 10 meters back from the line for both sides gives you a minimum of 20 meters of room to run if you can cleanly execute your line out. It's a time where you can catch a defense out of alignment and out of sorts, but step one is a good throw and a good line out. You can't go early. You need to be when they throw, okay? Go ahead. You hear the warning there from the referee, making sure that Charlotte does not lift before that ball comes in. It does this time and then gets knocked down, knocked on there by Aspatuck Valley. And so now we'll come back to a scrum here for Charlotte. So another opportunity for the Tigris to punch one in and get their first try. spoke earlier to the high amount of eight man picks that we have seen in the games this weekend, especially at the U19 level. Once that drive is on for about a meter, the ball must come out because they cannot have the full scrumming experience that you see at the senior level. Plenty of space here as we look at the lineup of Charlotte split. 
different shapes on the left and the right options to either side has to keep Aspetuck's defense honest and Aspetuck is shaded entirely to the far side of the field we finally see a wing coming over pulling over a mate but that could have been an opportunity earlier in a setup error by Aspetuck initially with their defensive set he called it they definitely got their eyes on the backfield to see which way they come off of the back of this scrum we have seen some big drives from Aspatuck Valley. This one will come out to the back. They're able to take it and they'll go off to the right hand side where they've got the numbers. Defense comes up and meets them right at the 22 meter line with a strong tackle. Counter Ruck almost got there as well, but it's the Tigris with ball in hand on the far side of the pitch. Strong tackle though. Jaden Smith already with a couple tries. Slams one to deck there on the defensive end. Tigress still in possession. Big counter ruck blows this one up. Looks like it may have trickled into touch, but we're still in play. Charlotte still looking for their first try of the match with the offload. This one all discombobulated finally falls forward and will be a scrum down for Aspetuck Valley. So again, that swarming Aspetuck defense getting the job done a little bit non-traditional in their first phase of defensive play, but it has worked for this team in all their matches today. So with that kind of swarming defense, they're able to stymie Charlotte on the attack. They can't get the offload. They're not really able to get a good, clean, fast ruck to ground. So the distribution abilities from their scrum have to go wide to a first receiver out towards the backs to make use of space has not been there. And they've been forced to play it tight on that far sideline. Put into the scrum here for Aspetuck Valley, already up by 22 points, about midway through the second half. Cleanly off the back, look to charge here from the center of the pitch. Round through the defense they go. Final defender gets beat as well. Over the midfield stripe. One chasing still at the 22 meter line. Can Aspetuck Valley get it in for their fifth? They have enough to get it done. Big try for Aspetuck Valley as they extend their lead now 27 to nil. So what a break and what a change in position on the field from deep inside of their own territory. We look at the distribution. So speaking of being able to get the ball wide, they're able to take advantage of these gaps in the defense, stringing them out, able to evade the one tackle, a little bit of the stiff arm from behind, steps back inside, have the ball in the proper hand to be able to fend. And now she's got the pace to out distance the number 10 from Charlotte. Aspetuck getting another try when it really counts. Fly half from Charlotte has been all over the pitch as well, so she knows, you know, there was a big battle there between the two speed demons, but it's Aspetuck Valley that are able to continue their dominance here in their second match. And really, Liz, with this point differential, can possibly punch their way in. Again, that loss earlier this morning will hurt them. We'll see if Charlotte has enough left in the tank later today come away with the victory over United. Maybe give Aspetuck Valley an opportunity to get back into it. But right now they're up 27 and ill with about eight minutes left to play here in the second half. So regardless of the ultimate outcome of how the pool standings go, important lessons being learned and how to bounce back from a loss coming into game two. So the sports psychology aspects of this all, playing in multi-day tournaments or looking onward to sevens, summer sevens so robust in the Carolinas, so robust in the Northeast. We see deep competitions when it comes to these U19 levels, and this is just preparing these young women for success. Off the restart, it's taken nice and clean. There by Aspeduct Valley inside their own 22, but they're able to move it out. It was knocked on though, so we'll have a scrum down. It looks like Charlotte were able to get their hands on it out of the ruck, but knocked it on in the process, and we'll have a scrum down back for Aspeduct Valley. So we look again here, setting up for the scrum. Aspetuck split with their offense. We see three backs out to the left side of the field, the far side of the field, another three towards the near side. Similarly split are the Charlotte backs. 
So opportunities and space to run, looking for another mismatch. That try earlier originated just by converting some two-on-ones and splitting the defense. Aspetuck will be looking to repeat. Able to get this one out, try the far side of the pitch, but then immediately step on the brakes and come here to the near side. Nicely done over the gain line they go yet again. Good continuity here from Aspetuck Valley and each and every time, just about, as they're able to use their strength to push over that gain line. Catching it at full speed just about every time, not going flat-footed, using that momentum to charge over. This time they do get caught flat-footed a bit, but a nice burst through, moves things forward through the hands of Jaden Smith. This time she does not release cleanly enough, and it's a penalty back to Charlotte. Fly half gets things moving again. Through the hands all the way to the outside, over the 50 meter line they go. Good work, able to march their way down, but this one's picked out of there. Nice little jackal, but it gets knocked on in the process. And so we'll have a scrum down, as we do have another injury here on the pitch. It looks like that may have been Charlotte's scrum half that went down. She has been a spark of a player, really trying to create as much as she can, a presence on the field, both offensively and defensively. We'll keep an eye on the situation and get back to the action as soon as play resumes. And we'll step aside and come right back here for the end of the second half. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Back to North Carolina, Tim Wilkes and Liz Entwistle here with you in this Pool C matchup. Fantastic weekend. Special thanks to all of our supporters, Warren Wilson College, for having us out here this weekend. Also, special thanks to Next Level Rugby and everybody helping us bring this fantastic event here to you. Right now, it's Aspetuck Valley with a 27-0 lead, and they continue to march forward right through the teeth of the defense. Up the gut they go. Another chase, this time brought just inches away from the try line. Try line. They're able to come back and dot it down with the quick pick and go. And Aspetuck Valley got another five up on the board. There's a good pursuit by Charlotte's fly half. Again, all over the field, such a presence, speed to burn. But something that's impressive too is now Aspetuck is going to their depth. So we spoke about their 25 person roster that able to make the substitutions. This is number 16, making the break upfield, evades the tackles. She's got the pace, that number 10, just a phenomenal chase. She's able to get fingers on. She could have had another movement to put that ball forward over the try line. That's when you are allowed that one double move. So Charlotte able to delay what is the inevitable. The support of Aspetuck is there. They add to the lead and they are taking a commanding presence on the scoreboard. Yeah, they've been tremendous at Aspetuck in those rucks on the offensive and defensive end. And as you mentioned, in support, they were right there in order for the pick and drive to go over for another five points here for Aspetuck Valley. Kick up and through there by Kara. Darty gets it in and another two up on the board with about four minutes left to play here in the second half. Charlotte Tigris in their first match of the day just looking to find some sort of momentum here as they go into match two later at 4 p.m. So we look again at that takedown from behind just the fingertips on the jersey. We think about making those tackles from behind too. If you can make that first contact, if you can get another hand around and like hug that player to you to try to stop that forward momentum and now allow the double movement would be the next evolution of a fantastic defensive tracking tackle like that. A 
even able to get back up to her feet as well. Just could not stop the power from Aspatuck. Instructions here. Get that confusion there set aside with the substitutions. Right, with 25 people on the roster, they still do need to nominate or utilize only a maximum of eight subs per game. So just because the game is a bigger score line or because it's game two, they can't use more than their allotted number of subs. What's really interesting too, speaking to depth of the team and depth of the program, is that this is a roster that also mentions having some seventh and eighth graders on their team. So these may be players that are traveling for the experience or traveling for a chance to play up. Do not see any freshmen on their roster. So it's entirely sophomore, junior, seniors, just a couple of senior players on the team, but then three players from that junior high level. Let's get that experience come to fruition here in match two. Again, they dropped their first match 15 to 19 to United. They've come out on fire here in their second Pool C matchup. Just about ready to get underway. Substitutions have been resolved. Quite a drop kick there. I think we're going to bring this one back. Make sure that ball hits the deck before we take the kick. And so the option to that for infraction. Or scrum. Called it scrum taken here, and it'll be a put in for Aspatuck Valley. And stay with us right after this match. We will have the Raleigh Red Hawks taking on the Sac Pal Amazons. Amazons getting their victory earlier today. Raleigh with the loss, so they'll look to avenge that one here in this next matchup as soon as this one's over. But right now, Aspatuck Valley, ball in hand, the score line as well. Over the midfield stripe they go. Another strong take, good tackle on the defensive end by the fly half for Charlotte. I mentioned she's been all over the pitch on some of those big chase downs, but this time, Tigers player just does not get low enough. Tackles up too high and a penalty back for Aspaduck Valley. Number 19 there for Charlotte will get sent off for the last few moments of this match with the yellow card. Aspatuck Valley look to cash in one final time before their whistle sounds. Run into contact goes April Torres. Charge again, Mitchell Camiglio. Looks for some space, but Charlotte's right there. They're able to push this one out. Possibly a knock on, but will continue to play on. Nice work from the scrum half. Through the teeth of the defense, found a little bit of a gap. Look to exploit it. The second dangerous tackle we've seen in a couple minutes here. Dump tackle, penalty awarded back to Aspatuck. So 30 seconds left to play. If you're Aspatuck, you could just wind down the clock with a penalty attempt, add three points to your score. They're going for the line out. So playing the strategic rugby still, what you would do if it was a tighter game. Opportunity is to practice. They've been outstanding on the offensive end. Well, the defensive end as well. They've come up nicely and held firm against Charlotte. On the offensive end, we've seen multiple speedsters be able to blaze down the pitch and score tries. Jaden Smith is one of those. See here in the dying moments if they've got anything left in the tank out here in match two. Still a lot to be decided for Aspatuck. It'll come down to this final matchup between Charlotte and United later today at 4 p.m. That one will be on field two, so we will not be live 
with that match. Remember to check our website for the final scores and that will do it as Aspatuck Valley with the huge 34 to nil victory over the Charlotte Tigers. Tigers. Take a second look here at the last couple replays. We'll set up these try scoring opportunities and excellent put in here by the scrum half from Aspatuck. And again, that eight pick that led to a try, a pure eight pick. That's something you salivate over. The back and forth action again, tough collisions, some high tackles. And it has been Aspatuck that's been able to maintain the majority of possession. We see again here, quick heads up play. Another powerful stiff arm doing it again. Aspatuck using their back row players, getting in on heaps of the action. The defensive stances from some of these Charlotte teams have been there. Sorry, go ahead, Tim. Oh no, big hits galore all over the pitch. It was a fun match, but it's Aspatuck Valley with the huge victory. We'll step aside. We've still got a few more matches left to go here from North Carolina. So keep it tuned here to the Rugby Channel. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and 
know what's in that product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to Warren Wilson College here in Swannanoa, North Carolina. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Tim Wilkes here for the final round of action for Pool A. We got plenty of games that have been played so far, close contests, some high try scoring ones, and you are in for a treat. This is our 3 p.m. matchup between the Sac Cal Amazons, multiple time national champions, taking on the Raleigh Redhawks. Zach Powell 1-0 on the day. They came away with a 12-5 victory over Morris earlier in the day, while the Redhawks fell to Morris at one o'clock. That was a high mark of 24-7. The Redhawks kicking off from right to left across your screen, kicking to Zach Powell, the Amazons in the silver and the purple. Zach Powell feels the ball well. About 15 meters downfield on that kickoff. This is a team that we expect to see good ball movement and a lot of go forward. They play an offloading game of rugby and look for their seams. Raleigh is going to try to disrupt that and stop them before they can get started here. Zach Powell with the goer, just floater just off the sweet spot of the boots and covered well by Raleigh. The Red Hawks with a counter, making up almost all of the territory back downfield. Raleigh, offloads of their own, keeping the ball alive. And as Raleigh nudging their way towards the 22, numbers looking towards this near sideline, Sac Pal setting up their defense. Raleigh again patient. Sac Pal concedes the ruck, zeroing out. Raleigh looking for the barrest of holes. And this is why the Sac Pal team will concede the rucks. They're able to stop them around the outside, make sure that they're realigning and not giving away defensive overloads. Raleigh. Maintaining possession of the ball, keeping their composure and keeping the ball under control. Good low form when they are carrying the ball in hand. And look at that kick stop. Excellent skills on display. A little bit of footy on the rugby pitch. 
making her way downfield. The outside center for Raleigh gets them inside of the 22, able to break some of the Sac Cal defense. Not releasing. Make that ball available quicker, please. In your touch, Judge. You guys, look at the AR, okay? We see the Red Hawks again in action. Yep, you're good there. You're good there. Here. Okay. Hold, please. Hold, please. Yeah. Marcus got my front. Let's go. Amazons with a full line out. This is a team that, in their first matchup, was able to greatly disrupt other Morris line out attempts. A strong attacking platform for them. Sacramento, a team with quite some height and a lot of power in their earlier game. We saw tries being scored by both their number 28 and their number 22. A conversion kick made by their number 13. So a few players to watch. Also keep an eye on this player with the black scrum cap and the blonde hair. She created so much opportunity for Sac Pal in that earlier matchup. Ready. Take a deep breath. Ready. Crouch! Find! Set! So the Red Hawks with the put in after referee Abby Tobias gives her instructions. Red Hawks able to maintain possession of the ball and look at the Sac Pal defense. Quick with the launch, not quite able to get the tackle to ground, but still able to stop the forward progress of this Red Hawks team. They couldn't go through them, so they're going to try to chip over and around them. Sac Pal now under pressure inside of their 22. Red Hawks need to align their defense. Look at this disjointed line, a little bit of depth. Referee's whistle blows it back. Timing was good. I need you to keep your body straight. I don't okay. want to see you angle right here. Okay. You can move closer to your side, but it must go in straight. Okay? So I can be like this? Correct. Same thing. Okay. Ready. Uh, and now another opportunity about 10 meters out. Crouch. Fine. Set. <laughs> And so a shallow and spread set up for the Red Hawks. But a free kick awarded to Sacramento on the scrums. We've seen some of this throughout the day. Teams need to really set and be mindful of their driving time when it comes to the scrum. So this free kick giving Sacramento an opportunity, ball in hand, looking for that continuity, looking to go back inside. But the offloads perhaps a tad too fancy. Red Hawks able to disrupt again. So they'll have possession again inside attacking territory as you see scrum half having a conversation there Just trying to get on the same page but this run right here a huge blow right through the defense she goes sits one down and keeps things moving but as you mentioned just that final offload there it's good work to get that arm free get the wraparound pass just a little too much and continues an opportunity for the red hawks to get on the board first the Red Hawks outside of the 22. Sacramento looking to get that initial drive, just that one meter push allowed at the U19 level. You see the force as they unbind or spring forward from the scrum. Scrum is going to be reset as that ball pops straight out. Responsibility of the props to close the tunnel. Yeah, you see this come we'll get through. this on the replay. Yeah, you see the flanker there Ready. just go to debt, but it does come all the way out the side. So we'll just have this one again, but a huge push from the Amazon. So. The ball quickly out the back of the scrum. Good defensive coverage from the Amazon scrum half and more defensive launching coming from the back row. The flankers in the eight getting in on the action here for Sacramento. The Red Hawks scrambling and look at this. They're cooking something up. Taken down from behind. Get the off road. Looks like the ball straight down. Play on the Red Hawks. 
able to create something out of seemingly nothing after that potent wave of defensive attack from the Amazons, the Red Hawks. About 40 meters from the goal line, going through multiple phases of play. And now Sacramento inching away and taking away territory and defensively. That's fine. Penalty awarded to the Red Hawks. A quick tack taken. The space is gained. Backwards. Pressure on again. That was my player to watch there with the scrum cap. And look at her defensive yeah. presence on the field. She is being a menace in the best possible way. Comes away with a turnover. Sacramento. Not However, are going to be penalized again, not releasing. We do see some refs that allow one roll. This one does not. So now it's something we know. And what we know is that the Red Hawks continue to maintain possession ball in hand. Sacramento is going to keep looking for poaches and jackals whenever possible. Whistles bringing it back to a penalty. Time is off. Boy, almost Captain. a big opportunity for the Red Hawks as that one trickled through. Ooh. Listen in to the referee here on this explanation. Okay, not releasing the ball. I saw it you first, I saw it you guys after, and I'm penalizing you guys again. So, all at once, you need to take advantage of that quickly, please. Okay. If someone's pulling out that ball, you don't let it go. Yeah, talk with your team, please, briefly, and the time will go on, okay? Great insight into the management there, just wanting the ball released, especially when a player is going for that poach and looking for the steal. As much as we want to retain possession for our team, you have to release the ball and you generally need to release it immediately. Thank you. We look at the physicality of the Sacramento team on display, the Red Hawks countering with everything that they've got. Neither of the teams able to break through these defensive walls. Shoots and tackles all over the field. Penalty play is on here for Sacramento. And look at this breakdown field. The strong carry by Sacramento eventually corralled to ground by the Red Hawks. The Red Hawks just able to poke the ball out of contact. It goes backwards. So play on. Sacramento still in possession, working their way towards midfield, just crossing. We hear the Red Hawks calling for realignment to the senior sideline. See the fake, a little bit of the show and the go. Now looking to split the defense. She is through number 12. And look at that, number four, right place, right time. Able to get the intercept, back and forth action. Yeah, Two teams yeah, evenly yeah. matching these first seven minutes of the game so far. The Red Hawks alive from having played just an hour ago. Sacramento coming off of that early game victory. And wow, what a game so far. Sacramento keeping the ball alive just for a moment, eventually tackle to touch. We've got a line out to Sacramento. Again, these back and forth intercepts. Tim, what do you do? Yeah, yes. Red Hawks doing just enough getting around the ball, but big tackle after big tackle from that player that you shouted out earlier in the match has been dominant for the Amazons. But we see here another nice little offload, but twice there, those offloads were able to get picked off by the Red Hawks. It's the Amazons now. They're closest to scoring just 10 meters out. The throw goes over the line out, and this creates a channel for Sacramento. And Sacramento's over the line the first try of the game. Come seven minutes in, and there was our player to watch for the Sacramento Amazons. They're taking advantage of the overthrow on the line out, but doing her job as the woman in the back. She's able to get right through. Tim, take it away. We've seen her throughout the match, just so much power and strength. Does not allow one person to stop her at all. She's able to drive right through the defense and gets it in for the first five. So it was Red Hawks that is punching their way through, almost got in, had their possession there on the opposite side of the pitch for so long, but one quick strike from the Amazons gives them the quick five-point lead. Amazon's kicker lining up the conversion intent. She was one for two in right game there. one this morning. Again, that 12 to five win over Morris. It'll be really interesting. If you watch her approach, she's going to back up and then she's going to take her time. She's going to place her weight back. She'll swing the arms a few times. She's going to wait. So there's that arm swing. She may look as if she's going to start her approach. We'll reset again. So making sure she gets her right moment. It looks wide to the left. Score remains five to nothing here in the first eight minutes of play. Strong work there from Sack Powell. 
As you mentioned, the Amazons have previous national championships under their belt, and they're looking to make it happen again. Just a nice, hard 10-meter run straight through the defense to get the first five on the board. The first of our set piece tries in the game as well. In open play, the teams have proven very evenly matched. The aggression, the physicality has been there, and both teams showing that they can scramble. You spoke earlier before where the Red Hawks were just able to get some fingers on the ball and disrupt the passing channels. We'll see if that success continues. It will be harder with the yellow card. They are going to be short 14 against 15 for nearly the remainder of this first half. We are nine minutes and 30 seconds into play. That player will see the sin bin for the next 10 minutes. Sacramento with the quick tap going towards the far sideline, fighting to get their way towards ground. And look at this, Red Hawks come away with the steal. I'm Zach Powell, I'm thinking of when we know we're taking contact, we must get to ground and present to our team because this Red Hawks team has been such a presence defensively. Yeah, they've done a good job, as you mentioned, being around the ball. We know how much the Amazons like to offload it and just keep things moving, keep it off the deck. Hit them a couple of times, but we've also been able to see just how quickly they can strike off of those. We're eight on eight on the scrum, which means that there's an overload in the back line for the Amazons. We'll see how they take advantage of it. Right now, stacked two players to the left hand side, the remaining backs to this near hand side of the field. And when we see the Red Hawks defensively, they're shading their first defender behind the scrum with the ability to go either direction, fairly flat across the field at that hash mark. You get the wide angle again thanks to next level rugby doing the filming for this weekend's broadcast here on the rugby network ryan ginty such a presence in the game promoting it wherever he can and of course our full engineering crew get some insight again from referee abby tobias nice long binds please ready crouch find set thank you We see the eight pick and the nine there to pop up in support. Again, strong numbers here to the near side of the field. Zach Powell looking to run with width. Taken in to touch. So well defended by the Red Hawks. They gave up some ground, but they did not give up the try. Defensive strategy shepherding towards the sideline pays off. It's the second time we've seen the Amazon get the ball all the way out to the outside in the hands of their number 22, their winger here on the near side, but good work by the Red Hawks, as you mentioned, just corralling them on the defensive end, not allowing any spaces to open up, and now they've got themselves a line out to work from. So Red Hawks go for that second pod. The throw is not straight. This is going to give the Amazons an attacking opportunity, opting for the scrum. We saw the strength of that like one meter push on their defensive scrums before, trying to get the Red Hawks a little unstable in the scrum. We'll see if that happens again. Watch for the potential for a number eight pick. And of course, we'll see if they use that tool of going wide again. Like Tim just mentioned, two tackles into touch means they want to, might want to start really playing between the 15 meter channels and not risking those sideline tackles. The ball is in and there is the eight pick, number eight herself. And she is still going forward. What a run, what power, another try for Sacramento, taking a 10 to nothing lead. So, the lineup missed you by the Red Hawks, showing up in a Sacramento try, two tries that have come from the lineouts as a platform. It's a beautiful take there out the back, so we take a second look, scoops it up, has numbers there to the outside, nice little fake right through the defense, sits one down, drags one, two, three over the line with her and dots it down for the try. Strong work from the number eight to put this team on her back and double their lead. We'll watch the conversion attempt here again from the boot of number 13 right in front of the goal post. Brings the ball back about 10 meters. Again, setting up her approach. Love the consistency out of kickers when they figure out their system that works you'll see a lot of people pay attention to their breathing patterns the way that they step the way they hold their arms we all think of johnny wilkinson and his little crouch so we'll keep an eye on this number 13 and the arm swing and this time it pays off another two for sacramento 
Strong work there with the kick. Yeah, maybe a maybe a smirk like Damian McKenzie before he gives it the boot. But strong work either way. One for two on the day. As you see, though, the big number eight right through the defense. Sits down one. Three more on her back with her. Once she gets going, not going to take her down. And another opportunity for the Amazons to keep moving. Again, one victory on the day. Looking to make something happen here. The 12 to nothing lead with four minutes left to go here in the first half. The Amazons cleanly field the kickoff and look at this chip and a chase downfield. It takes an Amazon friendly bounce. Red Hawks able to corral it. And she's able to evade three, four Sacramento defenders. The Red Hawks looking to counter. Again, still 14 against 15, an unequal match with numbers on the field due to the yellow card. Sacramento, quite the counter ruck, a little bit too much. Red Hawks able to recover the ball, but the power there in that counter wrecking attempt, something to be proud of. Backwards. Red Hawks scrambling, the ball backwards, so the Red Hawks still moving forward. Thank you. And eventually a knock on, scrum to the Amazons. Yep, yellow on. Yeah, it looked like they were working their way down the pitch a little bit, but just a little discombobulated out there. From ruck to ruck, there's another offload. Just tried to get one final one to bring things back into the field of play, but off the mark with the pass. Time is on. Yes, question. Strong defense or positioning here from the Amazons. I like that kick up over the top to kind of flip the field and put the uh, Red Hawks on their back foot. They were almost able to come away with some possession there of their own, but it's the Amazons ball in hand with another scrum. Amazons with numbers here to the near side of the field. They're set up with depth and width. A little bit of a mishandle on the carry means that they're going to wisely choose to take the contact, set that platform, this time set the ruck so there is an offside line. This time now going to the offload game. Numbers are there, support is there. She's trying to avoid the obstruction call, hands in the air. No obstruction is called, just accidental kind of positioning. Sacramento driven back to midfield, so the Red Hawks defense doing well to take away their offensive gain. Sacramento still fighting, and look at this. The Red Hawks defense does not give up. Stymie's out, attack Sacramento again with a boot downfield, looking for that Amazon's bounce. The Red Hawks looking to counter. She takes it out of the back, looking towards that far sideline, gets the place and the pickup again. Good skills on display. The Red Hawks give up possession. Sacramento with a clean poach. Go back and forth now as we settle into a little bit more of a rucking game than the offload game. Sacramento again going to the forward pod, leaving the ball behind, still maintaining possession. Sacramento show and go, and what a stiff arm. Sit down. Sacramento on the attack. The Red Hawks still flooding in defense, making it difficult. Sacramento just inches away from the goal line, and another penalty called. A yeah, break there for the Red Hawks as they were getting driven back again and again. And an opportunity to relieve a little bit of pressure. It'll stay inside the 22. But good work just hanging on for dear life there, trying to keep them out. As you see, another big move just runs straight at the defender. Gives her a big shove to the deck and keeps things moving for the Amazons. She has been outstanding throughout the match. She's been a driving force. Still just a 12-point game. A big pressure coming from the Amazons. If I'm clipping out moments, what was gorgeous about that stiff arm too is that she had that little fake to the outside. She had the defender off of her feet. So the defender did not have her feet set, which then made her more susceptible to being knocked down in that manner. So when we look at the skill here, that little bit of a set means that here, Let's go, Red. she's taking an angle towards the outside. She's able to cut back in and then she maintains possession. The ball is able to bowl it over. I was going to say this is Sacramento's danger area. Both of their tries have originated from this spot. We'll see if third time's a charge inside of the final 30 seconds of the match. You didn't quite see the call. But... Yeah, the infraction there in the line out. So another big break for the Red Hawks. And final whistle will come off of our referee, but we are definitely getting close and the Red Hawks need to cash in quickly. 
Red Hawks playing from inside of their 22, must get the ball in hand. This is giving Sacramento a little bit of time to be able to realign their defense. And look at this stop, a fantastic form, buddy tackle. And the Red Hawks maintain possession. The skills and strength of their own. Again, the shooting Sacramento defense. Setting the Red Hawks back, but they're not making those panic passes or offloads. They're retaining possession of the ball, finding these little seams, working the way towards the 22. Finally caught the ball forward. Sacramento with advantage being shown. Sacramento inside the 22. Dangerous yet again. The support is there. Red Hawks defense also there. And look at this. Three tries for Sacramento. They're going to add to their halftime lead 17 to nothing with a conversion to come. What a big try, a huge clear out there off the back of the ruck as they come around the corner and will come back to where they were able to make the tackle. Double tackle after double tackle, two in a row. So they are flying around on the defensive end. They turn it into the offense here, attacking this back line. And then the huge clear out, just the whole team getting involved, leaving a big empty space here on the near side of the pitch and an easy try for the Amazons. They make it look easy, but so much sheer force and power coming through. Both of these teams have played such stellar defense and we've seen them create little errors from the other team. If we're going into halftime, I'm looking at how we're carrying the ball and how we're placing it, knowing we're going into contact areas and ensuring that my body position isn't necessarily turned to go forward and fight for those extra yards when my team is there in support and when there are so many defenders around me. So I'm looking at really making sure that I can get myself to ground and that I can place the ball back towards my team. Little adjustments, it's been a good game. 17 to nothing doesn't necessarily reflect how close this game has been. Strong effort there from the Red Hawks throughout the match, but just too much from the Amazons. As again, Amazon's just 20 minutes away from punching their ticket into the uh, semifinals tomorrow. We will be back with all the second half action in just a moment. Two more games to come, all the rugby left to be played, but of course, an exciting 20 minutes ahead of us. you into rugby? Well, I was like fouling out in all my basketball games, so I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? World's best. In the hands of everybody. What's your experience with RCT so far? Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing the sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. You know? Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby just comes to one practice has ended up liking it. And I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact, like same rules, guys and girls, and I didn't believe her. And then she was like, oh, come out to our practices. And I did, and I was like, oh yeah, I wanna play. And then I started playing, and it was really fun. It's just, I don't know, it's just a game that I love. It's pretty fun though, I don't know, I just love everything about it. It's the laid back atmosphere of it. 
we all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and builds, builds like a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. <laughs> Like how we even like beat out of each other in the game, but then we like come together after and we're just like shake hands. And... Well, what do you think that is? Why is that? I, I personally think it's like, it's just, we're all one community, like it's one family. You all play rugby, it's just one family. It's a sport. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you have to have respect for the person going after you because you work hard and they have to work just as hard as you do. So you say that respect is probably the greatest value you can gain out of this game? By far. Yeah. By far. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. We are back ahead of the second half of action here in this Pool A contest between the South Cal Amazons and the Raleigh Redhawks. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Tim Wilkes, and we are showing you the highlights. This has been a hard-hitting game, plenty of action, both teams trying to make their mark on this match. Tim, what are your thoughts, your takeaways from the first half? Well, really just the strength of the South Cal Amazons has definitely been on display here as we see a couple of big tries coming from their back row just a straight force going straight through the teeth of the defense but on the defensive end they played decently well there's the big double tackles we've seen they're flying all over the pitch and so far just have done too much to really let the red hawks have more phases they had like 10 12 phases at one point but the red hawks came away empty-handed on those on that possession and since then it's been all amazon as they continue to extend their lead We're getting ready for the start of the second half. Sacramento Amazons going from right to left across your screen, picking off to the Raleigh Red Hawks. Again, two teams so physical, so evenly matched. The difference has been some of these attacking opportunities inside the 22 when Sacramento has been on what was then the near sideline. So if they get inside the 22 on the far sideline, look for that to be a key try scoring opportunity. If you're the Red Hawks, you're looking to continue disrupting some of the passing channels. When we saw Sacramento try to get into an offload game and the Red Hawks were able to disrupt those passes, it shifted the styles of play. And we've seen some scrappy, scrappy play, a fantastic realignment by both of these teams. Scrum on the field, we see the scrum half with the ball in. She comes around the back, eight-man pick. She's got the nine popping up in support. When I say eight, nine, I refer to their positions on the field, not the numbers on their jerseys. Sacramento still in possession, looking for that far sideline, getting towards that sweet spot. Tackled into touch, Red Hawks making the adjustment and making the tackle. Yeah, they did a good job fringing all the way to the far side of the pitch there. Got in that outside channel. We're able to shove them back further and further. Good work just slamming that door shut right there. Forcing her out into touch. Again, that one time where it was a good 10, 12 phases of play for the Red Hawks. They still were not able to break that game line too often. They did a good job getting in their rucks, securing possession. We've got to see a few more line breaks from them because you know the Amazons are out there 
not head hunting, but they have been making precision tackles. So they've got to do a good job getting that ball, whipping it around the pitch, find some more openings in the defense. Sacramento with possession off a little line out, and here we go again, our player to watch number 16. That is Tuhuya Kahayu. I actually saw her in action out in California earlier in the fall. She stepped into some seven scrimmages with Stanford and truly stood out on the pitch. So thanks to Jackie Finland with the Rugby Breakdown for that update on the player name. I would expect her to have quite the impact in USA Pathways. We'll take a look again here. Sacramento disrupting the line out. This is their bread and butter spot. All of their tries have originated from this position in the game so far. So disrupting the line out. Tuhuya with the carry, getting the ball towards the outside and Sacramento back on form. That was a great job there with the offload. Looks like she probably could have drug the defenders all the way in if she needed to, but found that support, found that offload, made that try a lot easier, and they're able to get in yet again. Just too much power from the Sac Pal Amazon squad. They've already got one win under their belt. So with this victory, they should be able to get into the top four in the semifinals tomorrow. Kick off by the Red Hawks, Sacramento on receipt, taking the ball at pace and in motion. And again, nearly another line break, and she is still going. Scrambling defense again from the Red Hawks, preventing a truly long breakthrough. And again, a chip and chase downfield. Sacramento now taking a lot of plays deep from the playbook. Heads up, trying to catch the Red Hawks off guard. Red Hawks have been pretty sure with ball in hand. Look for their chance to counter and exit, but first they're gonna have to survive that ruck. We saw the furious attempt at the counter ruck by the Amazons and furious tackling there. Sacramento's defense launching and launching again. They are able to feel the clearing kick attempt and they've got the ball in hand again in a dangerous spot about 10 meters from the goal line. Amazons. Going to the left off of the ruck. And look at this, more space. The Amazon's over the line again. That number 21 recognizes the space in front of her. Doesn't need support right or left. Just sees the green and goes. The Amazons cash in yet again. That all started with great defensive work. Yet again, the uh, Red Hawks tried to find some relief with the kick out the back. But as soon as they caught the ball, just the constant pressure Last thing you want to do if you're the Red Hawks is catch that ball flat-footed. They had pressure. They were able to turn that one into offense here. As we see, a nice pass to the outside. Slips the first defender, gets past the second, and drags the third over the line for the try. For being in the support space is such a necessity because the threat of the players outside open up that space back in, open up the opportunity for this conversion kick that is made, changing their conversion kickers here in the second half. 29 to nothing the score. And as Tim mentioned, this is looking to be the first team that books their ticket into tomorrow's semifinals. The teams that top each pool will advance on. Still have 15 minutes left to play here in the second half, but Sacramento making an emphatic start to their campaign to repeat far in the national stage. Sacramento's again deploying the strength, another stiff arm, knocking the Red Hawks back, but the Red Hawks so quick to realign defensively. Kicking again downfield, so the offensive kicking game paying off with the territory wins. Red Hawks looking to counter. We're gonna have offsides on the kick. Quick tap and go from Zons. And again, looking for that green space, looking to catch the Red Hawks unaware. Taking advantage of the misalignment with these kicks and the offsides call. Sacramento still ball in hand, numbers to the near sideline. Fights away towards the inside. Red Hawks looking to poach, may have hands on the ball. And Red Hawks coming away with a key steal. Sacramento. Getting it back again. We're distributing a crisp pass out wide. The ball here able to cut her way back inside and again over the try line for another kick and chase, eventually yielding a try for Sacramento. Sacramento just ripping it right out of the Red Hawks' hands time and time again. Took it from them that time, turned that defense back into offense again. As we see here, just too much power 
fends off one, then takes on three defenders, splits them, and gets in for the try. The Amazon's just relentless. And right now the Red Hawks trying to find any bit of breathing room out of their own end. It's been tough. Well, Tim, like you mentioned too, they've been stripped a few times. We saw this in the first half, brought it up, but looking at your body positioning as a ball carrier, knowing that you're tight in contact is important. They're going to need to change how they're approaching contact to make sure that they secure their own ball. And we look at the form of the way that Sacramento is scoring tries, and I mean in physically scoring tries, diving over the line. We'd love to see that out of some of the Red Hawks ball carriers on offense to make sure they retain possession and don't allow for these strips. Work rate from the Amazons has been incredible. Flying around the pitch on the defensive end, getting their hands on the ball whenever they can. Sacramento again, working their way upfield, taking nearly all of these kickoffs at pace, getting on their front foot and not waiting for the defense to meet them. They're trying to meet the defense on their own terms. Sacramento with advantage being shown by our referee. It's Abby Tobias in the middle of the field, and Sacramento again getting these breakaways, loving that far sideline. Taken into touch, we'll have a line out to the Red Hawks. Red Hawks again, you love to see the fight. They're not giving up, continuing to try and slow down this tough Sac Pal Amazon squad in the Red Hawks earlier today with that 24 to 7 loss against Morris still looking for their first points of this match. We've seen a bit of athleticism and burst, but just this defense from the Amazons has been relentless with big hits. They've been cashing in throughout the match. The line out disrupted, the Red Hawks coming away with the ball, bouncing on the ground, still looking to maintain possession, getting that quick clearing kick under pressure. Good composure. Sacramento again with space to run, looking at all of these picks as opportunities where defensive walls aren't set. Red Hawks coming with possession, excellent positioning there. Another kick downfield takes a bounce back towards the Red Hawks side, straight into Sacramento hands. Sacramento looking to counter yet again. So fighting their way downfield, getting that leg drive going. Here's Kai Hao. Ball in hand, dipping the shoulders, creating some space. She's got support to the outside. Tries to get the pass a little behind the back. Click. Goes a little forward. I like the vision there. Good support line yeah, out that, of her wing. Had that two on one there on the outside. Took it into contact and just tried to let it go, but it ended up squirting forward. It's unfortunate there with the offload. But you see yet again, just relentless team pressure. You get her into open space. Sucks the defense back into the middle of the pitch, opens things up, able to split through the wing. And just one little offload would finish things off, but as she hits the deck, see her try to pop that one back or get to her feet, but just lost it forward. Strong work from the Amazons. Red Hawks with the put in. The scrum half able to redistribute from behind. Now they're playing from deep inside their own territory. The kick is missed. The ball goes out the back. It was brought into in goal by the Red Hawks. Bit of an unconventional play. Again, strong defensive pressure from Sacramento, especially breaking off the flankers from these scrums. We'll get a look again, kind of a shot from behind, a shot from above. Slow-mo, the pass to the first receiver looking to pass yeah. to the kick. I, a unique the play. first time I've seen that as well. Almost made it happen, but as you said, in the end, it goes out the back and another big scrum for the Amazons. So the five meter scrum going out to the back line and the forward strike line, changing the angle back inside is able to again power over the defense, Sacramento. Cannot be stopped in the second half. Yeah, they only put up 12 points in their first match against Morris, and I think that shows just how tough Morris has been on the day. But Sac Pal Amazon's just relentless out there on the offensive end. And their power to just drag defenders with them time and time again continues to pay off. 
That one no good. Still 39 to nil. You go back to the play on the field and look at that strike line going towards the outside by number 12. As she cuts back in, she's opening up space and just weaving. She's telling her defenders where she wants them to go and then taking advantage of the space that she's able to create. So back in action, ball bounces its way inside of the 22. Doya again, such a threat and loving the way she's carrying the ball. This time it's just in the right hand. She started with two hands for the pass on the offload. Now she's got the ball to tuck. Takes it to ground. Support is lacking, so Red Hawks just able to pick the ball up off of her. She wasn't going to fight and risk a penalty, so the Red Hawks now trading possession. And playing from deep in their own territory again. Zones off their feet there, came in into that ruck. They've been so aggressive flying around these rucks, that time just off their feet trying to get their hands on it. Ball back in play, bouncing on the ground, an opportunity for the Amazons. Red Hawks look like they're trying to kick anything that they can do to get outside of their 22. Charge down. Kicking from the hand, from someone else's hand, and from the ground. The knock on by Sacramento is going to yield a scrum to the Red Hawks. See this one go through the hands. They know that they need to make that kick, but that pass is just a little bit too far forward. It's about the only thing she could do is try to put a boot on it. There's another one coming here from the wing. The Amazons almost are able to turn something or nothing into something there, but trickles out into touch. We'll play the knock on. So an attacking, or excuse me, it'll be a defensive scrum for the Amazons and a put in for the Red Hawks. The ball, quick service in, but the scrum has wheeled a free kick to the Red Hawks, so Sacramento, too much of a drive on one side. Red Hawks with an opportunity inside of their 22, this time a ball in hand. The looping play going towards the far sideline, finally getting some speed, exiting the 22, and intercepted by Sacramento. So the Red Hawks finally get a few passes strung together, and Sacramento disrupts again, reading those passing channels and just going over the line. We will see if the try is awarded or if she was taken into touch before the ball was dotted down. It looked like from here she reached over, but maybe dotted it down on the touch line. As we see again, nice work. They're finally able to get on the far side of the pitch through the hands, but a big response for the Amazons. They take it right back. Then on the far side, so close, just trying to reach this one over and dot it down from that replay. Looks like it might've been good as a discussion here from the referee yields a line out. And now the Amazons looking to cash in. Again, the Amazons in their favorite spot. Line out as a platform inside of the 22 has yielded so many tries this match. A quick check from our referee, so a goal line drop. Five minutes left here in the second half. We have these recent World Rugby law changes meant to keep the ball in play and the ball in motion rather than having constant five meter scrums and resets and also rewarding holding up tries rather than the punishment of the five meter scrums. The kick is up straight into the hands of the Amazons with space to run towards the far sideline. She's got support, is she going to need it? She's taken down, has to release the ball. Red Hawks tried to get hands on it and they're going to draw the penalty. So a thrilling opportunity, the Red Hawks defense able to thwart. Would love to see both of these teams able to play each other fresh. Sacramento played the first game of the game of the gay back at 10 a.m. and have had all the rest and recovery time. The Red Hawks only on an hour break between matches and I think some of that wear and tear has dimmed what was a really sparky start. Knocked on goal. They get pinned in their own end again and just barely trying to come away with anything at this point. There's the defensive pressure and the lack of really any offensive continuity just coming together to disrupt things for the Red Hawks. They'll have another defensive scrum here. But yeah, you mentioned it. it's only been about an hour since their previous match. It was a tough 24 to seven defeat in that match. Now you gotta turn right back around 
and take on the perennial national championship team here in Sac Pal. And it's just been all them. They've been pulling away here in the second half, and I think you mentioned it, probably because some of those tired legs. Get a view of the gorgeous facilities here at Warren Wilson College, North Carolina, the host to so much rugby, and this tries them, the host to so many Amazon's tries. Doing it off the set piece again, powering over 44 to nothing with a conversion to come. Second time we've seen the number eight just take that one off the back and rumble right through the teeth of the defense. It's nice and low, not going to be able to bring her down with the solo tackles. As she again comes around the corner, possibly dropped that one, went backwards though, over and through one player, and then takes it in the rest of the way. But again, just may have lost it a little bit there off of the back heel of her flanker, but scoops it up and knows what to do with it from there. Cashes in with another five points. Red Hawks on the restart. Four minutes left to go here in the match. Sacramento still powering their way forward. Red Hawks making the stop. The Amazons with a forward pod, slowing up their own attack. Red Hawks benefit from the knock on, going to be a scrum put in in Sacramento territory. This match started off so promising for the Red Hawks, a good five minutes, so they had the Amazons pinned in their own half, had a couple opportunities since that first five minutes, it has been all sack pal. They've continued to dominate each facet of the game, but an opportunity for the Red Hawks here. They got seven in their first match, looking to do the same here. See the tap put in and the drive out of Sacramento, a powerful scrum, but a little bit too much. Scrum is going to reset. We've seen a few free kicks awarded. And again, something to look ahead to tomorrow's semifinal mashups. Little things that Sacramento can clean up. They Red Hawks resetting. Dominant. They've been dominant here in Pool A, though, and they look to punch their ticket to the semifinals tomorrow. No more push! Ball in play, Red Hawks off the back, going to the weak side. They have numbers out steep and wide towards the near side of the field. Advantage being shown to the Amazons. Believe that ball may have been knocked on. Back and forth, looks like the Red Hawks may have intercepted. So enough advantage gained. Red Hawks get to play on. Shooting tackles from Sacramento, and Sacramento takes the ball right back. Again, four, five, six strips in the game so far by Sacramento from the Red Hawks when they've been on attack. This is providing another opportunity, and look at this. The mismatch in the speed there creates an opportunity for Sacramento, despite being slower on the watch. The over-pursuit by the Red Hawks open up the space for Sacramento, and Sacramento now taking it down, setting the rock, making sure they have that offside line. Amazons. in inside of the 22. Going to the strong side, going to their strong number eight. And two tries off the back of the scrum from her in this game so far. And a penalty awarded to the Red Hawks. Yeah, they've been scrappy and they are relentless on the defensive end as well. They've done a good job. A lot of these tackles they're having to make are on girls that are bigger than them and they have continued to put their head in there and fight on. Another strong whistle from our referee. Penalty to Sacramento. Time is winding down. We have to be inside of the final 90 seconds or so, if even that. We see the tap and go from Sacramento. Numbers to the near side of the field. They should have an overload based on what we can count. And nudged into touch. So good defense bumping her out by the Red Hawks. That will be the game. Sacramento, Amazon, 44 to nothing over the Red Hawks out of Raleigh. They are going to be a first team punching their ticket into the national semifinal, a comprehensive performance by the Sacramento team. Yeah, we've seen it, Liz, all day long. Big hit after big hit after big hit and just too much of it. 
the Amazons have continued to lay their presence out here. Amazon, and like you said, they are ready to cash in tomorrow. They'll be one of our first matches of the day. And can't wait to see what they can do. An opportunity to get another national championship for Sac Bell. I mean, valuable moments here for this Red Hawks side. So scrappy at the start of the game, coming out against the number one seed for the tournament. Rally, a lot to build on going into tomorrow's playoff stages. Teams 5 through 12 will be playing off for their final status in the tournament. But we will be back with more action here at the Warren Wilson College Sportsplex. Coming up next, we have Clayton taking on the Charlotte Cardinals in Pool D action. So I think they might be just doing like five since everything. We're back. We're back. We're back. Welcome back to Warren Wilson College Sportsplex. We are ready to go here in the 2023 National Girls Club Rugby Championships. Tim Wilkes here alongside my partner, Liz, and we are having a fantastic day of rugby. We are all set for our last two matches on the docket as we get ready to go with Clayton taking on the Cardinals. Liz, we've seen these two clubs already earlier in the day. It's been tough, fought throughout. Let's we'll see if they've got left in the tank here in their second match. Saw Clayton earlier in the day take on San Mateo, and that was a 19-12 win for San Mateo. This is a pool where the teams have been evenly matched, two powerful sides in this earlier game. It is Clayton that is in the black and pink. And then in earlier matchups as well, the Virginia Cardinal were 10 to five winners over San Mateo. So everything to play for, the winner of this match positions themselves best to move on in tomorrow's semifinals. B. Clayton with the kick here, and Clayton in the black jerseys, white numerals and pink trim. Taking on the Charlotte Cardinals. Charlotte, it's been a good five, six hours since their first match of the day back at 10 o'clock this morning. Just get things back in gear here as they are about ready to take on Clayton Rugby. Camera two is down for five minutes. Camera two is down for five minutes. Clayton Copperheads, the southeast of Raleigh going to make their presence felt here in the final match of the day out of Pool D. This one knocked on the start. In the hands of Clayton now. They're able to retain possession. We will come back. We had the knock on, no advantage gain. We'll have our first scrum of the match here for the Clayton Copperheads. Let's 
so we do still have the score up from the previous game. Can assure all of our fans at home that it is indeed 0-0. We did start the game at even. Anna, you're my favorite. Special thanks to everybody allowing us to come out here in beautiful North Carolina. It's a Warren Wilson College Next Level Rugby Productions helping us out throughout the day. All of our referees working hard patrolling the pitch. Right now it's Clayton with the put into the scrum. Santiago sends it in, gets the return back. Takes it about 30 meters out. Jamal there must release. They're able to pick this one up through Rowley. She'll pick and go straight up the center of the pitch, but it's stolen away. Good defense there by the Cardinals, and they are on the front foot now. Nice little offload as well. A good 30 meter rumble here for the Cardinals as they continue to go over the 10 meter line. About flipping the pitch, they have done so with a couple of big runs and now they continue to put the exclamation point on things. Through 22 meter line. Charlotte, looking good. Numbers on the far side of the pitch. Through the hands they go into contact finally about 12 meters out recycle not a lot of counter pressure being put on and now five meters out through the defense they go setting up here with a couple pick and goes through the hooker lost it forward though i don't think she got it in but the try has been awarded it was tough from here referee was on the opposite side and the try is given as clayton go down five mil to the cardinals So Take go back to the look. replay. This one looks like it just got lost forward into contact, possibly. Referee was there though, says tries awarded. And so it's a five nil lead for Charlotte. 70 degree day, not a ton of wind, and they're able to strike this one through. Two more up on the board, and a 7 0 lead here early for the Cardinals. They're continuing the trend of tries being scored early and often. She gets it over the line, is able to sell the try. It is scored according to our referee. Could be a debate for the ages, but for right now, we'll see how Clayton responds. Ready to get underway here and get this second match of the day for both of these squads. Charlotte, Cardinals already with that victory under their belts. A seven point lead here, another win will punch their ticket tomorrow to the semifinals. And off the kick, they give a little return. It's knocked on and they're on the front foot again, right through the defense they go. Says one, says sit down to one, rumbles through the next one. Nice little offload, they're now 10 meters out. Good work here by the Cardinals. Charlotte looks to attack again. From the hands here through the center of the pitch. Good defense by Clayton. They are back on their heels looking to defend. Their goal line again the second time in the first five minutes. Thank you. Looks like they got their hands on it, they had to release there. Still in possession of Charlotte. That ball's out. They're able to get their hands on it. Good work by Clayton. That was Jennifer Rowley that got her mitts on it. Ripped it out of there. Referee's going to slow this one down. I think we'll have a knock on. No, goal line drop, I believe, Liz. So, you are correct. The try held up, so giving more of an advantage to the defending team for a good play rather than all these five meter scrums. This gives them the opportunity for any space. The team does not need to take this drop from the middle of the field. It can be a drop kick from anywhere on the goal line, similar to a 22 meter drop kick. It just must be a drop kick that does go forward. 
Make sure you keep it in touch as well as this one does so nicely. Only gets about 10 meters on it and they are able to get that right back are the Cardinals. They're knocking on the door again and they score their second try of the match. Here in the first five and a half minutes, it's a 12 nil lead for Charlotte. The Charlotte team, very similar in their playing style and some of their stature as the San Mateo team earlier. We saw Clayton give them some trouble when they were able to spread the ball. Right now, it is the power of this Charlotte Cardinal side that is getting them the tries, using the strength of their forwards, the strength of their carries. When we're thinking about tackles, you need to tackle them quickly, get them to ground. The counter wrecking, if the team is there, probably not as effective because this is a strong Cardinal team. So are looking for next phases, looking for disruptions, and then looking to see where can you be a bully when Clayton has a ball in hand? How can they spread the field? How can they use some of the speed that we saw in their game against San Mateo to their advantage? We know they can score tries, but right now it has been all Charlotte with possession and Charlotte is doing the right thing. It is right between the uprights and good and extends the lead now 14 to nil. And Clayton again had the loss earlier in the day They've got to come away with the victory here, but down by 14 here with seven minutes gone, it's getting tougher and tougher. There is away. Remember, folks, we still have one more match on the docket here today before we start things off tomorrow. That's where the fun stuff happens. We've got our first semifinal at 9 a.m., second at 10 and then the championship match coming to you live at 2 p.m. here from Warren Wilson College Sportsplex. Tim Wilkes and Liz Entwistle here with you, taking you through all of the play-by-play -play throughout the day. And thank you so much to everybody at the Rugby Network and Next Level Rugby for having us here. Off the restart, down by 14. This one looks like it goes off the mitts, but backwards says the referee. Hip kick catches the defense, napping, and puts it all the way back behind. And the stumble for that one. The charge coming in for the counter ruck. Doesn't result to much, but just outside the 22 is where Clayton will now have ball in hand through Santiago. Not much going off the offload there. Job covering the posts there by Charlotte. Look for some space here on the near side and then chip kicked up over the top. Pull back is able to retreat, get her hands on it, but lost it. Clayton needs to make sure they are on their feet to get possession. They're able to find the ball. Now they'll look to work here through Sierra Santiago. Finds her target. Nice little quick pass from Van Grand. Keeps things moving here for the Copperheads, but a penalty is going to be awarded. Caught a little bit alone there, not releasing the call. Penalty back to Clayton. Excuse me, back to the Cardinals. Nice kick, finds touch, and will set Charlotte up with the line out just inside the 10 meter line of Clayton. Good heads up play earlier by Clayton to take that kick downfield, looking towards this near sideline, looking towards the corner. We saw Charlotte set up with about eight of their own players on defense immediately around the ruck. That means there's plenty of space available. When we think of the size of the rugby pitch and having over 6,000 square meters to play in, depending on the dimensions, there's so many areas of opportunities. They're trying to create space downfield, put the pressure on the fullback, nearly able to recover the ball. But instead, now Charlotte kicking it back, getting the line out, setting up short. We've got four in the line out. Clayton realigning their numbers to match. Is she in or is she out? It's set up and they'll go with this first jumper. Nicely done. They're able to secure possession and work out of that. Little offload finds the target at full pace and they're over the 22 meter line. Good work. They're from Charlotte, but they are a little bit stranded and get it taken away there in the tackle. Big take there from Van Grand on the defensive end. Gives Clayton possession here inside their own 22. Kind of lacks a physical passing. Make sure they're catching these at full pace. This defense is definitely coming up at high speeds. They're able to catch them a good five meters behind the gain line this time. Continue to work out to the far side of the pitch. The defense. 
just relentless coming up, meeting him behind the gain line. This time did not release, made the tackle. You've got to let go before you go after the ball. They did not, and so a penalty awarded here back to Clayton. We'll just take a quick tap, pass out to the right, and this one goes behind, and it's scooped up, and an easy try for the Charlotte Cardinals, their third of the match. Sometimes it's good to be lucky, sometimes you're lucky to be good. Both things paid off there for the Charlotte Cardinals. Right place, right time, able to corral the ball off of the bounce, the unfortunate miss by Clayton. And this is gonna provide an opportunity here. So we see a good first pass, the high pass on the second, and then this is a defender ready to just eat it up. Extending their lead, a win for Charlotte does put them into the semis, and they're making sure that they are in as much control of this match as they can be. Jackie DePaz feeling herself there with the big try, did well. And again, it's that defensive pressure. They were coming up, and so as soon as that pass went behind, she was right there to catch it at full pace and take it in for the easy try. And the pressure mounting here for Clayton. They needed a victory in this match to be able to stay alive. Three straight tries from Charlotte have extended the lead now 21 to nil with 12 minutes gone by. Take a second look, that ball just pops right up to her and Jackie DePaz knows what to do with it. Slams it home, gets the try. Not too often you see a hooker out in the open field scooping one up and taking it the distance, but you gotta love it. And again, they Oh, Tim, I'm gonna challenge lead. you there. <laughs> we saw so many hookers scoring tries in the last edition of the Men's World Cup. I'm gonna disagree as someone who's played hooker myself. But back to the action on the field. Nice little burst again. It's the Cardinals over. Right at the 22 meter line, they are on the attack yet again. Clayton with a good little push back on the counter ruck. Doesn't come to fruition, another big run. Right through the teeth of the defense, they're able to keep this one up. Maul finally does come down. Whistle sounds. Alright, let's have a reset to blue. I call for the safety. We'll be a scrum here to a scrum down back to the Cardinals. Set things up as they are up again, 21 to nil. We heard direction from our referee that was blown up for safety concerns, a bit of a pile on, want to make sure that the player at the bottom is okay. So rather than risk the potential for injury, blowing up the play, restarting with a scrum the same way that we stop if there's like an injury during open play as well. Again, looking at the game management and preserving as many of these players as possible for day two of the tournament. Put into the scrum, goes in clean, not a whole lot of pushback, and they're able to pick this one out of there, switch things up and make it in again. Now they're looking to the far side of the pitch, but this one gets knocked on, and the scrum down back to Clayton. So we'll keep an eye here on Clayton's exit strategy. First, they need to win their own scrum. We saw the attempt at the kick down field before, maybe perhaps not as deep because it did give the Virginia Cardinals fullback the chance to get the ball and a chance to get a little bit of momentum with her support. Kicking for territory has worked for several teams throughout day one of this tournament. And just showing advances when it comes to this girls high school game. We progress through the afternoon. That wind has shifted a little bit, started to pick up a little bit more, blowing, blowing right to left as you view the match. So kicking into the teeth of the wind just a little bit, but this time off of the eight-man pick, they're able to find some space here in the near side. A double tackle takes her to deck. Had her position on the wrong side. They are ding for the penalty are the Cardinals, and it's Clayton with the quick tap. Through the defense they go. Runs through and over one defender who stood up perfectly straight and they get the high tackle there. Tim, I actually believe that was a stiff arm to the face. We get it on the replay here. The high contact made. Again, the intent doesn't matter. U19 very, very careful with the laws of the game. That stiff arm to the face not permitted at the youth level of rugby. Something that is also 
fairly unique to the United States. When we've been on tours down in Fiji and Australia, they do allow the fins to the face, and that has taken some USA players out of a well, out of their element. Never, never something that uh, is welcomed. A little mitt to the face, but from here they're able to kick this one into touch. Fifteen and a half minutes gone by in the first half. This Pool D matchup, the final of the day. Charlotte Cardinals look to punch their ticket into tomorrow's semis and win Pool D. Get the ball back to this side of the pitch. Line out here for the Cardinals to attack from, but a little bit of a missed time throw as no jumpers went up for it. The kick finds touch, but I believe they were outside the 22 meter line. So we'll bring this one all the way back to where that kick was taken. And it'll be a scrum down here, or excuse me, a line out here for the Cardinals. A big mistake there by Clayton. Uh, difficult with the reaction time, making sure that we're aware of where we are on the field, the same way that we look at managing the clock. So Cardinal again with the opportunity, and this time very short in their line out, just three people in. Clayton needing to drop a player to match numbers. You gotta make sure that pass goes across that five meter line. You see there, that one was pretty tight. Looks like they're giving the option here to Clayton. Talk a lot in rugby about high risk, high reward. That five meter line out throw is something that is high risk and oftentimes very low reward because it has to go five meters. It has to go straight. And a lot of times you see receivers stepping into the channel rather than waiting on the ball to cross the plane of that five meter hash. It hasn't worked today. We'll see if teams adjust as the tournament goes on. Good job swinging this one to the far side of the pitch, but it does go to deck. They're right at the 22 meter line. It looked like the Cardinals had it, but it squirts back to the Clayton side of the pitch and they have ball in hand. Nice tackle on the far side. Slows things down. Now the kick over the top hits right into the Cardinals hands. We've got a penalty here. I think it's going to be offside on Clayton because of being in front of the kicker and making an advancement towards the kick receiver. So like you mentioned, Tim, it is going to give the choice if they want to have a penalty or a scrum up. A scrum up, not too much of a difference in size or not too much of a difference in field position. So they're choosing the penalty and choosing to go for points. It'll be Alexa Krishner, Krishner that will step up. I'll hand this one off actually. And Look to strike this one through. Minute and a half left to play in the first half. It has been all Cardinals in this one so far. Again, earlier in the day, they were able to come away with a 10 to five victory over San Mateo Wolverines, who looked very good in their own right earlier. That victory gives them the opportunity to get into the top four into the semifinals tomorrow morning. That kick allows time to tick off and puts another two up on the board. 20, excuse me, puts another three up on the board there with the penalty, 24 to nil. Now your score. It's a good strategic play. As Tim has mentioned so many times, the Cardinal just need to win the game to advance. So if they are able to preserve their energy preserve their players, look ahead towards important games tomorrow, taking those points, being mindful of minutes. It's a good game management strategy. It's a little easier when you've got everything here in front of you. They know what they've had to do. They know what is on the table for tomorrow. But right now they are looking for more points yet again. Beautiful use of hands finally ends up going to deck. Knocked on, no advantage played, and that will take us to halftime. A good one here from North Carolina. We've still got one match left on the docket, so stay tuned. We'll step aside here for a couple minutes. 
When we come back, we'll have the uh, second half action here from Pool D. you into rugby? So I was like fouling out in all my basketball games so I was like <laughs> why not try rugby out? World's best. In the hands of everybody. What's your experience with RCT so far? Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing the sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby just comes to one practice has ended up liking it. And I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact, like same rules, guys and girls, and I didn't believe her. And then she was like, oh, come on to our practices. And I did, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to play. And then I started playing, and it was really fun. It's just, I don't know, it's just a game that I love. It's pretty fun, though. I don't know, I just love everything about it. It's the laid back atmosphere of it. We all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and builds, builds like, a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. <laughs> Like how we even like beat fun of each other in the game, but then we like come together after and we're just like shake hands. And... Well, what do you think that is? Why is that? I, I personally think it's like, it's just, we're all one community, like it's one family. We all play rugby, it's just one family. It's a sport. Yeah, because yeah, you have to have respect for the person going after you because you work hard and they have to work just as hard after you. So you say that respect is probably the greatest value you can gain out of this game? By far. Yeah. By far. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to North Carolina, 
home of the 2023 National Girls Club Rugby Championships. We've had a full day of action. Six matches already gone by. And it's a big one here on our hands as it's the Charlotte Cardinals taking on Clayton Rugby. And it's been all Cardinals here with a few tries to start off the first half. Yeah, when we look at the tail of the first half, it has been all possession for the Charlotte Cardinal. They have been inside the Clayton half of the field for probably 90 to 95% of the first half of action. They have been dominant in possession, dominant scoring tries. So if you are Clayton, you just need to think of how you're going to break through midfield. They've tried some kicks. They've had to do quite a few under pressure. If they can get themselves a stable platform and be able to play a little bit of their game of rugby, it is so much easier and so less energy consuming to play offense than compared to defense. They're off the opening kick, did not go 10. So we'll have an opportunity with our first scrum of the second half. Sierra Santiago put this one in for Clayton. Clayton Copperheads out of Clayton, North Carolina, just southeast of Raleigh. Use it. Girls from Charlotte today. The Cardinals have been dominant, but Clayton get this one out now on the near side of the pitch, but strong defense is able to string Melvin all the way out into touch. Big tackle that time. I think that was Whitfield that was able to, or excuse me, that was uh, Cook that was able to make the tackle and drive Clayton out into touch. So again, the Cardinals short on their lineups, three in, there's no one there for an overthrow. So confident in their skills of being able to lift at the first pod, don't mind giving away that there is their, that is their one lifting option. Now they bring in a fourth, perhaps guarding over that overthrow. Clayton matches. The throw does not find its target. It's knocked down, did not go forwards as a referee and will play on. Nice little rumbling run through midfield. Good work from Whitfield. Another big run. Just so much power from this Cardinal side. They're catching that ball with momentum. In from the side, possibly there. Gonna have a reset here. Again, we have the ball. We'll come back here for just a scrum down, so it'll be another opportunity for the Cardinals to get their first couple of points up on the board here in the second half, already up by 24. Clear and concise communication from our referee, Regina Durkin, in the middle of the field. She refereed earlier in the day in that noon match, and it was just so clear to the players with what adjustments they needed to make, trying to encourage play of the game in a safe manner. I've been very impressed with the caliber of the referees all weekend long. We've had good direction to the athletes. They've allowed them to make adjustments. They've managed verbal warnings, trying to avoid cards for persistent infringement and giving them the cues for how they want the match to be played. So important on this high school level, communication is key. You don't want to coach when you're out there reffing and stuff, but you definitely want to make sure the girls have the tools to, to be in the right spots where they need to be. Keep things safe on the pitch as we've got a couple of substitutions on and on and off there for Charlotte. The Cardinal there in the blue and white hoop jerseys are able to get the pass off of the back. This one a little bit low. They're having to play a little soccer with it. Kicked through. We are going to have a penalty there. It was kicked through, and I think playing the man is what they'll call, but another quick tap gets Clayton moving. Down by 24, but looking good here in the last couple of minutes, but just as they get the burst through, the pitch back gets knocked on and turnover back to the Cardinals. So go back to the carry. Trying to get that offload in action, hard to do when you're being tackled. Also, as a receiver and a support player, it depends on how you're communicating to your teammate. Are you asking for the ball? Are you telling her to go down? Are you prepared to receive it? And thinking about that as the ball carrier, is she in a better position to receive that offload or should I take it to ground? So communication, not just from the referees, but also amongst players on the field, between teammates, to get direction to set up the next phases and phases and phases of play. 
Sierra Santiago there from the scrum half position. She works hard on the defensive end, but the kick comes from the Cardinals. We'll bring this one back, and we're actually going to have a knock on there, so not able to recover that cleanly. And just as Clayton looked to push their way down the pitch and maybe get some points on the board themselves, kick over the back. We'll have a scrum down and settle here for the Cardinals. So an instance where it is difficult to make that reach, if you can use your feet to position yourself under the ball instead of having to reach the body forward, if you can get shoulders over the ball as well, you're going to be in a safer position, especially with defense that could be coming forward. We think about how we want to position ourselves into contact, but also even in the open play leading to contact. Nice use of hands off the back of the scrum. Finally gets dropped forward a few passes in, so unfortunate there. It'll be an opportunity with the scrum after the knock on for Clayton. Five minutes gone by here in the second half. Yes, send him on. Yes, sir. Sounds like additional substitutes are going to be entering the playing enclosure. Looking at the depth of these rosters, the depth of a two day tournament. If you're the Cardinal, you're thinking ahead to a semifinal match tomorrow. The teams will be reseeded one through four and five through 12 for the semifinal. So it's not just a straight Touch. pool A, pool B crossover. Nine. We will be reseeded Touch. based on their performance and then point differential, tri differential, and the like. And of course, it's not just a semifinal, but tomorrow's national championship game as well. Big take off the back here for Clayton. Into contact they go, but just a little loose with the offload. Lost it forward, and advantage being played for Cardinals. No advantage gain, but we're going to have a penalty here, not releasing, and there's another quick tap from Santiago. Into contact with the offload there. Gives it back. Takes it in now, about 12 meters out. Some of the best offensive possession we've seen out of Clayton. The Copperheads look to strike, but that ball comes out the back. Did not see it come out the back of the ruck. Good field awareness by the Cardinals. They spotted it and they continue to exert some pressure. Outside the 22 meter line now is Clayton. Use it. Nope. Sierra Santiago was told to use it a couple times by our referee, did not do so. Ended up losing a possession and it'll be a penalty back to the Cardinals. Apologize. We'll have a penalty here have for Clayton. It'll be Sierra Santiago with ball in hand. She'll take the quick tap and look to find some space here on the right hand side. Nice charging run through Reagan Van Graan. Looks like hands on the ball there. Referee awards the penalty, says she had hands on it before contact arrived from the ruck. So strong work from Charlotte to get their hands on it. And now the quick tap moves things again. On the contact, gets through. Strong work there from the big prop for the Cardinals. Another line break here for Charlotte. Over the 10 meter line they go, continuing to push forward. This low pass does end up getting knocked on just a bit. So with eight minutes gone by here in the second half, we'll have a scrum down, attacking scrum here for Clayton. So it was a decent pass, just kind of lost its height. And again, looking at using our feet, if we need to get forward to where the ball is going to be, we had a pretty stagnant receiver there. She gets a step, but like what more could she have done to also receive that ball instead of having to do that reach? If we're getting tired in the game, we need to change our positioning to put ourselves in a position to succeed rather than trying to reach and do these risky things. You said it's second game here of the day. Got to keep them under the 90 minutes. Rules from USA Rugby as this one comes out the far side of the pitch. A little bit of space out there. Clayton looking to find something through Caroline Cook. She took it into contact and this pass off the mark and off the face. Play on says our referee and we continue. Big push from the Cardinals. Sends Clayton all the way back a good 10 meters or so and they'll try to find some space here on the near side. Backwards again. Straight into contact. There goes Patterson with the offload. Kirshner will take this one out into touch. Solid defense again.
from the Cardinals, just not allowing any gaps to be found out there. So we see the stringing along of the attempt at some offensive burst from this Clayton team. Good positioning by the Cardinal defense, just as you mentioned, getting that nudge, that bump into touch. It's interesting because we look at the line between what is a no-wrap tackle versus the ability to push according to World Rugby Law. And in that case, the push is fine. There was an attack or attempt made. So it's not a dangerous situation, but pushing is allowed in the law book. Alia Vera there. Did good work to take her out into touch. Turn that ball back over. Give Charlotte an opportunity here, but it's taken off the top of that line out by Avery Peacock. She goes in through the defense, but lost it forward. They got their hands on it and ripped it away, but illegally so, says our referee. Penalty awarded, an attacking opportunity for Clayton. Slow it down a little bit here, set up their attack, split the field. We'll come here to the near side. Most of the pack is finally into the hands of their target. Melvin looked for space, couldn't find much. And the whistle sounds, believe we had a knock on there. Forward pass is the call, so scrum down back to the Cardinals, nothing doing for Clayton. Look again at the play selection coming off of the penalty opportunity. When we have these penalties, you have the choice to run a play, to take a quick tap, to kick for post. You can opt for a scrum. You kick to touch, too. So as we go deep into these games and deep into these tournaments, looking at what is effective, what is working. And in all this post-game review, too, what worked well, what didn't work well. It's worth acknowledging when another team just plays very well, as this Virginia team has done. So it's like, what can you do? What can you adapt? And what is a long-term project for a team for the future? You come to these tournaments sometimes just looking to see where you stack up against teams nationwide versus then just statewide. Aggressive stuff there from the scrum half. Sierra Santiago, a little too much so. She comes and makes contact. Offsides is the call. Here are instructions from our referee, Durkin. Just letting everybody know we've got to make sure we keep those tackles down. Will be a bit of a relief kick here for the Cardinals. This one nicely finds touch. Good little chip up over the defense. Trickles out just inside the midfield stripe. With eight minutes left to play, we'll have a line out for the Charlotte Cardinals. Line out straight on the center. This is the center. We'll have a perfect opportunity a straight on the center to see if the line out is straight or not. We'll also have perfect, perfect opportunities to see how these teams are lining up with their defense. They have to be 10 meters back from the line out both sides. So we've got that 10 meter hash. Pretty gorgeous photo of the game ahead of us. Throw in here for Peacock, not straight. This is Durkin. All right, scrum on the 15. They're going to have the scrum down is the choice. And for this Charlotte side, they were the number four ranked team coming into this tournament. Again, it looks like all four of those number one seeds in their pools have done pretty well throughout the day. So ranked pretty nicely. You see that one again, not straight. This Charlotte team has definitely come out and played to their expectations today. Put in for Santiago. Gets it off the back, pass a little bit off the mark, a little bit too far forward, and just relentless defense coming there for the Cardinals. Big tackle that time by Rivera, and now they're able to turn it back into offense. There's the offload to Cook. Cook takes it over the 22 meter line. Support arrives in time, secure possession. Got under seven minutes left to play here in the second half. A nice little run straight through the defense. Able to come around one tackle. That's DePaz. She already has one try on the day. Nice little counter ruck, blows things up. Did a good job hopping back on top of it. It was knocked on. 
And going back to the earlier high tackle and the high contact that was made. So penalty to the Cardinal. And with that, the quick tap and the dive in for the try. Gemily Rivera dots it down and extends this lead now 29 to nil over Clayton. We go to the quick reaction time here, just getting the ball, going forward, eyes to the try line, low body position, adding to the tally. Tim spoke a moment ago into the seeding for the tournament. There's been only one match that's been kind of designated as an upset so far, and that would be the Wando Wahines leading and taking the victory, rather, over the Raleigh Cobras 12 to nothing in a Pool B matchup. We do have more Pool B action coming up. That will be our final day of the game. It's going to be this Wahine's team against the Majestic. Those are both teams that are undefeated. So plenty of action coming up in our final game in that 5 o'clock time slot. About five minutes left to play in this one as that conversion is good and extends the lead 31 to nil for this Charlotte Cardinals squad that has been red hot today. 31 to nil, they lead now as we take a second look. Just a pounding run right over the defense in for the try. Thank you. And this Cardinal squad doubled up San Mateo early today who have a lot of talent on their team as well. That With that 10-5 win, this victory here gets them into the semifinals tomorrow. Got to clean some stuff up. And we know the coaches will be looking ahead to see what they can do to make this squad even better tomorrow on Championship Saturday. Off the kick. Hits the hands and goes to deck. Board says the referee, so it'll be a scrum down here for Clayton, the Copperheads still looking to put their first points up on the board. Tim Wilkes along with Liz Entwistle. They're live from North Carolina. There's the pick and go around the outside. They take it. Nice little offload, keep things moving. They continue it all the way out to the outside now. Slings them back, but they continue to move forward about 10 meters out now. There's a nice burst right through the teeth of the defense. Good work from Hope, and she takes it in for the first try of the match for Clayton. Elation from this Clayton side, finally able to get some points on the board. The crowd loving it as well. It's been a hard fought match. They get and go forward, finally able to string a few phases of play together. Look at this power, able to elude the quick tackle going over the try line for Clayton. Narrowing the gap, getting some points for pride on the board. Physical efforts from both teams in the match and Clayton finally breaks through. Taya Hoke shows that relentless nature, brings that defense with her across the line and dots it down for the first five points of the match for Clayton. Anxious there, the Cardinals trying to come out and chase the kick. Taken there beautifully by McNulty, and they are on the board. The first seven points in the match there for Clayton. The Copperheads continue to march forward. A good day of rugby, maybe not the results they were looking for, but I think a lot to take from this match and the previous one for Clayton. See the strong take there from Hoke. Brings him across the try line. So much work throughout the day, throughout the year to get to this point. That's off to the Copperheads to continuing to compete out here. A couple minutes left to play, but it's taken off that ruck. And secured the possession here for the Cardinals. Kicking the contact goes Elder, now a pick and go, finds a gap in the defense, and they are all the way through for another try. I think it was wrong last time, that's Carolyn Cook, the number 13, that takes it in. I believe she scored the last one as well. So number 13, Carolyn Cook with the double and extends this lead now 36-7 to for Charlotte. 
We saw the pressure off of the kickoff and look at this, the strip from the player on the ground originated with Charlotte's turnover for possession. We see another pick from the ruck and pure green to go. Extending their lead, getting the points back. Time winding down on the clock, under a minute left to go here in this match. So many different attacking options for this Cardinal squad. They've got the power inside the engine room, but they've also got the speed there on the back line. And that will do it as the Cardinals from Charlotte have clinched their spot in the semifinals of the National Girls Club Rugby Championships. It's a great match. We've still got one more to go on the docket, so stay tuned right here to the Rugby Network. We'll come back with the final match of the day. Workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our day. game we play with our hearts we don't play with sticks bats or gloves we don't wear shoulder pads or helmets we keep playing when it hurts and we leave everything on the field what we wear must be built for our game
good. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. We are back for the final game of action here on day one of the National Girls Club Rugby Championships at Warren Wilson College, just outside of Asheville, North Carolina. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Tim Wilkes, and we are here for Pool B action. Between two undefeated teams, we've got the Majestics out of Utah taking on the Wando Wahines out of South Carolina, the Majestic in the white and the blue, going from right to left across your screen, kicking off to the Wahine. And we are off and in action. It is a low driving rubber from the Majestic. Ohine in the white jerseys with the floral print and the black shorts. Majestic were victors in their first game, 41 to nothing over the Cobras. Wahine in their first game was played just at three o'clock on just one hour rest going into this match. 12 to nothing victors. So both teams yet to concede a try. Both teams undefeated, both teams hoping for a spot. In tomorrow's national championship. We have a penalty awarded to the Wahine. A quick tack taken on the field and off they go. Look at this, a burst of speed, a bit of a power up and another penalty awarded this time on the high contact. Wanda loses the ball, passing backwards to kick forward straight into the hand of the Majestic. Again, another one of our Utah teams here in action on the weekend. Watch out, this player with the red scrum cap is a powerhouse in the first game. A couple of tries that she set up off the base of the scrum. Right now, it's all about open play. Taken down. Rohine quick on the tackles, knowing they need to get these majestic players to ground yesterday. Another attempt, just nudging their way across the midway mark. Both teams trying to make a statement here in these opening minutes of play. The Majestic, again, can't quite crack this Wahine defensive line. They are taking meters and meters of space. It is taking multiple phases of play to get there. A high execution rate by both teams coming into contact. Good retention of the ball. Majestic again. This time, pushing the line back, not quite breaking through. Wahine making these tackles, getting a hold of the jerseys and able to drag the players down. 
The majestic pass falls just short. Advantage being shown to Wando. Nawahini, a bit of a misconnection on that offload pass. Our first stoppage here in the first three minutes of play, Tim. What do you see? Back and forth stuff for sure. Both teams had an opportunity to kind of break through. Showed what they can do with ball in hand. But in the end, Wando are able to get possession here. But some exciting stuff to start off with. We saw so many phase after phase action there from Majestics, but they just couldn't cash in. The defense held strong enough for Wando. Now they've got this scrum to attack from here just outside their 22. Get the wide view. We can see the depth of the Wahine backs. We see the defensive set of the Majestic backs. Look at this, a skip pass moving it. A second skip pass towards the outside. Some ball skills on display by Wando. Majestic coming up on defense, trying to close down any opportunities to move forward. The whistle is blown. We are going all the way back to the spot. Okay. We have an offside with the scrum right here. That... Thank you very much. Yes. Just a so offside on the scrum, the we've seen some calls. The timing of the flanker is going to be an important piece when it comes to defense off the set pieces. We've seen that as a bit of a trend as the day has gone on with some early release. The kick down field, fielded cleanly by the Majestic. Majestic looking to counter. She takes on, look at all these Wahine jerseys right around the rug. If the Majestic can move the ball. Wahine defense proves a little too stalwart and prevents any go forward from the Majestic. Yeah, just a knock on there. We'll stifle that attack. But we've seen some good work from both these sides. This Majestic squad won the Tier 1 and Tier 2 state championships out of Utah just a few weeks back. So they have tons of skill throughout the pitch. They've done well here to start. They've got to get back on the defensive end yet again. As you mentioned, just that huge, huge running lines for Wando, really trying to open up that space and suck in or spin it outside of this attacking defense. Wando off the base of the scrum. They're back stacked to the far side of the field. Able to re-corral the pass that misses its mark, still maintaining possession, fighting for the go forward. Majestic makes the tackle. Wait to concede the ruck, reforming their defensive wall. The shooting blitz tackle does pay off, able to take down the Wahini behind the gain line. Wahini securing the ball at the ruck. We saw the ball dropped under pressure and a bit of some fast and furious frantic play inside of the 22. The Jasmine Fahoko was able to get things moving a little bit from that number 10 position for Majestic. Got Wando pinned in deep, but they've got the penalty opportunity okay, here. Interesting okay. stuff. They'll take the scrum and try to work It'll from that position. We've seen them do so pretty well a couple of times from that scrum, but interesting to see from inside their own 22. It sounds like our referee, Sybil Levine, referring to the Wahine as white for the game, presuming Majestic is going to be blue. Choosing the scrum up rather than the 22 drop from Majestic kicking the ball out the back. Wahine with the tap and the put in. Tight view here of the scrum. We see the Majestic backs ready to launch. Wahine coming towards this near sideline. Stifled by this Majestic defense. And now it looks like Majestic might see a ball that they can get their hands on. They earn the penalty inside of the 22. Levine setting the mark. Majestic going to their numbers out towards that far sideline. A good crash and carry going forward. And now it's Majestic securing the ruck. Wahine trying to roll away. No, see a player. Looks like her arm is caught, but she's making the effort. Majestic still trying to go forward, and the ball turned over. Wahine coming away, ball in hand. We've got a mall. Majestic trying to hold it up. Knees are down. The ruck is formed. Majestic zero out, looking to block a potential clearing kick. No option but to go through the hands in the Wahine, again, under pressure from this Majestic defensive wall. They're so quick with their support. 
that being driven backwards is not an issue. The Wahine generally having options. But look at this tackle under pressure. I believe they may be in the end goal. See if we can listen in to our referee conference. Because what I saw was a tackle by Blue. White had the ball and the ball grounded. But was that intentional? Oh, excuse me, grounded by White, even if it's accidental, it should still be a scrum to Blue attacking into the own, into the 20, into the try zone, excuse me. So White carried it into their own try zone. That's it. So, carried into the try zone by White, grounded by White, scrum to Blue on the five. So a methodical conference there, clearly explaining the scenario and the situation. We have the five meter scrum to come here from the Majestic. Excuse me very much. Looks like one player out to this near sideline when it comes to their backs alignment. You see the first, second receivers, third and fourth out towards the far sideline. And there is the fifth, so the wide view of the field. And look at this, Wahine's defense is all stacked towards this near sideline. There's an overload towards the far sideline. Just a matter of Majestic can get the ball there. Here's that number eight. She set up and scored so many tries in their first round match, that first win. And Wahine coming away with the ball, saving the try. Being held up in the mall. The strength of this Majestic team, that player looked like she was trying to fight to ground. Majestic come away, stripping the ball. And now Majestic get the sure try going over the line as the number 18. Strong work there as we see this one get just ripped away. Great defensive work by Vanisi. She'll take this one away eventually and look to find some space there on the far side. Nice little burst. Good hands all the way to the outside. Finds their target. Seconds. Stephanie Hernandez, the sophomore, takes it in from the outside. And this defensive pressure from Majestic, they've finally been able to turn that into offense. We've seen some big hits. That kick's good. So a seven point lead. Strong work from Majestic. Seven minutes gone in this opening half of play. An impressive effort by Majestic to hold these players up. So as the Wahini are going into contact, they're trying to prevent them from going to ground. They're preventing that tackle, preventing the rock, and they are trying to hold it up and make the ball unplayable because they can either come away then with that strip by tying up the arms, or they can come away with the scrum. So the strength here, we see, look at these feet, trying to get to ground. Wahine, players are there, and Majestic holds it up, strips the ball away. This kind of hugging style, of tackling up is something that we've seen a lot of times from Life University out of Atlanta, recent winners of the College Sevens National Championship, local to this North Carolina region and heavily recruiting at tournaments like these. A fantastic kick we see here. Look at this power. The breakdown field by the strong number eight from Majestic. Numbers to the far side of the field. A gorgeous diagonal line of attack. They're going to be able to get the ball through hands. Look at this pace going forward. Look at this pace in general. Holy cow, the Majestic looking like a professional team in action. She is striding and across the try line, back to back tries, a minute apart. The Majestic making their mark here in the opening half. Eliane Nau takes it in, just too much speed there on the outside. As you see him secure possession right at the midfield stripe. Nice use of hands yet again. Mau Mau, number 24, getting in that line all the way to the outside. Beautiful offload, and then just too much speed right through the two defenders, and then enough power to take it all the way in. What a try there for Nau. Melanie gets the second one on the board now for Majestic. That might well be the prettiest try of the tournament. We saw the ball in hands, and we saw those paces leading players into space. Fantastic rugby out of Majestic. Wahini has done so well in the tight areas of defense, but there's no stopping pace like that. We'll get one more look at this. Get so many numbers Three to the outside. Like you said, straight through the defense, a couple of arm tackles, and she just opens those doors with ease. 
and strolls in for the first try. All smiles there for Majestic. The conversion was good. 14 to nothing the lead. We'll get time updated on the clock. But we'll assume that's about nine minutes into the first half of play. Another deep kickoff by the Wakine. And again through the hands towards the far sideline. The Majestic are there going back inside. Offloads on offloads. Realizes that the defensive pressure is there. Takes the ball down to ground. Good play calling on offense. Again, looking for the offload. And we see the Wakine nearly pick up the pass. Flooding that passing channel. And we hear calls to get the ball out wide. Majestic. Slowing down for a moment, resetting with a ruck. Looking to attack towards the near sideline. Wakine scrambling, realigning in defense. It's fun. We carry into contact. Majestic numbers towards the far sideline. Numbers are there, the passes are there, the timing just barely off the Wahine defense, doing all they can to disrupt, shifting across the field and realigning. We'll see a scrum. Mike Nelione Nua, who had that last try, saw that one, eyes got big, she sees the open space there, just loses it, had enough space to maybe get around the corner for her second, a little back to back. This one goes off the mark into touch and a scrum down back for Wando. Look at the depth in this Wando team. Excited to see how they're going to attack. They are steep with their offensive set. The scrum is one. There is time for the distribution pass. Second pass goes a bit low. We see a foot on the ball. Majestic able to recover. What a grab. Majestic numbers. There's one support player towards the outside. The ball finds its way there. Wahine had it covered, able to buy themselves some time, slowing down the attack, forcing the forward pass. Scrum to Wando. Yeah, they're just playing on the fringes. Such quick work, had that three on two, took it into the teeth of the defense. And then this one, hospital pass, just kind of flung that one up. Better to take that one to deck. Had a couple of players in support there with her, but Exciting stuff. They are really taking the lid off this one and trying to find every bit of energy they can to score another try. 14 to nil already. 13 and a half gone by. Seems like Majestic are really starting to get clicking now, though. Back in action, the Wahine with the ball in hand. Again, some of these skip passes towards the outside, finding themselves to ground, so maybe need to tighten up some of their support lines in those situations. Majestic take advantage, and Majestic doing it again. Almost a carbon copy of that stride down the sideline over the try line again. Majestic is sending their lead 19 to nothing with five minutes left to go here in the first half. It's Nau, the sophomore, yet again getting another try. Just finding space there on that far side, and this one kick just goes off the mark a little, but they always know they've got that speed on the outside. Beautiful pass, finds that open space, and Nau again with her second try of the match continues to progress through this Majestic squad. And again, Majestic already put up 41 points in their first match earlier today, and they are rolling here with about four minutes left to play in the first half. We do have an update from field two. United out of Utah victors in their game over the Charlotte Tigers, 53 to five. So this puts United, Sac Pal Amazons and the Charlotte Cardinal into tomorrow's semifinals. Again, the matchups being reseeded one through four. So some of these point differentials will come into play. We'll get an update after all the action today. And of course, can find updates on the various websites. One more look here at the try. The quick action, and we see a little bit of a stop start, enough to beat the defender, to change the speed, makes the defender come off of their defensive line in a different way, because defense is looking to match speed to make the tackle. It does enough, frees up the space, and it extends the majestic lead 21 to nothing. 
You gotta give a shout out to Seiyu Yamashita there, the number 15 for Majestic. She was the one that secured that pass and saw the space, had the offload, nice little assist for the try. Rwando off the boot, drives it just inside of the 22, and here's Majestic again, finding their flow. Majestic, can they be stopped? A great tackle from behind from the Wahine. Majestic, ball in hand, a flood of blue jerseys in support. A little too tricky looking at the over the head pass over the top, the ball to ground. Majestic still able to recover. Able to recover and restart again off of a little bit of a missed execution. Wakine doing all they can in defense. Again, a tackle from behind. With a full back in action, she makes the first tackle, can't quite make the second, and Majestic back to back to back. 26 to nothing. With the conversion to come. Three and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. It was Marley Larkin that scored the try there was able to take that one, picked it up off of the big run down the sideline. Benisi was able to take it through, set them up, and then, the, like I said, the big scoop and score. As they spin it here to the outside, around the corner. That's Tupou, takes it around the outside. Smartly just takes this one to deck, knows she's got support coming, places the ball, and you see getting in there, getting her hands dirty. Marley Larkin scoops it up and dives in. Her first try in elation for Majestic. Conversion attempt is missed. Score will remain 26 to nothing here in this final Pool B matchup. Looking at updates from around the tournament, SACPAL Amazons again topping their pool data, plus 51 point differential. This is Pool B action in Pool C United with a plus 52 point differential. Another team out of Utah in Pool D, the Charlotte Cardinal with a, point, a plus 43 point differential. Majestic's coming into this game with a 41 to nothing win over the Raleigh Cobra. With their current lead, they would sit as a top seed for the tournament. Should be a fun couple of matches tomorrow morning. Again, 9 and 10 o'clock. Can't wait to see, but right now it's Wando still trying to get some points up on the board. It is hard to get points when you have such skilled kick receivers like that. On the front foot, going forward at pace. Wando makes a couple of tackles there at the 10 meter hash mark. 90 seconds left to go here in the first half. A penalty awarded to Majestic. Wando doing their best to get back 10 or to avoid impeding the ball carrier. Majestic, again, threading the needle on that far sideline. And this time it looks like the Wahini has disrupted. Majestic able to recover, evading the tackles. Whistle blown. A penalty showed towards the Wahine. We heard the siren going off to indicate the end of time in the half. Go ahead, Tim. It looked like a Stephanie Hernandez just kind of came around the corner, possible obstruction there. She tried to find a gap. An astute observation. Thank you for that. Well, clear direction. Wahine, ball in hand. Wahine taking it off the ruck. See the quick pick and go there again in support. Majestic conceding, setting their next line of defense. A little bit of go forward from the Wahine. Majestic drag her to ground. Again, quick maintaining their feet in these tackle situations and these rough situations. Wahine again. Solid good forward. Playing in that five meter channel on the far sideline. Majestic coming away with the steal. Time is up in the half. They're maintaining a commanding 26 to nothing lead and look like they want to get some more. The Majestic. That's okay. That's halftime. <coughs> All right, well, 
Majestic living up to their billing, 26 to nothing, leading going into the second half of play. Tim, if you're thinking of adjustments for the Wahine going into the final half of action, what are you doing? Really just got to make sure you're making these defensive tackles. I mean, Majestic, they're getting to the outside a little bit as we see here, but they're also just able to run straight through the teeth of the defense. Just make sure you're communicating on that defensive end, fringing out when you need to. But this Majestic squad with ball in hand has been so tough. Just got to make those tackles and we might see Wando getting back into it in the second. All right, we'll be back with the final 20 minutes here in just a few moments. Stay tuned here on the Rugby Network, brought to you by Next Level Rugby. I'm Liz Entwistle, alongside Tim Wilkes. Rugby is a very accepting sport. I wasn't embarrassed about my body or anything. People really welcome you and actually like take your uh, strengths and weaknesses and work with you to like make you a better person and player. You hit each other and then you're friends. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like the camaraderie of it and like the game is just so physical and it's fun. Definitely try it. Like you maybe don't think you're the strongest, but once you go out and like you hit someone, that adrenaline is so amazing. What got you into rugby? Well, I was like fouling out in all my basketball games, so I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? World's best. In the hands of everybody. What about your experience with RCT so far? Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing a sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. You know? Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby just comes to one practice has ended up liking it. And I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact, like same rules, guys and girls, and I didn't believe her. And then she was like, oh, come out to our practices. And I did, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to play. And then I started playing, and it was really fun. It's just, I don't know, it's just a game that I love. It's pretty fun though, I don't know, I just love everything about it. It's the laid back atmosphere of it. We all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and builds, builds like, a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. <laughs> Like how we can like beat of each other in the game, but then we like come together after and we're just like shake hands. And... Well, well, what do you think that is? Why is that? I, I personally think it's like, it's just, we're all one community, like it's one family. We all play rugby, it's just one family. It's a sport. Yeah. It's a sport. Yeah, because if you have to have respect for the person going after you because you work hard and they have to work just as hard as you say. So you say that respect is probably the greatest value you can gain out of this game? By far. Yeah. By far. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game.
Oh god, that looked way too good. Welcome back to our final half of action here at the National Girls Club Rugby Championships being played at Warren Wilson College in Guananola, North Carolina. We have the Majestic taking on the Wahine. The Wahine kicking off to the Majestic. The Majestic in blue going from left to right across your screen. Currently leading by a mark of 26 to nothing. Both teams were undefeated going into this final pool of play match. The winner will advance into the semifinals. And then we've got a consolation bracket for the teams ranked 5 through 12. Plenty of action on Saturday. Yeah. Soft commanding performance out of Majestic in the first half, doing so well with ball in hand, really excellent skills with their pace going forward. Wahine, so scrappy on defense. They have thwarted so many of the Majestic offense sequences. As we just saw here, the Wahine coming away with a key turnover. Majestic holding up the tackle, looking to prevent the ruck and either win the ball and strip it away or to win the ball when it becomes unplayable and there's no forward progress. A true ball in action. I think we've got all eight, well, eight on eight in the action and Wahine come away with it. So they are able to puzzle their way out of that majestic attempt at holding up the ball carrier and now a bit of a breakthrough. Wahine quick in support. The white jerseys, the black shorts, and the Harlequin strip. Majestic. Ball in hand, ball on the ground. Wahine launching forward again. Now Wahine getting hands. Look at this number eight looking for the strip. She gets the ball. It looks like it may have popped out. Majestic able to recover. Get the kick downfield. What action here on field one. Advantage being shown to the Wanda Wahines. A bit of a high miss on. pass. Right here on the line. Yes. We'll get a chance to settle here after a fast and furious first two minutes. Yeah, it really looked like Wando was gonna be able to find some space there, a couple of line breaks, getting things moving, had that big maul. But then Mona Saliga was able to get her mitts on it. Number seven for Majestic. She got in there, ripped that one out of the tackle. And got things back moving the other direction. So just when it looks like Wando's got some space, just individual efforts from Majestic coming to fruition here on the defensive end as well. You see a steep line of attack set up for Wando. Plenty of depth. Ball out of the scrum, a clean pass to the first receiver. A little bit of a miss to the second, but she is able to corral the ball off of the ground. Rondo quick to realign, quick in support. Offsides the call, the quick tap taken by the Wahine. Quickly taken into touch. Good tackle there by Nau, had a couple of tries scored on the day. But she put her head down, put a shoulder into that attacker and drove her out into touch. Good job that time to keep things moving. This Majestic squad so exciting. Can really score from just about anywhere. We've seen some good work on the defensive end here the first four minutes of this match, or the second half. The line out set going to the second pod off the top. Majestic in motion, solid pace, good ball skills. We saw the two-handed carry for the offload. 
One hand tucked towards the far side and just missing. Taking the corner, Wahine able to disrupt. She have a scrum to Wando. Hernandez couldn't hang on to that final little offload, but strong work. Number 24 for Majestic has been all over the pitch. Janali Mau Mau has been incredible out there. Had a burst of speed to break that line. Couldn't finish it off with that final pass, but she has been all over the pitch. Even had that big hit cause the scrum on the other end when they were playing defense as well. So strong work from her out there today. Again, look at this depth from the Wahine on their own scrum. The first receiver 10 meters back from the line. We only need to be five. So it looks like they may be trying to ease the pressure from this majestic defensive launch, buying themselves some space. They've had clean passes going from their scrum half to their side half at the first receiver position. It has been that one to two or two to three distribution that's been a bit tricky for the Wahine. The ball is in. There's that nine to 10 connection. And again, that miss between the 10 and the second receiver. Majestic able to corral the ball. She is dragging her defender, find some space. That pop off the ground. Majestic keeping the ball alive, changing their angles, coming back inside. You hear the comms on the field. Majestic patient with the scoop. Take a step right. Pick and the go, still driving, still driving. We're over the line, but is the ball grounded? A good run, Fajoko almost took that one in. Jasmine Fajoko, the junior, went straight through the defense. Just could not touch it down. Strong work from Wando. Goal line dropout is a line drive straight into the hands of the Majestic number six. Majestic diving over the line and they are able to get one in. So quick reaction times, good skills with the ball in hand. And Majestic extending their lead to 31 to nothing here. Four minutes, sorry, six minutes into the second half of play. Okay, Maui Goa. Was able to get that one through. Just so many great athletes out there for Majestic. Anytime they're finding space, they've got the speed to take it all the way home. Again, we already talked about it. 41 points there in their first match, and they are well on their way to hitting that mark again, 26 to nil. So you see the we kick. get a view again here of that goal line dropout. It is a low drive straight to the middle of the field, about 15 meters and space to run here for Majestic. A strong carry is able to break a tackle, takes on several defenders, fights her way to the goal line. It's worth bearing in mind again that with a goal line kick, with a 22 meter dropout, they do not need to be taken from the middle of the field. They can be taken anywhere on the goal line. These are kicks that also can be kicked to touch for a lineup. It's just that the other team gets the throw. It's not always the worst call because a lot of these kicks are going straight into the hands of the opposing team, and then the opposing teams are able to take it back and gain that ground. They did a good job coming over, bringing it over to the left and taking the kick from here. But again, so much space here on the near side of the field. If she'd just taken that and hit the open space, girls could have ran onto it, but found the, the two players on that half of the pitch, found one of them, just unfortunate, and awarding the try back to Majestic. So it's a well-placed kick on the kickoff, and this is gonna give them Wahine the ball in hand. Something like that on that goal line drop would put them in prime position. You see the ball turned over, so Majestic on the counter. Bit of a push pass. Wahine with a counter ruck. They see an opportunity, Majestic able to clean it up. Taking it into contact, taking three to four players down to ground, but quickly back on their feet. The Wahine is so good at recycling back into their defensive line. The Majestic so good at some of these line breaks. The chase is on, the support is there, and number six is going to carve her way back across the try line. Majestic is on a scoring streak. They're going to go up by a mark of 38 to nothing. Raven Toki Maui Goa. 
with her second try in a row. Back to back she goes as we take a second look here, right through the teeth of the defense. Goes the fly half. Mahu Mahu, and then right through two defenders. Just Ole sits down the third and final tackler and too much speed to take it the whole way home. Toki Mauigoa, again, her second try of the match, just too much speed and pace here for Majestic. It's been an impressive showing by Majestic with the positioning of the way they carry the ball too. We see the ball with shoulders over the ball. They've got two hands on it when there is a potential for that pass and that offload, they're tucking it, but they're still keeping it close to the body when there is the potential for contact. They are taking it at pace and not slowing their pace when they go into contact. So we look one more time again. She is not slowing down. Despite the amount of defenders that are there, she is taking them on. She's expecting to break the tackle. She's not expecting to go to ground. So this is a fight that she is going to win when it comes to pace ball in hand. And Liz, it was what we talked about at halftime. They just got to be a little bit more sure on those tackles. Too many arm tackles. And with a team that is so talented and strong like Majestic, they will run straight through those arm tackles throughout the match. And they have done so here with the restart. Coming back to Majestic. Again, the restart taken on the fly. Scooped off the ground. Majestic with the go forward. Wahine, again, with the tackle, so quick to roll out and get to their feet, but not quite able to avoid the penalty. Looks like one of their players did get tied up in the tackle. Majestic on the go, again, breaking towards the middle of the field leaving the ball into space, leaving it behind. Majestic able to recover. Yohini there, dragging the, tack or the ball carrier down, forcing the ball out of the tackle. The Wahine with a chance to counter. Again, the switch of the ball. Look at the body positioning there. That's a great offensive contact. So we'll take a minute. Took on that bigger defender nicely. So we'll have a scrum to white. Go back to this carry. She does get a shoulder in. Looks like she's taking a moment to recover from the collision, but going back to the earlier ball that was forced forward before the play. Scrum to Wando. So again, we'll look at the depth. We'll look at their receivers and see if they can get their one-two combo on point. The so ball secure, just need to get it through the second row. There we go, pick up by the number eight, Wando. Going to draw the penalty. Saw the majestic player leaving her feet and diving over. And now the Wahine making their way past midfield. Majestic with a turnover, the chains in possession. Looking towards that far sideline. Wahine this time stealing the ball back. Athletic play on the field, some Spider-Man hands. Yeah, we've seen Wando really getting aggressive in a lot of these rucks, have done well in coming up with a couple of turnovers here. But again, too much majestic. They just have not been able, on that defensive end, they have not been able to find gaps in that defense consistently enough to keep things moving, keep the phases rolling. It's now a line out for Majestic. Majestic attempts the five meter throw. That is three for three on missing that option today. Just a little frustrated we there, did Liz. Let's just a little bit of a tell as well. When you see a player start high and then she brings the ball low. So if you're the opposition, you know to read that or should be looking to read that as well. Seems like the easy option, but a lot has to go into that five meter pass. Unable to get it to come together there. We'll have another opportunity now. They'll have a scrum down. They'll have to put in here for Wando out of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. So the scrum to the Wahines. Secured cleanly off the back. 
A high pass just over the fingertips. Again, the ball under stressful situations and Wando able to recover. Look at this, finally some pace. Alba Wahine is getting to break free from the majestic pressure. They get to touch, but that was a strong line of attack by their number 21, showing off some pace and showing the moves. A good spark there, actually earned themselves the penalty, so they'll keep this one going off the high tackle. They have a tap from their number 12, Wahine going back inside, securing support off the back of the ruck. Numbers are there. Utilizing a forward strike line. Again, met at the game line by this Majestic defense. And now the Majestic defense meeting the ball in hand. Majestic on the go. There is only Pace separating this player from another try lane as she cuts through the defense, has enough gas to get there, reaches into the tank, and reaches over the try line for another five points for Majestic. Stephanie Hernandez, number 18, has been tremendous out there today. And we see here, they're able to get their hands on it, rip this one out of the back of the ruck, and then off to the races, fend one, fend two, get a third out of there, and then too much speed over the midfield stripe, over the 22, and a great try as Stephanie Hernandez already had, I think that might be either her second or third, already had at least one. Great work, and you see the camaraderie between the two, good sportsmanship, and a great show of competition here by Majestic. Sam, I'm going to point out your favorite player from this Majestic team, that number 24 with the tackle that allowed the ball presented to Majestic to get that strip in the go forward. She was in the right place, made a fantastic tackle, right body shape. She's your player to watch, and I think now she'll be mine. Yeah, kind of an unsung hero. Hasn't really been that driving force that scored any of those tries, but has set those up nicely. Done great there, I believe, from her fly half position. So good work from them. And Majestic again, 43 to nil with just a few minutes left to play. Mahine with the restart off the right boot of their number seven. Majestic taking the ball on the fly again. Love their confidence with a bit of this aerial game. Redistributing off the back of the ruck, the Majestic. Carving it up the middle. Stopped by the Wahine. Again, quick with their feet, quick redistributing their defensive wall. The Majestic trying to break through. Look at that fancy footwork. A little Majestic Mamba, and it is another Majestic try. Dancing her way out of contact and down the field. Number seven over the line for the Majestic. Back to back tries. One touch, two touch, and go. Mona Saliga with the huge little step there and lots of wiggle in that action as she was able to get around the defense and then had that speed to finish it off. Another five, there's another two up on the board, 50 to nil. We saw that 41 earlier today and they have definitely exceeded that here this afternoon. We look again just at this beauty of a run, these little fins, these little fangs, the little dip of the shoulder. When we look at the field, the hips don't lie. So if you're a tackler trying to defend against someone who's got that kind of like fancy move that has the things that maybe played a little bit of basketball or a little bit of lacrosse and other ball sports, that's where you want to read. You can never fake with your belly button. So in and out and around the corner. Again, that little turn back inside and it's enough to go. There she is again, this time making the pass. Majestic, the more broken tackles, looking to break the try line again. This time the Wahine able to recover, making the tackle from behind inside of two minutes left to play here in the final match here for Pool B and the final match of the day here on field one. Majestic with a show and go, faked out our camera operator. What a performance. couldn't finish it off. The forward pass, a scrum to the Wahines. There's a big burst to get him down there by Anya Hatch, number eight. Took it all the way down inside the 22 meter line. Just so many players with that pace. For Majestic, they have been relentless out here and 
Definitely going to be looking to extend things tomorrow. Again, 9 and 10 a.m. tomorrow here on the Rugby Networks where you can catch the semifinals. Earlier in this match, Tim mentioned that this is the defending champions coming out of the state of Utah. This is a state that has had a history of strong performances. So we see United also advancing into the semifinals. In the past, programs like Harriman have produced heaps of talent. When we look at the college level, Brigham Young University, three-time back-to-back-to-back national champions at the women's D1 level. Olympian Jordan Mattias, who we saw in some of our promotions, Played her rugby at BYU, current USA Sevens Eagle, Rachel Strastas as well. This is a state that's truly invested in the development of the youth game. And we see that as well out of the Utah Warriors pathway when it comes to Major League Rugby, led by another Utah local, a Harriman veteran, Ashley Burge, who saw time with both USA Sevens and 15s. So the Wahine controlling the contact point. Redistributing from the back of the ruck. Wahine looking towards that far sideline. The support is there. They're going to draw the penalty as the Majestic do not release and roll away quickly enough. You shake and bake moves here from the Wahines. And the Majestic come away, ball in hand. We heard the siren go. Time is up on our game clock. The Majestic look like they're hungry for more. Wahines see that sideline as an available tackler. And there it goes, taken into touch. And that is the game. The Majestic 50 to nothing victors, 91 to nothing. Point differential on the day, have not conceded a try. They're gonna be our team to watch going into tomorrow's semifinals. What a match, fantastic skills on display. Fantastic rugby all day long. Just too much power and pace there for Majestic. They had so much strength and line breaking ability. It was fun to watch and they put up a 50 spot. It just shows exactly how hard hitting and fun they are to watch. That one, a little bit illegal. There's the big tackle. Again, so much great effort out of this Majestic squad. And as you mentioned, they are gonna be fun to watch tomorrow. Again, nine and 10 o'clock for the semifinals. Thank you to everyone for tuning in. I am Liz Enfelsel alongside Tim Wilkes. We are here with the Rugby Network, courtesy of Next Level Rugby. Check out the Rugby Breakdown for more insight into today's matches, tomorrow's matchups, and of course the action as well in the single school division taking place in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. Thanks to all of our parents, spectators, fans, coaches, and everyone at the Warren Wilson College Complex. What a crowd we had today. What positive rugby, positive reinforcement for the game, and of course the referee crew. Probably the best refereeing I have seen this entire year in terms of being clear, concise, and direct with their calls, with their communication to their captains. The level of respect shown to the game today was, again, top notch.